If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, my name's Beth Miller and I live in a little village in West Yorkshire. I've been sewing most of my life. Even my first job was in a haberdashery shop. And from there, I've gone on and I've worked in theatres, schools. I've done freelance, I've made wedding dresses, and I've even made a yellow sunburn dress that was six foot long for a panto dame. Uh, having MS, movement isn't always easy, but I find that sewing really helps. I love sashko embroidery, patchwork and quilting. My top tip, you've not gone wrong. You've just added a design feature to your already original piece of work. Cover it, embellish it, put a button on it. It's your own happy happening. I'm really looking forward to coming on Sewing Street and showing you my kits and patterns and hope that you enjoy doing them just as much as I do. See you soon. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street and Happy New Year. OK, I know it's the 9th of January, but this is the first time I've been on air this year. So Happy New Year. My name is Rebecca Reed, and I will be with you for the next five hours. Now, if you love sewing, you've come to the right place because this morning we have a whole array of techniques and fabrics for you. Um, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a skill a skill off today. So we've got this theme on Sewing Street. We've got New Year, New Crafts, and every day we're going to be introducing new things to you today. Um, I love all different sorts of sewing crafts. I can never quite decide which one I like the most. So um, today is great. I've got a fantastic guest on with me today, Beth Miller, who's got some beautiful brand new projects. Um, and we've got loads of new fabrics and sewing machines, but first is early bird. Now I'm really excited about this one. I have to admit that I borrowed, I'm not sure I'll be giving it back. I borrowed, temporarily borrowed this and I've got it at home. Um, and I absolutely love this book. So I said, can we have it as an early bird? I love it because I used to be one of those people, didn't like FPP, didn't like, oh no, don't like FPP. And then I realised that the reason that I don't like, didn't like FPP was because I didn't really understand how to do it. So a few years ago, I spent hours on all the different YouTubes, spoke to lots of different designers, learned how to do FPP, total convert, and I love it. So I'm going to be giving you a little demo in a bit of how to do it. And once you learn how to do FPP, you will be hooked too. But if you already do FPP, you are going to love this book. Now, the normal price of this book is $15.99, which is incredible value for a hundred FPP foundation paper piecing quilt blocks, a hundred for $15.99. However, however, this is our early bird. So 
we get a reduced price. A hundred paper piece quilt blocks for eleven ninety nine. This is the first time we've ever reduced it. It is gorgeous. Now I'm going to explain. If you'll think, what's FPP? Don't understand that. Well, it stands for foundation paper piecing. I'm going to show it to you in a minute and explain how how it all works. But what they've done, Dave and Charles, is they've taken um, a whole group of really experienced, um, knowledgeable, well-known FPP designers and asked them to design their favourite blocks. And they've then collated them into this book, into themes, to create a hundred of them. And the best thing about them is they are all the same size. So you could make a whole quilt using a hundred different blocks. So it starts off with um, a really good explanation of how to do foundation paper piecing and I've read it all through there are a couple of methods of doing of doing it this is brilliant it explains in absolute detail look with really good step-by-step -step photos of exactly how to do foundation paper piecing so if you're a complete beginner you've never done this before this book is for you Look, there's all the details about how you cut, how you sew, because it looks a bit complicated. You feel like you're sewing in reverse. All makes total sense once you start doing it. But it really does explain step by step how to do it. All the details, and I'm going to show you in a minute how to do it. Um, then we move into the blocks. So we start off with Sarah Ashford, really well-known FPP designer, brilliant little shed. Isn't that gorgeous? So you've got the pattern here, you've got the photo, you've got the information about how to do it. Um, when you get your book, there are details, so don't worry about scanning the page, you can if you like, but there are details in the book of where you can download the pattern from. And I'm gonna show you in a bit how to do my favorite one, because I do, because it's different. Because we don't normally demo for the early bird, but because I love FPP and because I've borrowed a copy of this book, I thought I would. So we start off this, so it says at the beginning what the sections are. So we've got garden, creatures, food and drink, weather, celebrations, kitchen, out and about, fruit, hobbies and leisure. So, our, so every page is exactly the same way. Full colour photo, reference diagram, the templates at 100%. And remember, there is information in the book about how to download these for yourself so that you don't have to scan the book. Because that's quite important, isn't it? Is that if you don't have it, and who does have a scan? I've got one, but it's never, it never really works that well. Um, there are inf There is information about how to download these so you don't have to. So we move into flowers, beehive, bird, look at that, I love the bird house. Now, there are some that are more complicated, so you can start off with the simpler ones and then you can move up to the um, the trickier ones. But, the you know, to be honest, once you've learned the technique, it doesn't matter how tricky it is. I love the feather. So this should be 15 99 but it's 11 99 Puppy, Joe Carter. Joe Carter is a fantastic FPP design. I love her. I mean, her, have you seen her soft toys? They're just brilliant. But her FPP designs are great. Another one, look at the kitten. Have you seen her kitten in a box? Oh, message from Patricia and Dawn. Hello. Good morning, you two. Glad you're with me so early. Um, I'm going to flick through. There's loads and loads in here. If you've got any questions at all, like the raccoon, about um, FPP, just message us, studio at sewingstreet.com, because I absolutely love it. Oh, look at the milkshake. And I will be giving you a demo. Look. Oh, there's where to message me, studio at sewingstreet.com. If you've got any questions about the book or about FPP, message me and I will help you out. Um, I'm going to, there is so, there was, well, there's a hundred, there's so many in here, I can't go through them all. Look at that. Now, see, things like this, there are a couple of projects in the book that give you examples of what to do to it. But say someone's moved into a new house and you want to make them a card, really quick, you can have that done in an hour. New Home, that one's by Sarah Ashford, I love that one. But my favourite is the... The milk, that's not my favourite. I love the milk cart, though. There is a section at the back called Hobbies and Leisure. Let me just find that one. Because you'll love this section. The sewing machine, isn't that gorgeous? Love that one. Um, the vintage iron. So say you wanted to make a quilt or a little wall hanging with FPP designs, or you want to put these into the centre of things. 
or use them on a bag. Thread spool. This is the one I'm going to demo for you because I think this is a really easy one. And I love it. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm going to show you how to do that. So there you are. You've got the photo, the reference diagram, which has got all the colours on it, and then the full-size templates. Scissors. They're so sweet, aren't they? I mean, you would never be able to create this with normal patchwork. And you could do it with applique, but... You know, if you want to do it with piecing and get that beautiful effect, isn't that gorgeous? And it, when you look at it, you think, oh, what does all that mean? Look at that. It's got numbers. Don't it? Quarter of the stock's gone. So glad I borrowed one. Book. I love that. I've seen loads of quilts where you get lots and lots of rows of rows of books. That's a really good one. You can do book with normal paper, normal piecing, but this is much better as HPP. Um, Radio, very important piece of sewing equipment. Radio 4, that's me. Hat, high heels. I am a Radio 4, love the archers. Anyone else love the archers out there? Love it. Camera. I'm a Radio 1 for the breakfast show, Radio 4 for the rest of the day in my sewing room. Love the phone. Um, just very quickly, at the bat back of the book, it gives you a few ideas of um, and instructions of projects you can make with these if you think well I've made my lemonade what shall I make it into so there are a few love the sunglasses tote a few instructions in here of what you can make with your FPP or just make all a hundred of them love it that's lovely isn't it make all a hundred of them make them into a quilt I love this book this is if you want look there's loads of them if you want to learn FPP this is the book for you if you love FPP like I do um, there's so much inspiration here <gasps> that's one of my favorite things look at that um, if you've already got the book still what we've got other FPP projects and kits and books um, coming up to show you and if you've already done the project send us a picture we would love to see it. I love that craft basket. And even that's really cute, isn't it? So let me talk to you about what's coming up today. And then we'll come back to FPP. Otherwise, I'll just spend all day looking at this book. Um, we have got now 8 o'clock. It's quilting tools, um, mainly FPP, but other quilting tools and fabric as well. Um, 9 o'clock, we've got the lovely Beth Miller in, who's got a brand new design, the Daisy Quilt. That's gorgeous. And she's got, um, she's got, Three different kits, three different fabrics. She's got the instructions only and using square interfacing. Now, if you've never tried squared interfacing but would like to have a go of it, Beth is going to be showing us. She, as she said to me, it's a game changer. I'm really excited about that because it is. I've seen squared interfacing. I've never used it, so I'm fascinated to learn what you do with it and how she says it's a game changer how it's going to make my quilting life easier she's on with me at nine o'clock then at ten o'clock we've got the henry glass dream catch a fabric launch now i was given this well given this fabric a couple of weeks ago and said um what do you think of the fabric can you make something with it i love this fabric so got a bit carried away i've made a plant pot that's on my that's on my dresser i've made a cushion that's on my bed and I made a wall hanging from it. It is beautiful. There's a panel with all these dream catches because they're really in at the moment. Loads and loads of people have them, particularly in bedrooms. You hang them in the window to catch your dreams. The rest of the fabric is all succulents and butterflies and dream catches and feathers. Beautiful fabric collection. I'll be talking to you about that at 10 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, Beth is back with us with another brand new project, the Sewing Room Tidy. It's great. She's done a really good collection of kits where you've got kits with all the fabric, kits with just the um, hardware, instructions only. These are beautiful. She, she's, she's got, she's made this beautiful pouch. She said, do you want to borrow that? I'll have that. Now, this is great. If you're into making quilt blocks or you want something to carry, part of this kit, there are three items in her kit. One of the items is this fantastic PVC quilt block holder. So on the back, you've got um, lovely, the, the fabric panel, which is in the kit. Then you've got a quilt block inside. And what I love is it's zipped up. 
there's actually a quilt block inside and then it's got this PVC. So if you've made quilt blocks, making you make an old quilt, you want to keep them flat. This is perfect. Or if you want to keep your latest projects in them, as Beth was saying, she takes this to workshops with her because she knows that what she keeps in it will be nice and flat. She's going to show us in the demo how you work with PVC, how to make the quilt block, how to insert the zip and how to make the matching wall hanging and needle case. It's going to be a brilliant hour. So um, you've got so I said it's going to be new year, new hobbies. We have got some fantastic sewing for you today. That's 11 o'clock at 12 o'clock. We have got some brilliant fleeces and canvases and I'm going to be talking through two sewing machines two of my favorite we've got um lots of tips about it. i've i've um, got lots of tips and ideas for you for working with fleece working with canvas and i'm going to show you around the two sewing machines um one of them is my desire my sewing machine of great desire I love my sewing machine, but it's, I feel like it's almost time for an upgrade. And I've, luckily for me, I get to work with all the sewing machines here. But the one that I'm going to show you today is the one that I, is next on my list. Next on my list. And Hannah didn't even know that. And I absolutely love it. So at 12 o'clock, I'll be telling you why. Please do get in touch with me this morning. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me how you knew were. If, um, if you've done any FP projects, send them in, any questions you've got. And also, if it's snowing with you, can you send me some pictures? Because I really, really want some snow. All I had was an icy car park this morning and I had to scrape the car. It was, it was like an ice rink this morning, that car park. Um, so if you've got some great weather, send me some photos. But anyway, stay with me all morning. This really is a let's learn some new things. Um, now, if you want to shop with Sewing Street today, you need to go on to www.sewingstreet.com. That's the easiest way to shop. Um, click on watch live and then scroll down. I'm not going to um, scroll down and then you will see. So at the moment we've got everything is on pre-order, but it will go into um, today's show deals. That's the things I've already talked about and shown you. And then the other half will be pre-order. So this is everything coming up. So as you know, on Sewing Street, we always sell out of things. We try not to, but it just sort of happens. Oh, the 80-20 wadding is back. Oh, it's back. Now, that's my favourite wadding as well. The H640 is back in stock. That's the fusible fleece. Um, so if you want to get ahead and you want to buy things before they all sell out, there's, look, there's Beth's kits. We'll explain that they are, you'll see that they're different prices, but I will explain why. It all depends on what you get in. The one that's on the wall behind me, that's that one there. So this beautiful one here, that's that kit. So if you want to get ahead, put it in your basket and don't forget to check out. It's not yours till you've checked out. We've got some other kits by Beth. Um, then, oh, then we, oh, then we go on to Beth's next hour, just because it's in sort of a different order. And then we've got fleece and sewing. Oh, look, there he is. There he is, the Elner Excellent 720 Pro. I don't think they'll let me borrow that way in the same way as they did with the um, paper piece block. Um, the two sewing machines are in single figures. So just remember that they could well sell out. Loads of different fleeces. Love fleece. I'm going to be talking to you about how to stitch with fleece and giving you some top tips. There's all the Henry Glass dream catcher. Look, there's the panel with the dream catchers. And it's all available by the half meter and we've got it in bundles as well. It features succulents and butterflies and flowers. There's the bundle. If you're interested in buying all one, a half meter of each of the fabrics and the panel, there it is, £77.40. And we've got smaller bundles. Hannah's put them together in sort of more themed orders if you don't want to buy the whole bundle. Little bit of glass menagerie in. That's very nice. I think just because Hannah liked, look at the birds. Love that one. Very clever, that one, isn't it? The birds. They're beautiful, aren't they? I'm sure they must be actually real mosaics that have been photographed because they're so lovely. So, should we talk about FPP? Yes, I've got the book. I've got the book. Now, the you can use, for FPP, you can use, you need paper. Basically, the point of FPP is you are sewing 
onto paper. The point of FPP is that you can create very, very accurate blocks. Now, a lot of people use FPP for making quilt blocks because you haven't got any problems with matching up seams, getting angles right. So sometimes you'll see them just for a simple star block that you could create with normal patchwork, hard to match up everything. Um, and that's why you you use the FPP because it creates accuracy. However, if you want to create motifs, which are in this book, beautiful things, you will never get this accuracy anywhere else. Um, so we've had a photo, a photo sent in by Jenny. She said, I made this little wall hanging using the leaf pattern from the book. Give it a try. Love from Jenny. That's brilliant. I love that, Jenny. That's gorgeous. I've seen that one as well. I've seen the leaf. I'm sure that's in the beginning somewhere, isn't it? I'm going to find it. There it is. Yep, there's the leaf. There we go. Remember, this book should be fifteen ninety nine, but today it's eleven ninety nine. So the point, the way that FPP works is you use a paper pattern. You sew through that and the fabric at the same time, and that is how you create the um, accurate shapes. Now, first question, does it damage your machine? No, it doesn't. You are using, although you're sewing through paper and fabric, it's no different than sewing through several layers of paper. You may find your sewing needle blunts a little bit quicker, but I, to be honest, I haven't. Um, I'm not very good at changing my sewing machine needle, I should, but it doesn't do anything. It's only very thin paper. Now, as I was saying, you do normally use um, just cheap photocopy of paper. That's the main thing that you can use. However, there is special foundation paper that you can use, which I have a big pack of here. I've opened mine because I needed a bit of it to put through the printer. Now, this is brilliant. So if you've never tried foundation paper piecing, then use normal printer paper, to see, have a go with it, see what you think about it. However, this is um, a bit of a game changer with it. It's really amazing. The paper is thin. It's so, because it, you, as you'll see later, once you've sewn through the paper and the fabric, you'll tear it away. So you need it to be thin. You also need to be very absorbent so that you don't get any of the ink transferring onto um, your fabric. It's A4 size, so it fits through your printer really well. I um, printed off a few blocks earlier from it. All I did was, because it gives you information about how you can download these, you pop the paper through the printer, you select which one you want. I want to do the thread spool and it prints out. There it is, done for you. It's very absorbent. That makes a difference. It's also not coated. So the fabric doesn't slip. And that's the important thing is that you, you're pinning and sewing fabric onto the paper. So if it doesn't slip, it's brilliant. I mean, look, and it's got to be absolutely accurate. So look, it was really easy. I didn't even have to set you. I mean, you've got to make sure you print out 100%. My printer just was quite happy with that. So I just popped it through. In fact, I almost printed the whole book. I had to unplug the print almost to do it. So, um... I will. So this is it. Print. This is one of them. The toadstool printed on normal photocopy paper. As you can see, it's a bit thicker. Obviously, you can use this. Loads of FPP people do use normal stuff, but using the the proper foundation paper, it makes quite a difference. So you get a hundred sheets in here. Fourteen ninety nine for a hundred sheets. So that's going to last you for ages and ages. So I printed loads tulips, violet. Now, I know what it's like, well, if you're anything like me, you've got loads of fabric hanging around, loads of little pieces, lots of stash. This is a brilliant stash buster because you use lots of little pieces. You start off with a big piece, you sew that on, you cut that off, you can use that for other pieces. So some of them, like the violet I've got here, I've got lots of tiny pieces, brilliant for your stash busting, so never throw out any piece of fabric. Keep your cut off fabric pieces, put it into a big um, bag or plastic bucket or something and then use that for your FPP. So there's another one. I printed out the kit and look how easy that is. You just push it through your printer. Look, I've got loads of them, you see. I, I honestly almost had to unplug the printer. I only wanted to print one page and I pressed the wrong button. I've got loads of them. So look at all these, look at these. But, um, if you, you know, I would say if you've not tried FPP before, then I would just get the paper because it, you will find it a lot easier. I had been, I've been FPPing for about three years before I tried the paper and then thought, why on earth didn't I try this at the beginning? 
So it is not anything to do with EPP. I know a lot of people think FPP, EPP, it's the same thing. It's completely different, completely different. So, so I'm going to use the paper. There's my thread spool printed onto that paper. So let me get my cutting mat off the floor one moment. So what you do to start with is you need to cut out. Now, the way that this pattern works, it is divided into four sections and you make one at a time. And they are labelled A, B, C, D and E. And you'll see in the book, some are divided into two sections, some into eight sections. It just depends on how it works. So the first thing you need to do is cut them out. If you have a good look at this, you can see, let's look at number A, um, A block letter A block. It's got numbers on it. One, two, three and four. And what that means is, is that's the order you do them. So you start off with piece one, then you put on piece two, then three, then four. Um, they've put them in a shade, they've shaded them so you can see which you put. But when you actually look in the book itself, let me find the, um, the thread spool. If you look at the picture here, right, so this is the block that I've printed out and you can see they've shaded it. But when you look at the reference diagram, this is why you do need the book as well as the patterns, it shows you what colour to put where. So you can see that you're using brown, but you, know, you can have whatever colour you want for the end of your spool. Then there's your spool fabric there. And there's the um, bottom of the spool. All the white pieces are your background fabric. They've put the needle in, in a grey. You can choose whatever colour you like. And then the thread is embroidered afterwards. So these shaded areas, it's just so you can see the difference. Obviously, if I look at another one that's got more colours in it, you know, they've put the colours in, makes it a lot easier. Some people, when they do theirs, they actually label their diagram. So what you could do if you wanted, you could put number one, grey, two background three you could write the colors on there sometimes that's a little bit easier so i'm going to start off with cutting it out all you need is i mean you can do this with a pair of scissors but rotary cutter and ruler is a lot quicker you need to cut out each of these things um, some people prefer to have separate scissors or rotary cutters because you're cutting out paper. I do. I have one pair that's just used for FPP because I'm cutting paper on fabric, so it's a bit of a, a, bit of a tricky one. Um, I'm going to cut it across here first. So the outside line, the dotted line, you need to cut along that. That's the seam allowance. That The inside line is the edge of the block, but you obviously need the seam allowance. We all know we need to keep seam allowances. So cut it along the outside of the block. Now you can use any ruler you want for this. Obviously I find a narrow ruler better. It's just less wieldy. Don't lose the bits you're cutting off. So as you can see, I am just going to cut along the dotted lines. Again, you can use the rotary cutter or scissors for this. That's up to you. Don't lose your pieces. But look, isn't it nice that they've aligned them all up for you? Make sure you cut along that seam allowance line. But if you're, if you're a complete beginner, um, then you honestly can have a go at this. I just, I think it's wonderful because you don't need to be able to sew in a straight line because you're sewing on straight lines. And I love that. As long as you sew slowly, the line is there for you to sew on. So I've, I mean, you've got to work out, you've got to get your head around working it, but I absolutely love it. I find it completely and utterly absorbing. You have to concentrate, you have to think, but the process is so meditative because you s cut, you sew, you press. Then you cut, you sew and you press. And as you go along, as you add every single little piece, your design emerges and it is incredibly satisfying. If you've ever struggled with, or if you don't like, matching seam allowances because who likes matching seam allowances or if you struggle with accuracy or you can't sew in a straight line all the time then this is perfect so i've cut out my little pieces i'm going to put the others to one side for now and start with that you can start with any one of them because once you've made each of these you um join them all together oh we've got a message from Pauline. Hi, I've just bought the book. Never done FPP, but looking forward to having a go. Love all the demos from all the presenters. Thank you. Love Pauline. Thanks, Pauline. Love that message. That's really great. I'm glad you bought the book. Honestly, you won't regret it. It is brilliant. 
and it is it's just such a lovely lovely technique to do so we're going to start with a now as you can see i told you before you've got one two three and four now i'm going to use doesn't matter what color but i'm going to use this blue and number one is the end of my spools and i'm going to use this blue for it because quite like that and then two three and four is the background and i'm going to just use a white for that that's what I fancy. So with number one, this is the easiest one, we are going to just pin this one or glue it into place. Now the important thing is your fabric needs to be at least a quarter of an inch bigger than the piece there. This is all in the book, don't worry, you don't have to remember everything I've said, this is just to bring the book to life a little bit. All of this is explained in the book and it is very, very clear. It's really, really not difficult to understand once you see the book. It's very, very clear. So your piece of fabric needs to be at least a quarter of an inch bigger than the area that you're going to cover. I would say cut it at least half an inch. If you're starting out, the bigger the fabric, then you've got more room for manoeuvre. So all I do is, now the other thing is, it's weird. This is just something you've got to get your head around, is the fabric and the paper have to go wrong sides together. So. When you turn it over, your design is going to be complete, but on the back of the paper. You sew on the front, but the design will be completed on the back. So always remember, wrong sides together. So I'm going to, I want to cut out this piece. So you could get, um, you could just rough, roughly work it out. What I tend to do is, because well, I'm going to give myself lots of allowance. That's given me loads there, plenty there, plenty there. And then if I cut it, about that level and about that level. If you just draw that, um, you could use a pair of scissors or a rotary cutter for this, doesn't really matter. I tend to use a pair of scissors to be honest because I'm just cutting out rough shapes, but just to get the accuracy. So start off when, as you get, yeah, it is a bit loose, isn't it? I think I'm missing something. Um, don't know. That's all right, I use a pair of scissors instead. You don't have to use a razor cutter, you use a pair of scissors. Um, so now you can see my piece of fabric. Do when you start off, because you don't need big pieces anyway. Get a much bigger piece. Now we're going to put them wrong sides together. Make sure that that is covering all the way around. Now with this block, it's e I can see that that's bigger all the way around. If you're not sure, if you're using something bigger, hold up to the window, hold up to the light. You can then see through it if you go like that. Or put it on a light box if you're doing smaller pieces but make sure that's in the bigger. Now, what you can do, I don't know whether we've got a glue stick here. We have. Um, you can, oh, oh no, that's a pen. <laughs> I haven't got a glue stick here. Um, if you have a glue stick, this is the only time you need it, you don't need it for any of the others, um, just glue the fabric to that, for, the, for this piece only, it holds it in place. If you don't have a glue stick, don't worry, just pin it in place using preferably not a massive pin. So that's how we're starting. Wrong sides together, you can see there is loads of allowance. Now, what we're going to add, do now is add number two, obviously. So we are going to, see the line between one and two, that line, we're going to be sewing along that line. Now, as I said to you before, there are several ways of doing FPP. You can either cut, sew, press, or you can sew, cut, press. I tend to cut, sew, press, doesn't really matter which way you do it and you will find your own way. So to start off with, fold along line two. Now some people say you, you can just fold it by eye, but if it's a very long line, some people use things like a credit card or um, you know those cards that you get to get into hotel rooms, they're ideal, they're quite a good thickness. You ever do, or are you supposed to hand them in? Um, credit card or a gift card or something like that. Something very, you want something solid but thin. So fold it over on that line. Just make sure it's folded over. Right, this ruler is ideal for this because it's not the, um, there is an add a quarter ruler that you can get. We haven't got those in stock at the moment, but these are brilliant. You basically, you just need something with a marking because you want to add a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can use your really long rotary cutting ruler if you want. Obviously, it's just a bit more unwieldy, but um, this little Ulfa um, ruler, 6.99, is perfect. It's a nice long 12 and a half inch length, so that will cut a lot of blocks. Perfect for any block in this book. And you don't really need, you don't need it to be wider than an inch and a quarter. That's perfect. 
So lay your ruler on top of the paper and trim the quarter of an inch seam allowance. Da -da, like that. Right, now I need a piece of white fabric. So remember, I'm going to cut mine nice and big. A piece of white fabric, because that's my background. You can have whatever your background is. Doesn't have to be white, remember, you could do whatever. Now, remember, we always sew fabrics right sides together. One tip I'd give you if you're starting off with FPP is use plain fabric. Plain fabric has not doesn't have a right and a wrong side. Well, it probably does, but you don't really spot that. It is easier. There's less one. If you're learning the technique, use a plain fabric to start with, and you don't need to worry about right and wrong sides. Once you've worked out the technique, you can then move on to print fabrics. So to start with, I would use a plain fabric. So put these right sides together, and I can't even see a right side and a wrong side. And again, this piece needs to be bigger, a quarter inch bigger all round than that piece. So I've used a nice big piece. It obviously doesn't need to be that big. The way to work it out is place the, um, put the right sides together and place the fabric on. Then you can see whether it's bigger or not. I'm going to make mine lots bigger to make it simpler to show you. So place these two now right sides together matching the edge. So fold that back over. Now, in order to check, particularly if you're beginning with, if I was for myself, I wouldn't even pin this. I would just take it to the machine. Just to double check that you've got this right, pin along that line, then open that out and double check that your piece fits. Now, look, you can see it extends beyond that one more than a quarter of an inch, beyond that more and beyond that more. So you're safe. Double check their right sides together if you're not using a plain fabric. That's fine. So we're all good to go. Then get your sewing machine. Here's one I prepared earlier. Voila. Might need to turn the power on. Right. What we need to do now is we're going to sew along the line. Um, the important thing with FPP is you need to reduce the seam allowance because um, you're doing small pieces, so you need to have a short stitch, but also you're going to be tearing the paper away afterwards. And if you've got a shorter stitch, that makes more perforations in the paper, makes it easier to tear away. So, oh, we've got a question from Jojo. Good morning, Rebecca. You threw me for a minute. I thought it was Monday. I know, so did I, but it's not. I am on tomorrow as well, but it's Sunday today. Can you tell me, please, does FPP blunt your needle? Um, well, I, I said earlier, no, I don't. I mean, it, it probably might make it last a little less long, particularly if you use this um, very thin foundation paper, it doesn't. But when you think if you're stitching with ca canvas will blunt your needle quicker than paper, you may need to change it a bit more often. But it, it does. I haven't noticed a massive difference, to be honest. So let me show you on this where I'm going to be sewing on this line. Can I show this, Elliot, on there? Um, before I sew. Oh, he's shouting at me now. He's shouting at me. Right. So, to the right. Okay, there we go. So, I'm going to be sewing. I've, I've put a pin in it. You don't, you won't need to, but just to show you. I'm going to be sewing from this end of the line all the way of that line to that end of the line because it's the line between one and two. You can extend into the seam allowance as well if you want because there's no other pieces. You can always extend into the seam allowance if you like, but when the lines end not on in the seam allowance, you can't. So you're going to sew from there to there. Reduce the stitch length. I usually go to about one and a half. So very carefully hand crank your needle so it end starts at the beginning of the line. You can then take out your pin if you've put one in. Lower the foot. Now let's do this nice and slowly. Do a couple of stitches and then reverse stitch. I'm going to go into the seam allowance because I prefer to. Now look really slowly. I'm sewing along the line. So you don't have to worry about sewing in straight lines because they're drawn for you. And then when you get to the other end, do a couple of reverse stitches to lock it and then you're done. Now you can see I'm using red thread and green thread. Um, I didn't bother to re-thread the machine just because then you can see the stitches better. So I'm going to turn this over now. 
I haven't got enough space here. Too many, too many things. Let me move my sewing machine. Right, so we've now done, and I know, I know you're probably thinking, God, this is really slow, but I, it, once, once you get going with it, it's really fast. It's just because I want to show you. I don't want to rush through this. Um, so now we've done number one and number two. We can take the pin out if you've pinned on the first piece. Um, if you've glued it, it doesn't matter. Fold this over. Open out the um, paper like this and fold it over and take your iron. This is where a mini iron comes in useful. This is why I put this on my Christmas list and I got one for Christmas. Because what I do is now I have um, one of these mats and my mini iron next to my machine don't even need to move. Just press that open because what you're going to be doing, foundation paper piecing is a bit but like layering. You're sewing one seam and then there'll be another one close to it. Quite often it'll be overlapping. So it's very important that that seam is nice and open. Now this is the beauty of this foundation special paper is that it doesn't wrinkle. Do not use steam, do not use water, even when you're using this paper, because it will distort the paper and make it go all crinkly. Just use a dry iron. So press it open and we're ready to go for, for number two. You can at this stage, I like to cut mine all at the end. You can trim off because you can see now I don't need any of this fabric because I only need the fabric up to the edge of there. I could trim it now, but I like to do it at the end. What we're going to do next, we're going to do piece number three. So in the same way as we did that, fold that back. I'm going to just do it by eye. But if it's a longer line, I would use a little card. Cut off the seam allowance. Now, you can use your ruler for this, but I'm going to just cut it with my scissors. It doesn't really matter too much because you can just guess it. Because remember, you're sewing on the line, but you need you need a sort of good about a quarter of an inch. So about that. You don't want it to be too, if it's too much more, it can get too bulky. And if it's too less, it's too fragile. So we're going to do exactly the same. Put your paper, your fabrics, right sides together, matching up the edges. Fold it back over. If you always get, it's very difficult when you, if you get this wrong and you need to unpick it, quite often um, because of the small perforations, you might have to redo it and get another template. You can get away with it once maybe, but it becomes quite fragile. So it's worth taking the time to double check that your piece of fabric is in the right place, is, is the right sides together, and also extends enough. And just by doing this, it saves you lots of unpicking. So now if I fold that outwards, I can see, yes, I've got lots of seam allowance. So it doesn't matter when I'm using big pieces like this, but when you're trying to sort of save fabric or use small pieces, if you've, um, this, this just shows you you can double check because you can then make sure that you've got plenty, you've got to have the quarter of an inch either side. So I'm going to just quickly whiz over to the machine and I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did before. Lower the needle, put the foot down, do a few locking stitches. I'm going to start in the seam allowance and then very carefully sew along the line. Now look, this is so easy, isn't it? All you're doing is sewing along a line. Right, cut it off, then and you see, this is the process. Once you once you work this out in your head, it's just a lovely process. So we cut the fabric, place it on, press it open. And that's piece one, two, and three. Now I'm going to put on piece four, and then we'll finish the block. So we've done one, two, and three. We're going to put on piece four. And again, piece four is the background color. And if you're not sure at any point, just refer to the photo in the book or label the picture, label the untemplate, I mean label the picture. So fold it along. If you've sewn into the seam allowance like I've done, you might just have to undo those slightly, but because of the perforations, it's quite easy. Again, we can now cut our quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can use that with a rotary cutter or just do it by eye. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly accurate. Don't, it doesn't matter if it's not, it, it doesn't matter if it's not exact. You don't want loads because you're layering fabric. You don't want too little. But it is, I tend to, to be honest, I tend to just use my rotor cutter rule all the time. It's just quicker and easier. But just to show you. Right, I'm then going to get another piece of fabric. A nice big piece this time. 
Now, I know that that's going to be big enough. Look, if I lay that on top, that's loads big enough. I've got lots either side at the top of the bottom, and this is what, you, as a beginner, will make it a lot easier for you to do. So we now make sure that the two fabrics are right sides together, match up the seat, the fabric edges, fold the paper back, and just to start with, when you're getting used to it, pop a pin in. After a while, you don't need to, you just hold it really tightly and go over to the machine. Um, lower the needle, a couple of back stitches, and so you can take the pin out now at this stage, sew along the line. So we've got a nice big line here. Go nice and slowly so you sew straight. And this is where the accuracy comes in because you haven't got to worry about accuracy. You've just got to sew along a line. A couple of reverse lock stitches at the end. We'll take it out. Right, fold it back. So you can see there, nice straight line. Fold it back, take your iron and press it open. So now that looks nothing like the block, does it? What does what is that? You think like I've gone wrong, but no, this is the this is my favourite bit. So lay it all out. Don't I'm gonna get another rotary cutter, it isn't quite as dodgy as that one. I think that's missing an element. So now you can trim the block. This is my favourite bit. And to be honest, this is why I don't tend to trim as I go along, because I like doing it all at the end. You've got to trim outside the seam allowance, obviously, because you're going to sew all of these blocks together. So line up your ruler. If you don't have a rotary cutter, you can do this with a pair of scissors, but you'll need to pin to hold it in place. On the edge of the dotted line, trim. Oh, I'm not having a lot of rotary cutter luck today. I'm going to use the dodgy one. There aren't any on the desk even. I don't know where all the rotary cutters are gone. Is there one there? No. Oh, there's a glue pen there. Rotary cutters are not loving me today. Right. Oh, have you got some? <laughs> I love that one. How many rotary? This is like my house. I have so many rotary cutters. Um, Remember, cut along the dotted line because you need that seam allowance for joining the blocks together or when you're making it into something. The, I love this satisfying bit. Now, these bits you cut off, don't throw them away unless they're that small because like that piece there, you could use for another one. You can use that for the next bit of background you need. So keep those little pieces because as you become more experienced, you won't need to cut such big pieces. Cut along that line. Now, this is A finished. So I'll turn it over. There's A. <gasps> so let me show you in the book so you can see how much. See, to piece that, because it's that small, so look, let me show you the picture in the book. There's piece A. So I've got the top, then the, the spool bit there is here, and then those the angles there. But look, you can see that the seam allowance is there. Now to get that, it's, look how neat that is and how accurate so when I do piece B that's that piece there that's really easy in fact start with B and there's C so you, to get those angles that accurate would be really difficult so that's just piece A now what you do next is you do all of the other blocks I haven't got time to do that otherwise we won't get anything else done today do all of them in the same way when you've done all four blocks you then sew them together in order. So you take piece A and you sew piece B right sides together along this bottom line. So all you do is, let me take, say I've made piece B, which I haven't, but say I'd made that and it had all the fabric on the back. You'd put piece A and piece B right sides together. No, yes, right, fabric sides together. So they'd be like this because there's fabric on the other side. And then you would just sew along this line. And then you'd open it out and that would be piece A and piece B. When you've done all of the pieces and it's all joined together, then you can remove the papers. And this is where this special paper comes in. So because you've used your shorter seam length, to remove the papers, simply fold it over and it tears off. Easy. Now, pa normal paper will tear off as well, but this tears off even easier. And when you've sewn lots of blocks together, 
you will have in some seams, you might have four pieces of paper because if I've sewn A to B, you'll have lots of pieces of paper. But this really, of all the things I would say, this is when this paper comes into use. So when you've got look at these little angles and how well that tears away, and when we get into that corner, normal photocopying paper doesn't tear away as easily. Now, we have beautifully pieced block, no paper on it, accurate seams. I mean, I know this is a very simple one because I wanted to show you a simple one. When you're doing the more complex ones, using exactly the same te technique, just as easy, you can create beautiful things. So if you've bought the book, brilliant, you are going to love this. Please send me some photos in of what you've done because it is fab. I'm going to keep all those pieces and make finish it off at some point. Right, let me put that on the floor. So the paper, if you love the paper, honestly, that tearing away bit, if you've done foundation paper piecing before, um, you will know exactly how brilliant it is. It goes, I mean, it's great. I just popped these through my printer, uh, through the printer in the office earlier and printed those out easily. It didn't get caught in the printer, even though it's very thin, it it's went through beautifully and it's lovely. It is the best thing. But obviously you can use normal printer paper, but this makes a difference. And if you're new to foundation paper piecing, start with the right equipment, it just makes life easier. I find, let's move all my rotary cutters. Um, the book is today's early bird. It is now very limited, unsurprisingly. It should be fifteen ninety nine, but today, especially, it's eleven ninety nine because I did ask specially for it because I love this book. Gorgeous. Oh, we've got a nice review from somebody who's bought it when we've sold it before. The hundred paper piece quilt blocks book is a delight. If you need inspiration to make a quilt, tote bag or wall hanging, you are sure to find it here. You are, honestly. It's just a brilliant, it's a brilliant book. Uh, but as I was going through it, I mean, look at the jam, look at the jam jar. Isn't that gorgeous? And then you think, oh, well, if I made something for somebody, I could just make that into a little gift bag for them. And do you know what? It looks so clever. And well, now, you sh now I've shown you how you do it. It isn't so clever. You're just sewing along lines. Once you get your head around the fact that the fabric and the paper needs to be wrong sides together, that's it. That's all you need to remember. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful book. Look at that. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So please, please carry on checking out. Put it in your basket and don't forget to check out. We have very limited stock on it now. So if you do want to um, get it, please check out your basket. Oh, we've got a few photos of other FPP. Good morning. This is the first FPP I started. It will be a quilt when I finished. I enjoy doing FPP. We love Shelley in Lincolnshire. I love that. And actually, Shelley, the first FPP I ever did was Union Jack because I wanted to make a laptop case. And I wanted Union Jack with in Denim. And then I made Neil. I made Neil a Union Jack pencil case for his birthday once. He was my second ever FPP project. I wonder if he's still got it. That was a few years ago. Um, now, if you love FPP or you want to do something more with it, we've got a brilliant kit for you. The Sunbeams Quilt. So in, in this quilt, you, you'll use foundation paper piecing for the star section and then applique for the central bit. Um, the pattern, everything that you need to know, all in the pattern and the templates, and then all the fabric to make this beautiful quilt. It's 39 by 39 inches. There's a photo of it. Isn't it gorgeous? Now, when you look at the angles in that, to try and do that with normal piecing would be very difficult to achieve and for it to look accurate. With FPP, you can achieve beautifully accurate piece um, finished products like this easily. That's gorgeous, isn't it? So if you if you're thinking, mm, I'm liking this FPP, I'd like to take it a bit further. It makes life so easy, hasn't it, when you've got the whole kit. I was looking for a pattern yesterday for a dog coat. I want to knit a dog coat. And I was looking at patterns and I thought, I just want to buy a kit. I just want everything. Couldn't find one. I still can't find one. Um, but it just makes life so much simpler, doesn't it? You've got everything you need in the kit. Now, there are more people who have this kit in baskets than we have available. So if it's in your basket, you need to check out. I love, look at the fabrics, gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, got another photo. Oh, thanks guys for um, sharing your FPP photos with me this morning. 
That's lovely. I'm going to bring my, I'll bring my laptop case in in the next hour and show you. I made it from denim. Um, hi there. This is my first FPP project. Very mindful as well as effective from Jill and Ken. Absolutely, Jill. That was, the, honestly, I love the fact that it's accurate. But for me, I love an FPP morning. I'll say, right, it's a horrible day tomorrow. I am going to do FPP because it is incredibly mindful, very meditative. I love the fact that you cut so press cut so press and you just keep doing that and you have to really concentrate on it and think about it but it's a really lovely technique to do and you end up with something as beautiful as that that's gorgeous and i have to say jill love the quilting really nice quilting around the edge of that um next book i've got is the gemology again fpp now look at these projects um so look there's all the templates now you can see, now you understand templates look b no, and it's exactly the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got the seam allowances in there. You've got the colours. But let me show that these are really good for gifts because they show you how to make these gems and you can use the right gem for someone's anniversary or birthdays or, um, you know, things like the ruby anniversary. Some favourite gem. Now, you wouldn't... Let me find a nice photo of one of them finished. You would not be able to create these. There's the cushion without FPP. Look at the accuracy in there with all of these little pieces. And by do it, by creating in that way using shades of the same colour, it creates the faceted effect. But it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. So this is normally twenty two ninety nine. this book. You've got all of these beautiful stones there. Anyway, Hannah says we can reduce this one. $19.99. We've done it before. Let's do it again. I love the... It's just gorgeous, isn't it? So in the book, it is lovely. It does explain to you how to um, put your fabric together, how to prepare it and to put it into facet colours, how to use different coloured backgrounds how to quilt, and then it explains the whole principles in the same way as the other book of how to do FPP. Look, lovely walkthrough, look, there they are, trimming, pretting, cutting, single figures of this book available. And there's all the projects, all the different blocks. Gorgeous. I like that round one, that's lovely. But you could use, um, I mean, this is an amethyst, I like that um, Greek word for not drunken. Amethyst was worn as an amulet against drunkenness. You could make that for a friend. <laughs> we cannot confirm that that will make any difference. If you wear that whilst drinking Prosecco, it won't work. Thank you for your lovely demonstration. Just ordered the book. I'll have a go now from Pauline and Ken. Brilliant, Pauline. Let me know. Honestly, easy. If you've got any questions, though, just message me. Brilliant. Another photo, another photo. What's the photo? <gasps> no. Wow. Hi, Rebecca and team. I made this quilt during the first lockdown from the New York Beauties and Flying Geese book from Carol. Carol, that is stunning. You should be so proud of that. I would love to own that. <gasps> Whoa. So this book, as I'm sure Carol will tell you, is a little bit more advanced um, the New York Beauties and Flying Geese book than the other books, but it's the same technique. You know, paper, sew it together, one, two, three, four, five, six, wrong sides together, that's all you need to know. And look, you could create something as beautiful as that last quote. I can't believe how gorgeous that was. Yeah, can we have a discount on this one, um, Hannah? Because this was $29.99. Now look, Ooh, what are we going to, oh, $15.99. So again, really good explanations, walkthroughs of exactly how to do it. But let's have a look at the pictures. Shows you how to do it. It's all in there. How to do all these different things. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, word. You wouldn't be able to create these making pillows. Look at that. I mean, I would love to make that. You know, things like if you've got a bit of cave, a bit of tula, because it doesn't use much fabric, you just use your scraps. I mean, look... Look how complicated these look. They look really difficult. Can you imagine trying to piece these without FPP? I mean, I absolutely love that. But with FPP, it's perfectly possible. I mean, that's gorgeous, the twin dragons. Let's see if we can find the work, the project from the last... Oh, I like that one. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely stunning. 
I'm trying to look for Carol's project. I mean, that's got that's crazy, Tula. Oh, Tula Pink wrote the forward for this book. I mean, that's just beautiful. I think if you looked at that and you hadn't done FPP, you'd think, well, I'll never be able to, that's far too difficult. But with FPP, you take it one block at a time, you take it piece by piece. Honestly, it's easy. Crazy Tula pillows. Oh, that's gorgeous. I mean, th there's a bit of cave. Love the cave in that one. Some of the cave spots. But you could do these in single colours. You could do them in monochrome if you like. I'm still looking for um, Carol's picture. Foxhole, foxhole pillow, sorbet. There are only five of these books left now. Oh, that's beautiful. Look how well it works. Where You can just use neutrals. I mean, just neutrals, traditional modes would look beautiful in that. It's all about what colours you use. But actually, remember, in the beginning of the book, there is quite a good explanation on choosing colours and how to combine them. So they don't leave. Now, how about doing it all? I don't know whether you can see that. Doing it all in white and cream. I know. I'm not sure you'll ever be a... But it, in real life, this is the one that Carol did but in white and cream. I, I act, I mean, no, you can't see it. If you, but when you've got, when you get your book at home, you'll be able to see it. It's absolutely stunning. Called The Wedding Cake. I mean, what a beautiful quilt. So this is the one that Carol did. That's gorgeous, isn't it? But there we go. There's all the blocks. It explains it all to you. And let me just go to the back so you can see that there's all the templates. And again, you know, I know it looks difficult. Let me find you a complex one. I know it looks difficult, but look. It's explained B1. Do you remember we put on the um, number one piece, which was the thread spool? B2, that was our background piece, B3. So all you're doing is following exactly what I did for the other one. And then when it's it, all these rectangular pieces are cut together, you then cut along this seam allowance and then you get that curve. So that's just as simple as that top of the thread spool that I did earlier, isn't it? You just follow the numbers. It's easy. Honestly, that's, I'm sure I used to think, oh, I don't like FPP. I was because I couldn't do it. <laughs> but now, I mean, think, this is a nice, see, can you imagine if you had to create this and getting your seam allowances correct without the paper piece so you would never get, you could, it would be very difficult to get it all accurate and to get this curve and to get it to match up. Oh, got a lovely, oh, that's a lovely photo. This photo here, this is from Shelley. Wow. So the first photo is from the Gemology book. Gorgeous. And the second one, that quill, is from the New York Beauties book. And she, and honestly, it is totally addictive. I'm going to try and find that project that she's done. It is totally addictive. And look at the results. So if you want to learn FPP, there's that. That's the one that she did, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But she adapted it, you see, where salt water meets cotton and steel. Um, this book is about to sell out. But the technique that I've shown you is exactly the same. doesn't matter whether you go for as complicated as the New York Beauties and Flying Glees or the simpler 100 paper piece quilt blocks. Once you've started your FPP journey, you won't look back. The Carol Dirk Foundation piece, there are 100 pieces in there. The paper will make a difference. Make just makes it easier. That's all. Um, best press. I'm going to do that last because this also makes your FPP a lot easier because you're cutting fabrics on all sorts of angles in order to make the best use of your stash. Um, it's really good to stabilise the fabric a little bit for when you're sewing with it. Best press is beautiful. You spray it on fabric. It's particularly good if you're sewing um, on if you're doing things like half square, square triangles, if you're sewing on angles, if you're going across the bias, it just stabilises it for when you're sewing and gives it a, a bit more solid. Um, it won't leave any residue on your fabric. It's clear. It's an alternative to starch. So it has the same effect as starch, but it doesn't create that sort of residue. But it makes sewing, particularly on the bias or any angles, a lot easier. If you're cutting um, bias binding, it's brilliant for that. This is my favourite one because it smells of lavender and vanilla. It's a beautiful smell. And what I love is because it's best press is you, you spritz your fabric and then you press it and the smell is just gorgeous and it stays in your sewing for ages. Beautiful, really lovely product. But 
this does this will help you with your position so when you've got your big piece of fabric before you cut it into pieces if you just give it a quick spritz of best press give it a quick press it gives it a stability and it makes it a little bit easier whoa so the best press the um, best press this the best studly quilt kit sold out and the new york beauties book is about to sell out and the um the hundred paper piece book this one is extremely limited as well not surprised um finally i'm going to do the 80 20 wadding because it's back in stock N nearly finally P penultimately fine penultimately um this is my favorite wadding it's a cotton mix wadding which means it's 80 percent cotton 20 percent polyester it is perfect has two good things about it. It's perfect for quilting because it's got the cotton, but it's also got the strength as well. Um, it's really nice weight. It's not too thick and it's not too thin. And what I love about it is you buy it by the half meter and it's really wide. It's 244 centimeters wide. Look, like that. There we go, look at the size of that. So, brilliant width for any quilt and then you buy it by the half meter so um you know if you just bought half a meter that's a, that's cushion fronts isn't it two meters that's a quilt now what's brilliant what's brilliant about it is that once you've quilted with it you pop your whole quilt into the washing machine on a cold water wash completely cold water wash and then when you get your quilt out of the machine it's shrunk very very slightly that's what the wadding does to it and you get that hand quilted look it's gorgeous but it's such good value 6.99 for half a meter for a full bed size quilt you only need two meters but the, the way it works, if you think, what, 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 half a metre, what does that mean? We sell our fabric and wadding and all those sort of things in half metre units. So if you want to buy a metre and a half, put three units in your basket. Now, because anything, any of our fabric or wadding that is listed with 0.5 metre at the end, that means that we cut to order. So if you, this is only half a metre here, but if you want a metre and a half, you put three units in your basket, it will be sent as one whole cut piece. You won't be sent three half metre pieces, you will be sent a whole metre and a half piece, because obviously you don't want to be joining together with your wadding. It's quite often I find if you buy a pre-cut piece of wadding, it might be too wide or too low, it's not the right, so you can't get it, you have to buy it way bigger than you need. By buying by the half metre, you buy exactly what you need. Half a metre is brilliant for cushions. I use it a lot for, um, if I've made a patchwork cushion, and sometimes you think, oh, it'll look better quilt, it'll give it a bit more body, but I don't want it super thick, this is perfect for it. So I always keep a metre or so of, in my stash. And it's lovely, it's beautifully needled as well, which means that they, they punch needles through the wadding, and it makes it very stable. So it's a lot easier. So you don't get all the lint. You don't get it um, bearding as much. Bearding is where the wadding comes up through the fabric. And, and with some of the pure polyester or the lower quality waddings, they beard. So you see fibres of the wadding coming up through the fabric. With this, because it's very heavily needled, that doesn't really happen loads of you coming through for this if it's in if you in your basket you need to check out but i just think you have a look at pre-cut pieces of wadding and the price of those and you have a look at the comparison with this and it's just great because you just you just buy what you need as well so if you want to have a go at it if you don't want to commit to the full super king size piece and you just want to have a go at half a meter if you've made yourself a little calico tote bag with a nice FPP thing in the middle, an FPP block in the middle, quilt it. Looks automatically better. Extra wide backings. Um, I've used these, I used these when I made, what did I make? Oh, I made a wall hanging and I used these and the grey one sold out on pre-order. I used one of these when I made um, a quilt the other day that I had on end, I can't remember what it was. This is gorgeous. I absolutely love this. I can tell you because it's extra wide, so it's 274. I'm going to show you the berry one because look at the colour. And it's sprinkled with coppery goldy dots. But you, you can't see here, but because I've used this, I can tell you it's extremely satiny soft. Um, it's a satinized cotton. It's beautifully soft. But what I found when I was 
um, assembling it into the quill is it lays beautifully on your table so it will lay when you're like lying it flat right sides down it just drapes beautifully and lays give it a quick press when you then put the wadding and the um the quilt top on top it um it all layers together beautifully and because it's not too weighty it doesn't crumple at the back so let me show you the full width of it the quilt that we're doing um, next with Beth, wouldn't that look lovely as a backing? Mm -mm. Hannah, my glamorous assistant, is going to come and take the other end. Don't, uh, I'll try to stand over here and make her come on air. No, She's got a special jump on today. I'm clean. She's clean. <laughs> She's like, look, there's Hannah. Now we can see her. Look how wide that is. Look, She's hiding, but we can still see you. Look how wide that is. It's gorgeous, isn't it? What an, what an amazing value for money. So do you know what? If you need, even if you don't use it as quilt back in 12 dollars nine five meter, fantastic for dressmaking. Because there's so much of it. What a lovely summer dress, but it is beautifully satiny soft and it drapes ever so well. Be really lovely as a quite a stunning curtain lining actually. So we've got it in the um, pink. The grey is sold out, but we also have it in this blue. Well, it's not blue. It's not blue. I would say it's aquamarine, turquoise, turquoise. It's the same width, it's the same fabric, it's beautiful. But look, it's got like coppery, aquamarine-y, tealy coloured dots splattered all over it. So what's lovely as well, there's no sort of set pattern to it. So if you don't get your quilt backing exactly straight with your quilt from, which I never do, don't really doesn't really matter because I hate I find it really difficult to get my quilt back exactly straight with my quilt front so I tend to use an all over random pattern this is perfect for it lovely for cushion backs though but from half a meter you could probably make about six cushions gorgeous isn't it 12.99 bargain um, I've also got some Tula if you're in the market for all oh, these are nice for extra wide backings. This is from the brand new Tula range. This is a bit New York beauty, isn't it? You know, look at that. Well, she did work, she did work together with this book. So I think there's a little bit of an inspiration going on there. Um, we've got this in three colours. Again, this is extra wide. I won't show you the whole width. Um, so this one is Tula Pink Saturday's Lagoon Extra Wide Backing. It's a mint green. On the website, it, the green looks a bit funny, but this is a really clean, clear, fresh mint green with these gorgeous rainbows and starbursts all over it. From the, oh, it's from her Daydream range. It's beautiful, isn't it? But, it, you know, I always think if you've made gone to the time to make a quilt and you want to back it, back it with something beautiful. And the best thing about buying extra wide is just a lot cheaper. But it's because it's more than twice the width of normal fabric. So it's much better value. So that's, then we have the pink one. Now there's the pale pink one. I'm just going to show you that like that. Guava. I've never seen a guava inside, I presume it's this colour. Um, it's just a very pale, pretty pink. I love these. But, you know, just buy this and make cushions with them. Lovely, isn't it? Maybe you do craft fairs and you make a load of tote bags. This extra wide backing is ideal for that. And then finally, if you want a little bit of sunshine in your life, this one's called Pineapple. On the website, it's gone funny, looks a bit chartreuse but it's not. It is bright sunshine yellow, but it's pineapple. Really, but very bright sunshine yellow. It's beautiful, isn't it? Thirteen ninety nine for um, half a metre. Now, I know I've run over a little bit. I got a bit overexcited. Um, lots of you asking me about the quilt behind me. Beautiful. This is the beautiful quilt that Beth will be showing, demonstrating in the next hour using the amazing gridded interfacing. Now, I've heard lots of things about this. Um, Beth says to me, it is a game changer. She's going to be showing you how it works. It's in her kits and how to make this gorgeous kit. So if you want to get ahead whilst we're on our break, go on to pre-order and then you can pop it in your basket and sit back and enjoy Beth's hour. And I'll see you back here in just a couple of minutes time.
Hello, I'm Jane Greenoff and I'm stood in the barn here at Pink's Barn in Gloucestershire, England, which is where I live with my husband and I stitch. I, st I think I stitch in my sleep. Um, I've certainly been stitching for over 30 years now and by stitching I'm talking about counted cross stitch or counted embroidery in general terms. I also collect old samplers and I've got one to show you here. Now if this smashing, it was actually stitched in 1796 by a little girl of eight or nine and it's absolutely charming. So I collect antiques, I love to draw and create antiques for the future and look forward to seeing you all on Sewing Street sometime in the future. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Do you love sewing? Are you creative, inspiring, and love to share your skills and tips with others? We're excited to announce Sewing Street's Search for a Star 2022. We're looking for talented sewists of all genres. Dressmaking, quilting, homewares, and needlecraft. To join the Sewing Street family and share their sewing wisdom with our viewers. Live on air. To enter to become our next guest designer, all you have to do is send us a video submission of you introducing yourself and a brief demonstration of some sewing. Send your video to studio at sewingstreet.com with the subject, search for a sewing star. If you have any issues, email us and director Elliot will be sure to help. Please keep your videos under three minutes in length and in landscape. For more information, Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Good, Good luck. luck! Hi, my name's Beth Miller and I live in a little village in West Yorkshire. I've been sewing most of my life. Even my first job was in a haberdashery shop. And from there I've gone on and I've worked in theatres, schools, I've done freelance, I've made wedding dresses, and I've even made a yellow sunburn dress that was six foot long for a panto dame. Uh, having MS, movement isn't always easy, but I find that sewing really helps. I love sashko embroidery, patchwork and quilting. My top tip, you've not gone wrong, you've just added a design feature to your already original piece of work. Cover it, embellish it, put a button on it. It's your own happy happening. I'm really looking forward to coming on Sewing Street and showing you my kits and patterns and hope that you enjoy doing them just as much as I do. See you soon. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! 
miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Welcome back to Sewing Street. Um, I hope you enjoyed my last FPP hours. I promised I've brought my laptop case in. This was my first FPP project. I made it using old jeans, Union Jack. I bleached the jeans on that side and didn't bleach them on that side. Um, but can you imagine trying to make that without FPP? So there's my, there's my scent in photo. Luckily I had it with me. I should have brought it with me last time. Anyway, as not, we've got my laptop in it. I love it. I use it all the time. Love it, love it, love it. Anyway, we have a wonderful hour with Beth coming up because she has designed a gorgeous quilt. Can we see a picture of it? Yes. Well, it's behind Beth, actually. There we go. There's a picture of it. So we've got alternating um, patchwork and applique flowers. Now, we have different bundles. So before we um, go to Beth and show you all the different, and the, the technique and how to use very clever grid interfacing, um, the one that's on the wall is the first kit that we've got. Because we've got a few different options. I don't want to confuse you. So the kit that's on the wall behind Beth is this kit here. In the kit, you get full instructions and all the fabrics. There's one slight fabric change. The fabric that you get in here is a bit of a stripe, whereas the one on Beth's quilt is more of a stipple. But other than that, very, very similar. But the, so you get the metallic fabric. I love that one. Then you get a white fabric with the um, pink flowers. You get the striped fabric and the green fabric. I'm going to open this one. Don't mind, Beth. Oh, that's why I didn't. So I didn't rip, rip the sticker because I want to show what you get. So you get this lovely metallic sparkly fabric. You get the um, that beautiful, they are beautiful quality, 100% cotton fabrics, gorgeous. Um, then you get the green fabric that's used for the borders and the leaves. Then you get the white fabric that's used for all the background. You get the bonder web, which is used for the applique. It's everything, everything you need. Look, big piece of bonder web. Look at that. Big piece of bonder web. Amazing. This is amazing value. And you get the three inch grid. Now you're probably thinking, what is that for? Why do you need to use it? Don't go anywhere. And um, Beth is going to show us. It's an interfacing. But look how big that piece is. But it has this grid printed on it. You think, is it a one, one inch grid? Yes. Yeah. So that's everything you need. And so that's a one inch grid and Beth is going to show you why this is a game changer, makes all the difference and it's in the kit. So if you can't find it anywhere else, because we don't sell it separately at all. So if you want it, you have to get it in the kit. Full instructions. Now Beth said, depending on how you cut it out, if you cut carefully, there's enough fabric in the kit to do the binding as well. You will need to buy the background and the, the bath not the background, the backing and the wadding, which is standard. But if you um, cut carefully, you, there's enough fabric to do a scrappy bounding. There's also a little charm in the kit. Ah, oh, there it is. I thought I'd lost it. In the kit. Look at that. How sweet is that? Handmade. I love my little charm. Look, isn't that gorgeous? Little handmade charm. Should I turn it around? There we go. And that's in the kit. So you can put that anywhere you like on your quilt. Or you could hang it on a necklace. Do what you like with it. Gorgeous. Oh These are beautiful. I mean, the kit is beautifully put together, as you can see. You know, it takes quite a time and effort to find all these things because, you know, to be able to have all the bond aware, because usually it's things you think, well, well, you've got that in your stash and you haven't. But it is everything you need. I'm going to put the charm back in the bag before I lose it. And full instructions as well. And Beth is going to demonstrate in a minute how to use it and what the point of this grid is. So I'm quite fascinated by that. Look, there's all the templates and everything. Everything you need. Lovely, very, very comprehensive instructions. Um, now, the other kit that we have 
exactly it got exactly the same um contents in you've got the instructions you've got the bonder web you've got the three inch grid you've got the charm but the fabrics are slightly different in this one so we've got the background white fabric got this beautiful purpley pinky batik fabric isn't that gorgeous that's used for the um patchwork blocks you've got another batik fabric which is used for the other section of the bat the um bat look at me lovely together beautiful batik fabrics you've got the green fabric that's used for the borders and the leaves and this beautiful sparkly pink fabric that's used for the center of the flowers mm. all of that and it's got you know metallic thread within it you can see how sparkly it is can't you all of that is in the kit should we show a bit of sparkle elliot's getting in clothes for some sparkle look at that this one has been extremely popular on pre-order and there are only 80, 8, 80, 8, wish there were 80, there's only 8 of them left. Look how sparkly that is. Can you see the shimmer, sparkly, shimmery fabric? You've got now to have these, a bit of sparkle in life though, haven't hmm? you? You've got to have a, bit, got of to have a bit of sparkle in life, Betty, you're absolutely right, as you are wearing today. You're looking very sparkly. Can we sh show, look, Beth. Look how sparkly Beth is looking. Woo. Well, sparkle isn't just for Christmas. No, sparkle is forever. I've <laughs> for definite. Now, these are the only two kits that have everything in them, that have the instructions, the grid, the bonder web, the fabric, the charm, everything you need. Those are the only two kits, okay? So if you want to put it in, if you want to check out, put it in your basket so you can make sure and then check out, make sure it's yours. Now, if you think, well, I'd love to make that, but oh, I've got so much fabric in my stash, I really must use that. We can sell the instructions with the three inch grid piece in it because this is really crucial. It's make, you don't have to have it. Beth has explained earlier, you don't have to use it but it makes it a lot easier if you do. So in this kit, you in this pack, you get the instructions and the, th the grid interfacing. It's a metre square of it. So $17.99, if you want to create the kill, but you think, oh, I've actually got loads of fabric, I want to use my own fabric, but I like the idea of using the three inch grid, if you have uh, one inch grid, if you um, wait, you'll see in a minute how you use it. We don't sell it on its own. It's something that Beth has put in the kit for us. So we don't sell it on its own. So if you want it, that's how you can get it with the instructions and the grid in there. Um, if you've already got grid interfacing, you don't have to use it. We've, we explained if you want just the instructions and not the interfacing. I know it's sounding complicated. If you've got any questions, please message in. Um, lots of different options. But there's just lots of options. So this is just the instructions on their own, 9.99. You don't have to use the interface and the interfacing makes it easy as you'll see in a minute, but if you want just the instructions to make this beautiful quilt on its own, there they are, 9.99. Final, final one. Now this is, an, this is a bundle that we've put together, so it doesn't have the interfacing or the bonder web, but it does have the fabric. So if you want the instructions, and the fabric, it's all the fabric you need, but obviously you don't get the interfacing of the bonder web. $34.99, you get um, beautiful cream, lovely pink. I like all the little, it's like little Vs all over it. These are Moda fabrics. This is a beautiful, like sort of salmony pink. It's from the Moda Spring range, which goes really well with the spring daisy quilt. Got a lovely melon color. And then this little print. Spring chicken, half a metre of each of those from Moda fabrics from the spring, is it the spring chicken range? Spring. Something like that. Spring. It says spring chicken. So there's from the Moda spring range, you get half a metre, so two metres in total of those fabrics with the instructions. You don't get the interfacing, you don't get the bonder web, but you can make the whole quilt using these fabrics. So those are your options. If you go onto the website sewingstreet.com, Click on watch live and scroll down. You will see all of these kits there. So if you think, no, I can't remember what did you say. I don't know which one I want. All the kits are on there and it will explain to you what is what. If you scan this QR code with your phone on the telly, it will take you to the shop straight away on your phone. Magic, like magic, it will just take you straight there. 
So, morning, Bear. Good happy morning. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. And um, Happy New Year to everybody else as well. How, what was your inspiration for the quilt? That's always my favourite question. Um, the fabric. I always, always start with the fabric. Okay. Um, I go look in and I, I'm really, really lucky because I get to see these wholesalers and, mm. and go places and I think, wow, I need to have a play with that. Right. And then I go home armed with fabric, in which my <laughs> husband turns around and goes, oh, what, really more? And then mm. I go from there. Okay. So yes, that was my there, so there's yeah, so there's a close-up yeah. of the quilt on the wall. It's beautiful. So I guess the inspiration is spring. Yeah, I wanted something a bit happier. Because mm. yeah. We've done so, Christmas. Yeah, we've done Christmas. So the, which fabric is different um, right, on the quilt on the wall? In in the quilt on the wall, you've got this one here, which is the, the darker solid yes. one. Yes. And it's been changed. Which where do you want it, Elliot? Table top? <laughs> there, it's this one. The stripy one. The stripy one. It's, it's from the same range, it's, it's the same colourway, mm. but it's just they didn't have any of that left when I went. Okay. Back. How rude of Do them. Do you want to hold that up to the quilt so we can just see yeah, the difference? I'll put it where. Just so you know that when you get where your the, kit, where it would be. that you get this. It's from the same range, but they both couldn't get hold of that one having made the quilt. How annoying. It was very rude of them. Well, I like the stripe, actually. I, I think do. it looks really lovely. And actually, the way I've done it on this one, it sort of makes it almost look like it's a woven basket effect. It does, actually, doesn't it? I like because that. Because the, 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 the pale one has got sort of a wiggly stripe in yeah. it. Yeah. And then that one. So I did them sort of going the opposite way. Very nice. No, I like so that one. So that, so that kit, that is the yeah. fabric that you'll get with that, just so you know. But yeah. everything else is the same. And then the other, the, the batik one. Oh, and there's the batik. So the second kit that we had is that. Oh, that's beautiful. I, and I love the fabric when I saw it just in the kit, but now you've made it up. That's lovely. Yeah. I love the flower in it. That's yeah. really nice, isn't it? What a stunning quilt. It's, nice little it's good. It's good fun. It'd be, well, you could use it for the wall, couldn't you? Nice yeah, hot if quilt. If you wanted to, yeah. Or lovely things to put over your lap. Yeah, you or a picnic blanket if you put oh, a backing on it. Yeah, it'd be gorgeous for a picnic yeah. blanket, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you could put a waterproof backing on it. It'd be beautiful picnic blanket. That would impress Just your friends. Just about the right size as well, isn't when it? When you come Just out this summer and go, look. Yeah, look, look what at I me mean. sat in the park on my yes. mat, not getting a cold bottom. No, no, gorgeous. Yeah. So, what's this inch grid thing <sighs> then it and why? Is, it, is, it is literally one inch squares printed on a very light interfacing is that an iron on it's an iron on okay. visaline product right um and again it was just something i thought mm, could i almost give that a go but then you get these squares and every single join matches oh my up. god that's perfect perfectly because that's not easy oh it's but it is you see i normally get maybe nine out of twelve mm -mm. perfect it is, it is more easy than a very very easy thing Wow. So if you are sort of wanting to start your patchwork journey or are really hankering to get everything just spot on, just to impress your friends rather than mm. just doing something for fun, I prefer to do it just because I like doing so it. So if you want just the instructions with the grid, Beth's about to show it, and you've got your own fabric, $17.99, there's, this is this pack here. So that's all the instructions and the grid. Beth's kits with the fabric have the grid and the fabric and the bond of open the instructions. So if you want the grid and the instructions, but you want to use your own fabric, this is that kit. Okay. But it's so easy. So, so where do we start? We start, now your grid comes in 36 inches wide. Mm. Now, every now and then when they're printing it on, you don't get a full inch down the edge one. Don't panic about that. As long as your, um, it doesn't go bigger than your 12 inch. Mm. It doesn't matter. Okay. So if it is only sort of half an inch, it's fine because that's going to be taken up in your seam allowance. So you cut a 12 inch square yeah. following the grid. Fol following, following the squares, cut a 12 inch square. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, so we'll ignore that bit. And then we're going to, and then cut your squares. Now, you can use this any inch. Mm. increment you want um, I've chosen three inch um, but
But now when you're cutting it, what you want to do is try your best not to cut them bigger than, yeah. you, than your three so inches. So you cut three inch squares. But if you cut them maybe slightly on the scant side. Right, okay. Um. So whereas normally you might put it directly on the line. So maybe okay. just a couple of threads. Literally a couple of yeah. threads. Because if you get them so that they overlap, you're going to get bulk. So I can't see the grid. That's probably because it's on here. Can you see it on there? Um, hang on a minute. See if I put it on. Oh, yeah, put it on the. Um, I'll tell you what, look, I'll do it on, the, on here because this is my iron cloth. That'd be easier. It's because it's it's because. I mean, it's very clear in real life. I can really see it. You can yeah, see it's, bec it's because the um, June Taylor thing has got a grid already printed on it. There, can you see? Yes, right now I better? can see the grid. Yeah, it's um, just because it was on that metal on, thing. On this, on the non-ironing side. Yes, it, the print. That's where your grid is printed. So that's the, the side that's darker. Okay. But you're actually wanting to lay your fabric on the paler side. So on the glue side. On the glue side. Right. Now I, 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 I personally find it easier to do it this way up. You, I suppose you could do it the other way up, but. I think, why make things hard oh, for do yourself? Do you want to just move it over to the left a little bit? It's crashing with your graphics. There we go. There. Lovely. So you're just laying them out by following the grid? Yeah. You can use triangles as well. You don't have to use squares. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that would be good for that one. Um, so, because literally all you're going to do is place every, all your squares. Have I got two? Oh, no, I haven't got two there. But I've got two there. But just how it's... And then... In so the fabrics that Beth is using here, using here in her demonstration is the bundle that you can see on the right hand side, the BE6604. The grid interfacing isn't in that bundle, but those are the fabrics. And then if you want the grid interfacing in the instructions, that's the graphics on the other side, EABY72. That's the instructions and the grid interfacing. And then the one on the right is these fabrics plus the instructions. Lots of different options. So many options. Lots of different options. That's good. Because you know, it's like it's this time of year, somebody wants a complete kit because they want to have it all. Other people think, oh, I really need well, to use up my fabric. Think, yeah, I'm going to say we've all got lots and lots of fabrics in our stashes after the clearances. Yes, we? indeed. But other people <coughs> don't. So well, we yeah, have other people have all yeah. options. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. So, so once you've just get that pre-prepared one out of the way out as well. Yeah. So you've, you've got your 12-inch square and you've just laid. Now, as I say, you don't want them to overlap. Um, and then I'm going to just very carefully fold this over the top just because I don't want Elliot to tell me off. <laughs> I'd, but if you're at home and Elliot's I tend, not there, What I tend what to like. do at home is I sort of go like that Right, a little so bit this first. is just in case any of the interfacing is shown through and you don't want it to get on the iron. Yes, basically. I think, is he, is he a bit scary, Elliot? No. <laughs> He's a teddy bear, isn't he, really? <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't like it if you get interfacing on his iron. Or his ironing thing that everybody seems to, yeah. We just need a new mask. Because we all, after the show, we see him scrubbing the iron all the time. Oh dear. Yeah, when people have got stuff on it. He's, yeah. I know he doesn't go home, he just he's just an iron scrubber. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so wrong. <laughs> so wrong on so many levels. <laughs> Your job it's Sunday morning, isn't it? I know, nobody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Message from Vanessa. Grid interfacing is a game changer. Loving the show from Vanessa. Thank it you, is. Vanessa. You see, I'm fascinated by this because I've seen it and I sort of know what yeah. you do with it, but I've never seen anyone use it properly. So this is great. So now we don't even need to do anything. We've That's it. That's We're, it. You see, your square's done. Your square's you, done now. You, your block is finished. You, your block's done. Yeah. Well, it's not really. But yeah. it looks like it is. So yeah. everything's all lined up lovely. Everything's lined up lovely. And just because I want to move on, I'm just going to put the iron down. It has pressed properly, I think, but I've got one pre-prepared. Right, here's one that... Um, here's one I prepared earlier. earlier. Um, and so what I've done here is Look I've literally put everything on. I've, I've jumbled up the squares on this one because this, this was a, 
the fabrics you sent me and right. I didn't know which order to put them okay, in. Okay, so they're just jumbled. Yeah, That's I didn't, I didn't know which order to put them in, so I thought, well, I'll show everybody all the options. Yeah, you get the same amount of all the fabrics, so it's up to you what you do with them. But yeah. this is just, so again, Beth just pressed those onto the... I've just literally just grid. pressed it on, and you can see the grid on the other side, but you can also see that it's easy to fold now on the line. Oh yeah, because it's because yeah. of the squares are thicker, and so yeah. you fold right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. So fold it. So literally, right sides you, together. You find your foot pedal first. Oh, did Elliot not put it in the right place? Oh, can't get staff. I know we love. Right, so yeah, <laughs> you li <laughs> you literally just it'll just do it automatically. To be fair. Foot down, quarter of an inch. Um, so it folds well because of the... Like, it's well, quite it, easy. It's to just doing it literally it's doing it on, on, its own. on where you want it to. Yeah. Because that's, that's technically where you've got no fabric. And then you just whiz down all the way down. So you do all... The whole length. Right. And then you do the whole length of the other two as well. Okay. So you don't even need to press it then? No, well I do. I mean you could do. You could press each one as you go along. Yeah, but like you say, it folds so easily because there's obviously going to be a tiny bit of interface in between because you don't overlap them at all. No, if you overlap them you tend to get too much bulk in your seam. Yeah. And then it's... Um, it, it doesn't fold properly and it doesn't fold nicely. But if you just do it as that scant, It'll literally, you're folding it across. It saves a lot of thread as well because you're doing just like three, well, four seams, it gives you? It gives it extra strength too because yeah. you've not got any joins of seams and all your raw edges are encased. Yes, and you're doing like four, only four long seams on all those little seams, sewing all the bits together. and It's so much quicker. And they also, you know, when you're sewing small pieces, it gets caught up at the end, doesn't it? I love this. I want some... And you could actually technically do it as an inch square if you really wanted to and have little teeny oh, wee wow. half inches. Yes. So you can do it any length. I love length. this stuff. I want some. Any. I have, to, I have to say, the only way you can get this grid interfacing from us is you have to buy the pattern as well. But that's great because you get the pattern and the interfacing. And in it is a whole metre of this. So So do you, pr oh, you press it then when you've done I it? I press it then. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sort of folding it or holding it up so that when I'm doing it, I'm pressing my seams to the same direction. Okay. So, if so they it, all if need to be pressed to one side in the oh, same direction. Well, they're all going to go one one way anyway. Yeah. And I just prefer mine all going in the same direction. Well, it's neat. Isn't if it? you're not uber fussed about the direction, mm -hmm. because there's no seams that you're going to match up at this point no, on the sides, true. because they they're going against um, yeah. a plain square. There we go, and that's one way of your grid done. And all your seams encased. Lovely. And then, even though you've got your your seams there, this still wants to fold. Yeah. On the joint. Even though you've got the seams. And so you're going to go down the other the other way. This bit here, mm. I guess you might want to just encourage it over if it if it feels it's wanting to people because you have got all the seams going in the same direction um but it's not bulky bulky um because you can you're going to be putting it with a wadding anyway then you're not so it's, it's gone over That's so I guess actually by pressing them all in the same direction that makes it a bit easier, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you're just going down them then. Yeah. And literally. And it's easy to sew down them. Yeah. Just just make sure you've got your your things out of the way when you. That is the quickest. Um, have you got the 16 square piecing I've ever seen. So yeah, I mean, you can, obviously, if you don't have the interfacing, if you buy just the pattern, as you can see, you can piece it without because you can just Definitely. sew four squares together, sew them all together in blocks, and then sew all the all the rows together if you want to. You don't have to use it, but oh wow, look how much easier it is. I want some of this. 
Well, they are only six, uh, three, three inch squares. So if you're confident enough yeah. that you don't want this to use the interfacing for this, I mean, you could easier. get the pattern and not use the interfacing yeah. for this, use, use it for something else. Um, but there, that's it done. That's and so every quick. single yeah, show, show seam. intersections. Look at those. Every single that's seam. That's amazing. And that's before I've pressed it. Can you imagine in that time I've done it? Never happened. I haven't had to use any pins. No. I haven't had to sort of I match corners. I, I haven't had to do it. anything. And they match I want spot some. on. That is spot on. I want some of that. Yeah. I know, I'd sort of so seen easy. it, but not like that. So if you want to get so hold easy. of this interfacing, it is available in the two kits. Oh, so if you want the, in, the, the, in, the, I'll go through all the different options, but the instructions and the interfacing, that's the graphic on that side there. There we go. $17.99. And that gives you a metre square of the interfacing plus the instructions. Um, we are in very low figures of this in the teens. Remember, all the instructions are in there. We're not, it's not just the interfacing. You have got a metre square of the interfacing, but you have got full instructions to create this beautiful spring daisy quilt. Um, the kits that Beth has put together have the interfacing. The one that's on the wall is this one. Remember, that has full instructions. Oh, overhead. Full instructions, the metre of interfacing, the large piece of bond web, the white background fabric, the green border and leaf fabric. And the only difference is you've got this stripy fabric rather than the speckled one, which we've shown you earlier. And then this beautiful metallic fabric and um, a lovely um, charm, which I'll keep it in the bag so I don't lose it. That's that one. The other option that Beth showed us earlier is this gorgeous full instructions, the meter grid of the interfacing. Oh yeah, can you just show us the um, batik one? Oh, actually give it here, actually, I'll, I'll hold it up. Um, hang on, let's pass them both over. <laughs> I'll hold it up because you can see it better. There you go, oops, that sorry. Marvellous. That was a bit of an over, We're all overthrow. We're don't you worry. Oh Look, gosh, yes. That's the colourway. Gorgeous, isn't it? That's the Batik one. Lie down. I'll lie it down. I don't think you want me to lie on the table, Elliot. <laughs> lie down. Bit too much for Sunday morning, isn't it? Oh, it is a Sunday, isn't it? Yeah. You're sitting down in an armchair. Um, then you get the beautiful Batik, two Batik fabrics. Gorgeous. And the green. And then the metallic. Um, now, we don't have the grid on its own by the half metre. You, if you want to get it, you have to buy either those two kits or the kit and the, ins the instructions together. Um, the bundle that we're working, that Beth is working with at the moment, does not have the grid interfacing. It just has the instructions and the Moda fabric. There's two metres in there of this beautiful Moda fabric. That's if you want to do that colourway, but this one doesn't have the grid it's interfacing. Two and a half. Yeah, because the white, the creamy one is a metre. Yes, it's two and a half metres, because there's a metre of that one. Okay, so what's next then, Beth? Right, sorry, I was just going back over and ironing that one again. Right, so yeah, so that that is that block done. The next one, the other daisy block. Right, so yeah, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight of these checker you, blocks. Yeah, and then you've got eight of the daisy blocks. Okay. And... Again, nice and simple because we don't want things made hard before just after Christmas. No, so we want to it's make some beautiful spring makes. It, but we've got two nice techniques here. So we've got this fab grid thing, and now we're on applique bond web. Yeah, let's do that one. Quite like that. So go for that option with maybe that flower and that centre. There we go. So yeah, so in the kit you've got your templates. So just. Now, I tend to be really tight when I'm cutting out my bonder web because I want as much use out of it as I can. Mm. So I fit everything together yeah. and I cut round the barest bit because you don't need a no, lot around the no. edge. And then you can fit all these little bits in the side bits and then you should have a bit left over at the end as well. Nice. So so you trace the bonder web, you trace it, the fabric. Yeah. Can and I know. always trace it onto the smooth side of the bonder web, mm. and I just use a mechanical pencil. Um, 
Um, we do sell Bondi Wave on its own. If you need some, obviously it is in the kits. It is in the kits that are the best two kits, but it isn't in the one, the instructions only, in the instructions only with the grid or the fabric the best using. So if you need Bondi Wave on its own, there's some on the side there. Do you know I'm not very good at I'm rubbish at that. Rubbish at that. Why can't I do that? I can't work in mirror. I don't think my brain works that way. So if you need Bond Web on its own, two ninety nine. So you're gonna just literally just take your draw around it, add it onto your um, chosen piece, and these I've again I've done these randomly because I just I couldn't decide which order to do them in. So I've literally done them randomly. Um, Oh, so you, you want can put whatever centre you want. Yeah, the 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 kit that or the bundle that you've put together, there's no glitter in it, so mm. you'll have to use one of the three. Okay. For the flower centre, whereas mm. the other ones have got a, an extra. Got the one nice for the glitter. Yeah. Lovely. Um, but or you could just use like a plain, or you could. Uh, yeah, that's You true. could do anything you yeah. want really in the centre. Um, so yeah, you're going to do that. You what you want? Don't iron anything on until you've tucked your leaf. Underneath. Yes. Okay. So put them in place. It's it's a ten and a half inch square. So you're going to put them in place and literally just press them on. And don't move your iron around until you think it's in place, because otherwise you're ironing rather than pressing. Because you want your bonder web to glue it in the right place rather than. Yes. Moving it all yes, over the you want shop. It to stay nice and still. Okay. Yeah. That's really easy. Yeah. So, I'm sure there's one under there that I did earlier. There's one I did earlier. <laughs> See, I knew I'd got one. You've I did. done loads of flowers. Well, so, there's one I pressed on earlier. Okay. So then you literally, now this machine is number 30, I believe. And I've just done this at factory settings. Now, um, what I did do with my press cloth is I just checked the width and the length of the blanket stitch because we're going to go around all these pieces okay. with a blanket stitch. If you don't want to, you could go around with just free motion. Yeah. Or you could hand stitch it around if, oh, if yeah, you feel true. that inclined yeah. i wanted something a bit speedier yeah so a zigzag or a, or yeah. a blanket yeah, or a straight yeah, stitch i think i've given different options in the instructions okay. as well but there are different ways that you can applique on but i just thought for this one this time we'll go for a blanket stitch so literally now again you can lift and move your machine mm. your things around I tend to be just ease it round as I'm going round. Again, probably because I'm a bit of a speed queen. Yeah, that's good. And if you keep a steady speed on your machine, then it's it's easier just to cut my little tail off before I get round to the beginning. Always do a couple of back bits as well. Oh, just to secure. Yeah. Um, and then, and, and oh, sorry, that was the other thing. I always start with the centre because right. that then holds the rest of the flower in place. Okay. Just in case it does want to move. It shouldn't do. It's yeah, been pressed no, that on. that makes sense. But if you start with the centre and then... Then that holds it in yeah. place. Yeah, and then I go on to the um, leaf. Now the only thing about when you're doing the leaf and when you do the flower is mm. when you come to the point either at the tip of the leaf or this inverted point, I nearly got the wrong word then but I got it right in the end, make sure A your needle's down but B you know which part of the stitch yes. you're going to be at yes. because otherwise when you turn the corner yeah, you, it could be slightly off. Oh yeah, no, I've had that before. Yeah, so work forward. out which part of the stitch you, you're at. Yeah, 
in it. There we go, you see that's the leaf and the centre on already. And it's just a case of going round, easing them round as you go in. Sure you know which bit you stitch you at when you get to the inverted bit turn and go around again and you've got eight petals on each flower so so be patient yeah but it doesn't take that long no but it's nice actually i, I like using decorative stitches on my sh machine like this and watching the knit because you just think it's so clever isn't it i'm not doing anything but as well you've got it for me. so many i mean you don't even have to use your, your um, blanket stitch. You've got so many stitches on there. I know. Do you know? I think lots of us have these machines, yeah. like 200 stitches, and we use two of them. And they're, they're glued on, so all you're doing is securing yeah. it in place. So you could use, so really you could use one. anything. Mm. I mean, some of them have got like little nice little flowery ones. Yeah. You could go around the edge with flowers. Well, otherwise, so you've you got little leaves. You tend not you to use them, don't you? I know. It's a shame. It is a shame. Mm. I mean, I think mine's got about 200 different stitches. I know, it's stitches. ridiculous, isn't it? You think, why and do I, I think I've probably these? used about 25 in total. <laughs> I'm, I'm always looking for different ones well, to sew with. So use them for this, because you are just securing the fabric on. Yeah. And so you could use, literally, the stitch of your choice. Mm. True. There we go. And down and round again. But it's lovely, isn't it? It's a very, it's a really easy way of creating quite an effective block because yeah. it's just traced and cut out. You're creating this beautiful flower block. And I do love the, the stitch around the edge. It's quite nice, isn't it? So I'm once you around. stitch around all the petals, yeah. I'll get to the I'll get to this point and then I'll okay. I'll pull it out because it doesn't matter if it has a join at the bottom of the point. So yeah, once you've stitched round your petals and you've got your squares, you're literally just going to arrange them as you want them okay. to be. Um, and so it's literally whichever order you want your squares in. I love this print fabric. It's so pretty. Isn't it? it is, isn't it? And it's moda. It's lovely and soft. Spring chicken. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go for that. And I like that one. It looks very pretty as the flower. So you're literally just going to... And it's not chickens. No, it says spring chicken, but it, it does say no, spring. But there don't no those chickens. look like little V's look like little chicken feet? I thought. Oh, do you think? I think there's flowers, yes. but yeah, there's no. Ch there's our chickens on the selvage. Beautiful. Yeah, there were, chickens. yeah. Love this. Because I did think of you when I was doing mm, looking at the selvage. I know it's lovely. Look at they've got chickens. But I thought the little V's in on the on the red pinky one looked a bit like chicken feet. Okay. Prince. Oh, well, let me show um. Let me show you the selvage. Look at but that I wonder, for I a selvage. I wonder if there's an more mm. to the range that has got chickens. Oh, could be, yes. I think a Moda should win a selvage prize for that one. It is quite cute, isn't I it? I know, isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. That's really nice, isn't it? So if you collect selvages like oh. I do, that is definitely one for your collection. So you arrange them in rows of... Four rows of four. Yeah. Yeah. Arrange them in four rows of four. Sorry, I just forgot to change my stitch then. But blanket stitch down a seam isn't probably the one to go for. But sadly, you can't use your grid for this. You have to just sew them together. <laughs> Sorry? You can't use your grid for this. You have to just sew them together as normal. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've put the interface one up just because so, I wanted my seams to go in the same direction, in the right direction. Yeah. And I didn't want them to get caught underneath. But literally, just sew them mm -hmm. in your pairs. Um and then sew the pairs going across. So it's an 
and it's only when you get to these junctions mm. that you've actually got any matching up because as I say, yeah, the that's other one's true. all done for I you. I know, that's great. So you've only really got a few seams to match up. Yeah, Brilliant. the big the big ones, really the good, big squares. It? And the big squares, because they're big, you've got a little bit of ease with the fabrics. So this is quite a quick make then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah you could get this done in an mm. afternoon. Well, I only got these fabrics yesterday morning. Right. And we left home yesterday afternoon. <laughs> so, no. yeah. Oh, wow. That's quite impressive. So, yeah, so it, it does. I think the longest bit of time is the cutting, but if you've got yourself either a stripology or oh, yeah, that's a true. decent ruler, yeah. then, because three inch squares aren't that bad no that's true and so with this stripology it'd be even quicker wouldn't yeah, it yeah i think so we've got a nice message is it three or four widths four widths um, morning rebecca i am loving better demo something to do with the grandchildren one day projects from linda in helensborough oh grandchildren would linda helensborough from linda in argyle yes because they could brilliant. arrange the daisies and cut out the flowers yeah. and all sorts and it is they? really a one day project isn't it yeah. if you start early yeah well, yeah, generally, if you've got your grandchildren, well, I guess you've got them for the day anyway. it's quite a good way for people yeah. learning patchwork, isn't it? Because by using the grid, you know, you're not having to worry about matching and it's nice and easy. Yeah, but it is definite. certainly it's one to get children and grandchildren involved with because then they can quite easily do the cutting and the arranging. That, well, they could even do some of the sewing on the sewing machine. Yeah. I have my daughter sewing on my sewing machine at about six or seven. Yeah, because that's, so, cause that's cause it's quite an easy one, isn't yeah. it? I mean, you'd have to keep an eye on them, obviously, with the iron. Yes. Um, or they could draw some of their own flowers, because children's flowers look amazing, could, don't they? they? It doesn't have to be flowers either. It could be anything. It could be chickens. They could just draw on an A4 <laughs> piece of paper, mm. transfer it to your bonder web, yeah. and then let them cut it out and iron it on. I know, it'd be really... And, and because you've got yeah. the squares interspersed with it, it'd be a lovely way of doing children's artwork. Oh. Oh, so many opportunities, oh, oh, oh. so many things. I know, well, that's great I haven't about got grandchildren. She's only 19, and I don't want any just yet. Not just yet. yet. No, I want her to finish university first. <laughs> Preferably. Please, please. Mm. Um, but yes, I can't wait for grandchildren's artwork and to do things with the grandkids. Mm. What is she studying at university? She's going to be an occupational therapist. Oh, that's very useful, isn't it? It is very useful. Very, she can look useful. after me then. Yeah, that's very <laughs> useful. What a nice thing to yeah, do. Yeah, no, she's in her second year. Wow. So that's a good thing to she's do. She's just it? done placement at Pinderfields in Wakefield. What's that? Just before Christmas. Pinderfields, it's a mm. huge, big um, spinal place okay. up just outside Wakefield. But they, I mean, they've got all sorts of other things as well. But yeah, no, she loved it. She loved it. That's a great thing to do, isn't it? Oh, she, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And with me having MS, it's like yeah. she can look after Perfect. me to her heart. Couldn't content. have planned it better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, right. In my little box of tricks, the only ones I do clip or pin. When yes, when you're pressing your squares, mm. you'll you'll find that the the gridded squares want to be pressed. They want to go that way. Yeah, because of the bulk. So I just let them. It's not it's not particularly going to the dark side. So it sort of goes against the grain. But I just well, let them I because don't know, of the but bulk. it also makes matching seams easier, doesn't it? Because it then does. they nest in a beautiful way. They nest beautifully. I love a nesting seam. And because these are your only ones, they are the only ones that I will clip. Okay. Because there's no point, is there? Life's life's too short. Yeah. To and I want to, I want to do my sewing because I enjoy doing it. I don't want to do it because it's yeah, a chore. Yeah, because it's a chore. I know. Yeah. Well, that's why I love FPP because you can create beautiful yeah. results and look really clever. Well, in a way, this is similar to FPP, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Because you're yes. putting it onto something. Yeah, true. Um, true. You've got a base there. Yeah. So in a way, it's very similar. Mm. Yeah, that's um, yeah. So because yeah, you're working off a base, making it easier for yourself. Uh, and then. Because are you wanting to go on to the next bit, Hannah? Yeah, you can. All right, okay, so I'll do this. You five minutes. I'll do this seam because I've, I've got... We've got so much to cover. So much to cover, but we've got to finish this bit off. We want to see how we're getting I, along. I'll just go on to... Yeah, well, we did run over the last hour, didn't we? We got a bit yeah. uh, carried away with FPP, so... Well. It's fair. It's a Sunday. Who cares about o'clock? 
But it is about enjoying it, well, isn't I know. it? It's and about it the process. The it's time not... it takes, doesn't it? And it's, I mean, yeah, you want your stuff to match and look beautiful at the end of it. But, which is why I love this grid. Because you can get it to match yeah, and look beautiful. Yeah, no, I'm at loving the end that. Of it. I actually would, I want to get some of this. I'd like to have a go with the one inch squares, like you say. One inch squares? Yeah. I'll send you a bit down, shall I? Yeah, could you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'll send you a bit down. Send me a bit. I think that would look fab, wouldn't it? Hey? It would just look brilliant. Do you know, don't like little makeup bags oh, or stuff. Look or bags, any bags. Because mm. because with it be enclosing all your raw edges and you've got no joins of yeah. seam, then it just gives it that more stability. And it's well, almost it's like having it lined already. Isn't yeah, it? so it's really, yeah, exactly. So, but it's much more stable. So, yeah. say if you were like losing liberties or something, liberty lawns. Oh, yeah. Mm. I think I'll have a go with too, the three inch. It doesn't inch add first. too much. No, not really. No, it's quite light. Yeah. I think I'll have, I'd have a go with the three inch first to get my head around the technique. Yeah. And then. Um, well, in the kit, because you only need um, eight squares. 12 inch squares when you cut your piece you've got nine so you've got right, so. you've got a, a spare 12 inch square of it anyway so that you can actually use that to practice right. on if you want okay. in beforehand mm. don't use these bits of fabric though because you might not have enough if you start yeah but for practicing with but your practicing own. with your own stash for okay. definite so there's the cushion <laughs> It could be a cushion, couldn't it? it? Four cushions. Be. Four cushions instead of a quilt. It doesn't have to be a quilt. Yeah. See, there you go. Press that. And then that. And then this is in the other fabrics, but... Okay. Um, and then you put the border on. You've got your border. You've got... Um, inch and a bit. Mm -hmm. I remember the kind of the in measurements right. are in. The measurements all in the structure. Yeah. So you've and then you do a, a small cornerstone... There, a I minute, mean, it's putting yeah. a bit, bit more to the middle. And then you put the border and then there's around a, a the play, edge. This is a spotted because this is just a dash. But yeah, it's a, a, a wider border with a cornerstone for the okay. edge. That's a three inch border because that's another three inch square. Mm -hmm. So you cut that out at the same time as you cut those out. And then that is your quilt front fit. Well, that's a quarter of my quilt front finish, but yeah. That's your quilt from Gorgeous. Finished. I absolutely love that. And like you say, if you didn't want to make a quilt, you can make four cushions. You could do whatever you want with it. Mm, very lovely. You can do whatever lovely. you want. And in fact, you, yeah. So we've got some other kits from you here that have been on the past. What's your, we're using different techniques. Yes. Mm, so what's your favourite? Uh, I love a bit of hand stitching. I'm very much about mindful mindfulness. Right. Okay. Um, so I do love a bit of hand stitching. And so if I can do hand stitching in... So this one, yes, that's... Oh, I'm going to lay this one out. This is beautiful. So this is a kit you did for us a while ago. Yeah. Gorgeous batik. Again, I love my batiks. Gorgeous, isn't it? But I love the embroidery. So in the kit, do you get... You, know, you get all the floss. Ooh. You get everything. So in the kit, you get all the batik fabric to make... This is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. First of July, this was demoed. So if you want to have a look back, um, you can. Now we have got the the pattern that's on the screen at the moment, nine ninety nine. That's just that's just the pattern. If you want to use your own fabrics for this, and that's got all the templates. Look, there you go. There's the template for the centre one. All the templates, all the instructions for the the full thing. But if you want to buy the bundle with everything in it, and everything in it, I mean all the, the batik, all the grey fabric, the white fabric for the embroidery. You've even got a needle. And you've got the um, the skeins of embroidery thread. And isn't it gorgeous? I'm not sure that might have come with the backing as well. And does it come with the back? Yeah, yes. And the backing. Yeah. It does? Yeah. I thought it yeah, so you've done. got the embroidery thread, yeah, and it's um, it's a pearl a. It's a pearl a. So you it's a pearl number. It is it a pearl number five or a pearl number three? Oh, I can't remember that. I just can't remember now. I'm gonna have a look. <laughs> I've slept since then. <laughs> I've slept since then. No. And, and blinked and everything. I can't find the number on there. It doesn't say what number it is. But the it's the variegated thread for the embroidery. You've got the needle. You've got the white fabric for the background. Um, for the actual background of the embroidery. You've got this gorgeous grey 
that goes on these squares here you've got the pink and this beautiful like purpley bluey batik oh, you've got a lovely white spot now that's used for the backing and the binding and then you've got this calico the calicos to back, put on the back of your um of the embroidery, embroidery. Oh, to give yeah, it a bit just of, to give it a bit more stability. Because you're using the cotton pearly, so you sew through that at the same yeah, time. Yeah, but actually, I don't like using a hoop. It gives it a slightly raised quilted effect as well, yeah. doesn't it? But I guess if you just use the plain fabric, it could pucker. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's all right if you do a hoop. But as I say, I don't like using a hoop, so I give right. people the option that they, they can if they want to. Oh, okay. But if they're wanting to, but as well, I think it's sometimes with the ordinary cotton. If you've got like a travelling thread behind, you can yeah, see that's it if true. it's just through because one it is layer. white as well. But also, yeah. it gives it a slightly raised effect because I think it's going through the layers. Yeah. So you have got absolutely loads in this kit because you don't normally um, get the backing fabric in a kit. So you only need the wadding for that. I love that. I think that's really lovely. It's called the Life in Full Boom Bloom Lap Quilt, but it would be very nice for um, a hanging. Or, like we were saying with the other quilt, you could make it into cushions. I did one for my mum's friend, actually, and she's got you it did. on a wall. I know, it's a lovely thing for a wall, yeah. isn't it? Like that. In fact, you can have that one in, because there's an, an autumn-y colour in one, isn't there? Yes, I've got that and in so another colour you could have that way. one in autumn, and then you could have that one in spring, you and could. swap them over. Indeed. So, so, it saves having pictures, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Have wall art, because it's, um, it's an original as well, worth more. Oh, um, definite. We've also got it in another colourway, which is this one here. Should we have a look at it? I've we got open it out? Backs, don't worry. I'm going to have to open it up. because Yeah, I want it's to see fine. It. I've got spare bags. She's got spare bags, thank goodness for that, because I'm not very good at bags. Um, ooh, and they all come with the charm. Don't forget the charm. I'm going to put it in the bag so I don't lose it. The charm is gorgeous. Um, so in this kit, you get all the instructions just like before, $57.99. Look at the colours of the embroidery thread. You've got sort of golds and ochres and browns. Very autumn-y. You get three skeins of cotton pearly, 25 metres, 75 metres of thread. Um, the needle, very important. You get the fabric to do the embroidery on. And then look at the fabric, this one. So this is the same, this is the one that's used for, like in the purple in the main quilt. Look how beautiful that is. Gorgeous, isn't it? It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's like sunflowers, but an autumny sunflower. Well, sunflowers are very sort of September, aren't they? Because you've got the kind of the greeny ochres and the yellows. Gorgeous. So that's the um, part used for the patchwork, and then you get the other the other two fabrics of this lovely. I can't. It's a patterned. You can see it in there. Sort of a pattern, self pattern cream, and then the the brown. But look at the lovely colour again. The, that's the mocha. 1st of July, so if you want to watch the demo for this, so once you've got the kit and you've got it home, go to the 1st of July and you can see the demo for this. And you get the spotty background fabric and obviously the calico for the back of the embroidery. So there's a lot in that kit. I love a kit because it's just easy, isn't it? Comes through the letterbox and there you go. You all can ready start to go. it straight away. Start it straight you, away. You've None got of this. The templates, you've got the well, threads and the needle. Have I got you that? don't even I've have to that. find a needle. No, don't even need to find it. So if you love embroidery and you love Patrick or you've done one but not the other but would like to have a go at combining them, this is the best way to do it. Yeah. That's fab. Um, well, thank you very much, Beth. That's, That's been all a right. pleasure. You've converted me now. It's now, good fun. It the only way fun. to get the grid is in the kits. Unless I send you a bit. Yeah, except Beth's going to send me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, the pack that we have with the instructions and the grid has sold out. So the only way to get it now is in the two kits, which is supplied with Beth. They're Beth's own kit. So this the, this, the one that's on the wall exclusive is... exclusive here as well at the minute. Not that one. It's this one. Yeah. The one that's on the wall, and I can show you the... Um, I'm swapping hands over here. There's the sample. That's what that... Oh. <laughs> There's the back of the sample. That's the back of the sample. Um, that's what that one looks like. I'm confused, getting confused. Too many kits, oranges. So that's the um, that one. Now in this one, you get the full instructions with all the templates and everything, and lovely colour photos. 
Once you've all checked out of this, we're in single figures. So just be warned, if it's in your basket, please do check out or you might miss out because somebody else will have it. You get a metre square of the grid, lovely. You get the large piece of Bonderweb to do all the flowers. You get the backing background fabric, the green fabric to do the borders and then the beautiful two fabrics that do the patchwork here. And then this lovely piece of metallic, which is used, if I should move again, but for the centre of the flower. It's really pretty, isn't it? Little sparkle in the spring. Yeah. Oh, that was the thing. When mm. you're ironing the glitter fabric, right. make sure you've got um, an iron cloth over the top. Does that stick to your iron? It will stick to your iron if you leave your iron. It's all right if you fly over it. Right. But, but if you're actually pressing, okay. you don't want, you'll lose your glitter. Does it take, you it, do. does it, take it off? Um, it, if, if, you put, if you leave your iron on right. it. Right. It just goes. Well it, well, it doesn't go, it just sticks to your iron and goes just onto your iron. It doesn't <laughs> vanish, it just leaves your yeah. fabric and plays Oh, I hope you've got a nice glittery iron now. I've got a lovely glittery <laughs> sewing room. It's amazingly glittery is my sewing room. And then the other kit um, is the batik. This one is really, really limited. Look at that one. I love that. They look like little footprints. They do a bit, don't, don't they? they? He does Beautiful. that in different colourways as well. I'm just... I know. Itch, I'm itching to get that in different colours. It's gorgeous. Well, it's lovely that you get one piece of fabric that has got here. so many and different And then it looks colours. like you've got blue squares here and pink squares. Because if I show you the fabric piece that you get, and then once and you... And it's all different as but well. But once because you cut them out into three-inch squares, yeah, this one's about to sell out. Um, but once you cut them into three-inch squares, then sort them out and decide which colours yeah. you want to go where. So that's quite nice, isn't it? I say he does that in so many different colours. Um, so that you get... That fabric, then you get the one that looks like footprints, batik fabric, and green and metallic. And don't forget, you get the one inch grid. Now, this one is about to sell out. So if you want them, please, if they're in your basket, do check out. Um, thanks so much, Beth. I will see you back here in an, in an hour. hour. Yep. And we're going to do, oh, your wonderful sewing yeah. kits and the lovely um, PVC pouch. Looking forward to that because it'd be really yeah. nice to see with working one with in use. PVC as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I've pinched all your kit. That's there. fine. No, that's no, no, that's fine. current project that I have stolen. Well, it's current. It's been, it's been current for the last three years. Yeah, it needs to, yes. Yes, it's like the one I take have. to groups with me. <laughs> and I sit there and I sew an applique flower on and then I go home and then I don't do anything for the next week or two. Right, yeah. so I will see you back here in an hour. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, in the next hour, we've got Henry Glass with this wonderful dream catcher fabric range. I will see you. Oh, look, there's one of the, there's the wall hanging I made from it lying on my kitchen floor. And I made a flower pot from it and a cushion pillow thing. So I'll be showing you that in a couple of minutes time. So don't go anywhere. Um, you will love this new fabric range. Hi everyone, my name is Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. It's combining two of my favorite things, which are sewing and designing. Uh, I live in London at the moment, but I'm originally from Staffordshire, uh, so I think I've got a combination of two really great things. So London's really diverse and um, lots of different cultural impacts, and then Staffordshire is very rural, so there's a lot of country influence in what I do. My grandma first taught me to sew when I was in my early teens. She was a dressmaker and she was always sewing and taking in orders from different people. Um, and I think I got my initial love of sewing from her. Um, I started making my clothes uh, because I couldn't find anything that was fashionable. So I created my own fashion. A um, bit dubious at times probably. I remember once I um, bought some really lovely, as I thought, heavy brocade material. I created a pencil skirt, thought that was fabulous. It turned out to be curtaining. Uh, and I got quite a lot of stick from that. But uh, you know, in my defense, I was a new romantic and I, I think I was just fashion forward. Um, I have done a lot of um, teaching and coaching and mentoring uh, in sewing in my career. Um, and I would think that probably the best tip that I can give to people, because um, all age groups have various challenges but the best tip is to be kind and good to yourself and don't worry about if you make mistakes because you've always got your seam ripper to hand.
I'm really looking forward to my shows with Sewing Street and helping you have some hints and tips and knowledge. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Do you love sewing? Are you creative, inspiring, and love to share your skills and tips with others? We're excited to announce Sewing Street's Search for a Star 2022. We're looking for talented sewists of all genres. Dressmaking, quilting, homewares, and needlecraft. To join the Sewing Street family and share their sewing wisdom with our viewers. Live on air. To enter to become our next guest designer, all you have to do is send us a video submission of you introducing yourself and a brief demonstration of some sewing. Send your video to studio at sewingstreet.com with the subject, search for a sewing star. If you have any issues, email us and Director Elliot will be sure to help. Please keep your videos under three minutes in length and in landscape. For more information, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Good, Good luck. luck. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Hi everyone, my name is Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. It's combining two of my favourite things which are sewing and designing. Uh, I live in London at the moment but I'm originally from Staffordshire uh, so I think I've got a combination of two really great things so London's really diverse and um, lots of different cultural impacts and then Staffordshire is very rural so there's a lot of country influence in what I do. My grandma first taught me to sew when I was in my early teens. She was a dressmaker and she was always sewing and taking in orders from different people um, and I think I got my initial love of sewing from her. Um, I started making my clothes uh, because I couldn't find anything that was fashionable so I created my own fashion. A um, bit dubious at times probably. I remember once I um, bought some really lovely, as I thought, heavy brocade material. I created a pencil skirt, thought that was fabulous. It turned out to be curtaining uh, and I got quite a lot of stick from that. But uh, you know, in my defense, I was a new romantic and I, I think I was just fashion forward. Um, I have done a lot of um, teaching and coaching and mentoring uh, in sewing in my career. Um, and I would think that probably the best tip that I can give to people, because um, all age groups have various challenges, but the best tip is to be kind and good to yourself and don't worry about if you make mistakes because you've always got your seam ripper to hand. I'm really looking forward to my shows with Sewing Street and helping you have some hints and tips and knowledge. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Welcome back to Sewing Street. This hour is all about the Henry Glass brand new fabric collection called Dreamcatcher. Um, I was lucky because I got sent it. Um, they sent it to me and said, right, what do you think of this? Do you like it? And what would you make with it? I went, brilliant, lovely, where shall I start? So I had great fun with it. And I think the lovely thing about when you work with a fabric collection, particularly when you've got to choose what you're going to make with it, you really get to know the fabrics really well. You get to look at them and you can see them. There is, um, I'd made a quick wall hanging using, because the panel that you buy has six dream catchers on it. They're all slightly different. Oh, and I made a pot holder 
to put my cacti, well that's not my cacti, that's my fake plant because all my plants die. But it looks really pretty in that and then I made a lovely cushion for my bed. But I made it into a sort of a cushion pillow. Quite fancy, I didn't fancy a cushion, I wanted to go rectangle and make it into more of a squishy pillow. I'll show you those in a minute because they're sitting on set and talking about how I made them. But I love this fabric collection. So it's all based on dream catchers and succulents and dream catchers are really popular at the moment i mean they have been for a long time but if, when you have a lot, there's a lot of craft people who are making their own dream catchers and selling them um really good present for people you see them crocheted as well we've had them on yarn lane before and the idea is that they catch your dream they filter the good dreams and they catch the dreams in them really lovely projects particularly for the bedrooms obviously for the dream thing but they make lovely things i was spoiled for choice really i was going to make a tote bag because i thought because each of the um panels are rectangular they'd make a nice tote bag but i ran out of time three projects was enough couldn't do any more than that that was quite a lot um now these were all designed for henry glass by jane allison so in the, i'm going to show you the mega bundle the mega bundle has got everything has got half a meter of all of the fabrics there are nine of them one two three four five six seven eight nine nine in total and we've been lucky because when i went when i got sent the pack i had a look on the website and we have got all of them because we don't always have all of them but we have everyone in the collection and they blend together beautifully and there is also the panel now these fabrics are all taken from her watercolor um her watercolour paintings. Now let me show you, so in the bundle you've got the nine half metres in the panel, so let's have a look at the panel, because then you can see all of the um, fabrics have been taken from this panel. Look at the selvage, it's got butterflies on, lovely selvage. They should, these fabric companies, when they concentrate on the selvages, it's lovely, isn't it? It's got the butterflies on it. So on here we have, oh, let me turn around, I've got upside down. We've got six different dream catchers. There we go. So they start at the top. Um, they're all in frame, frames, and then on then a beautiful sort of dream catcher background. So you could very simply take this panel and quilt it, and that's that done. You don't need to cut it up and turn it into a hanging if you don't want to. You could just use the panel as it is. And again, like I showed you, you could use the um six on the panel you could use them for tote bags the center of cushions all sorts of different things really nice for occasional pillows you know they are particularly bedroom but i think i th i love the idea of putting them together with the succulents i mean look at the colors on this succulent and then when i'll show you the fabric collection in a minute individual elements of these have then been taken onto the fabric collection so there's one fabric that just features this one and i love the little pink tips on the end of it the feathers, which are really iconic part of a dream catcher, they're on one of the fabrics. These beautiful sort of desert blooms. I mean, look at the flowers. They're always stunning, aren't they? I think they only come out for a few hours when, the, when they get some water and then they just go. But they have been captured, these gorgeous blooms on one of the fabrics. Even the butterflies have been captured on the fabrics as well. So there's the whole panel. You get six of these gorgeous dream catchers. Aren't they lovely? Each one on their own is really stunning. It's hard to choose if you wanted to just use one of them, which to use, because I, I used one on the cushion. That wasn't very easy. So that's the panel. That comes in the bundle. But it's nice there's not a solid. Look at the, the background. It's like the, um, the weavings of a dream catcher. So Jane... But Jane Allison, she's, these are from her watercolour painting. She designed these... Um, for for henry glass but she's also a quilter as well which is brilliant isn't it because you can tell because as, as a quilter as well she knows what fabric works what scale and what colors and what goes together with what because it was interesting when i saw the collection i thought well i've got feathers i've got butterflies i've got cacti but actually all the colors and the prints really hang together ever so well they were a joy to work with so that's the panel that's in this mega bundle You've also got nine half metres. So, oh, where should we start? I sort of sorted them out into groups, really. You've got this gorgeous succular one. Isn't that lovely? This one I loved. Because it's got all the little pink tips on it. It's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's lovely as a whole print in itself, but if you were using small piece of it, pieces of it, because I, um, I used some of it in the flying geese on my cushion I'll show you that in a moment and it works r really really well when you cut it out in small pieces so I show you 
because nearly all of the fabrics are in here. So in my cushion, um, you can see where I've done the flying geese, the flying geese here, you can see, um, you know, the different fabrics as they're cut. So the flowery one, and there's that succulent one, it actually works really well. It doesn't matter that it doesn't look like a succulent. It's got some lovely colours in it. And even using, there's a butterfly fabric in there, I'll show you in a moment, th with a cream background. That works really well as a background. It just breaks up rather than it making it really solid. But you can see how the whole fabric collection goes together. So the blue spot really works with all the bu the butterflies and part of the succulents. And then the, this spot. And then I love the fact that they've put a stripe in it. Because quite often when you're making things, particularly if you're doing a binding or like here with a border, having a matching stripe to put in with it works ever so well and it works really well horizontally. It's got features, all the colours in the collection, but it's a watercolour stripe. I'll show you the fabric actually for that one for a moment. Let me show you the, um, the stripey fabric. And these are all in the mega bundle. We will be selling them separately, but if you want the mega bundle, so look at the stripe. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Because you can tell it is like a watercolour. You can see the bleed as one colour, particularly the dark one goes in. So it works beautifully. I mean, I did think with this, it would just make a lovely um, pillow, lovely pillowcase. It's like your sort of old fashioned ticking stripe, but in a more modern, updated colourway. I love that one. So that's in the mega bundle as well. The, um, I love this floral, this floral succulent one. Let's have a look at this one. This is in the bundle as well. Isn't this gorgeous? So, you know, these amazing blooms that come out, these beautiful, like marigold colours. I know they're not marigolds, but that's the kind of colour. That's a beautiful colour to use. It's really, really stunning. But you can tell that these, these have been designed by a real watercolour artist. Um, then we've got another gorgeous one. This is like the desert singing. Good. Oh, look at those colours. Can you imagine if they all came out at the same time? So each one of them. So if you love succulents and cacti, I do really love them. Only because I'm absolutely rubbish at gardening. And they actually live. My cacti and my succulents are the only things that seem to live. But aren't they lovely? So you've got butterflies flying across them. You've got these beautiful blooms. There's the sort of the pinky tipped succulent. There's probably names for these. I have no idea. Just like them. It's gorgeous fabric though, isn't it? And I was thinking while I was using this one, it'd be really good you could use individual elements of it. So I had a few scraps left over. I thought, well, I'm going to cut out one of the butterflies. That'd be lovely to bond a web and applique onto something else to make it fly off. So when you've got fabric like this, don't throw away the off cuts because there's always little bits that you can use. If you had a load of butterflies, wouldn't they love, look lovely bond web to a denim jacket? So this fabric is also available by the half metre, which we'll go through in a minute, but it is becoming limited because um, I bet you've all got your favourite. So in, but in this bundle, you get half a metre of everything. And because I was sent half a metre of everything, I can assure you it's wonderful to have it all. I made from this whole bundle, I needed an extra panel because I used um, six panels for my hanging and one for my cushion, but I made the hanging, the cushion and the plant pot and have got loads left over. Um, then we've got, oh, here's the butterfly one. Isn't this pretty? So wouldn't this look great? Bonder web, cut it out, sew it to your denim jacket all over. Or just put a few flying butterflies across the shoulders. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Or hexy patchwork, they'd fit in that. So if you don't want to use it as the half metre, use it all as it is, you know, when you get the whole bundle, just think of all the other things you can do with it because these are beautiful, real watercolour paintings of butterflies. It's lovely. And then the colours, the blues and the ochres in it, they match in with the rest of the collection. Love that one. Then there's more because there's nine, nine fabrics and we have all of them. Um, this one, this is just like miniature dream catchers. Look, isn't that cute? Aren't they lovely? So these um, Henry Glass fabrics are beautiful. They are, I mean, they're designer fabrics. They're really good quality. They're obviously quilting weight, but they have a beautiful softness and drape. 
they press ever so well and they're really easy to sew with. So I can always tell when I'm pressing fabric, the quality of it depends how much, you know, because when you get it on the, particularly when you've got it by the half meter and you've got the fold down the middle, because when we get it, it's on a bolt like this and we unroll it from the bolt. So there's always that crease that's down the center. And you can tell the quality of the fabric by how easy it is to press that crease out. Sometimes you need a big spritz of water and other times just a steam iron. This is just the steam iron, but it's beautiful. So you've got all of the, um, the dream catchers, but in miniature, I use these. And what I loved about them is they're multi-directional because I do like a multi-directional because they gives you a bit of margin for error. I use that on the back of my cushion. I used an envelope. So that's what I, let me show you. Um, so I did just did an envelope back, but it works really well, doesn't it? So when you get the whole bundle, it's lovely that if you've created the front, it's really nice to put something pretty like this on the back. And I like the fact that it was multi-directional so that I didn't have to think about which way it went up. So that's the back of it. So that's that one. Oh, let me show you how much you get, what half a metre looks like. Yeah, it's 44 inches wide and then it's half a metre long. So you use a lot of fabric. You've got four and a half metres in this bundle plus the panel. Brand new, brand new. I feel like it's my best friend. I've been working with it for a couple of weeks now. And you know what it's like when you're using fabric and you're cutting it and trying to decide what to do with it. You get to know it really well. I love this one because this is the only one. This one's got writing on it. So this is real dream catch. Now I did think, wouldn't it be lovely just to frame a piece of this? If you've got one of those, um, you know you get those frames that are like um, canvas, just wrapped round. Well, artists use them. You can just buy their little artist canvas. They're just white. If you bought one of those and put a piece of fabric, wrap it round, and either use double-sided tape or a staple gun or something to stick it round, that would make a beautiful picture. A dream is a wish your heart makes. Bloom where you're planted. Let your dreams take flight. Dreams do come true. Follow your dreams. It's really pretty, isn't it? Now, what did I use? I think I used, oh yeah, now I used that in the border of my hanging because what was quite nice was um, to be able to put the word, I cut it so that the words ran in the right direction. So for the sort of the horizontal sashing and the vertical sashing, I put it on there and the words are close enough, enough together that you can see them all, but it works really lovely. And then I use the little orangey flower for the squares in between but you can see all the, the words around the sashing. And that stripe looks really nice on a border. See, I, as a, I use that as a binding. Lovely for a binding or a border. But I like this. So you've got my favourite um, succulent here with the little pinky edges and all the others as well, but that's lovely. So it really is. I mean, they, I think they've collated this collection so well. To, they've put all of the cacti images together so like on this fabric here you've got them in a larger scale and all together and then they've taken them out individually and popped them in here and then interspersed are the little feathers floating down so this one is in the bundle as well and then the last two fabrics Um, are the two spotty ones and I, th I like this because it's really nice with the fabric particularly when you're using a whole collection to have a balance of print so you've got the spotty one that the colors work really well but they're really good for bordering things so I used that one to border the edge of the um, this cushion but I also used it when I made the wall hanging I used the spotty one for one side of the border and I used the feathery one for the other but it works really well it's quite a statement color so because the background a lot of them are greens and creams and they're very soft this lovely blue which is the shade that's used in these succulents and also in the butterflies really makes it stand it out it's gorgeous I mean it you can it's interesting isn't it with this collection you can sort of tell that Jane the designer is an artist and a quilter because she understands this balance. And I love these two fabrics. So you've got this one that's the blue spot, but then this one that's got the feathers with the beads on, and they work so well together. So you could just make something just using these two fabrics, and that's the joy of having the bundle, is there's so much to choose from. But this fabric, if I just had this blue spotty on its own, I love that. It's a really lovely, gentle, it's quite a large spot. 
it's not you know it's not massive but it's not your polka dot but it's exactly the same you see as that one but this has got all the feathers floating on it so the whole bundle you get half a meter of all of these fabrics plus oh look there's the picture of all of them plus the panel as well and they are lovely right we've also if you like some more than others we've also got some smaller bundles for you so we've put one together that's the, the cactus bundle which is a two meter bundle now i've used two of these fabrics in my plant pot which i get off the thing really easy to do i'll take my plant out um all it is is two squares of fabric so one square of fabric is i've used this gorgeous big floral print here one square of fabric and then another square using this you i put some wadding in between but you could use a bit of old fleece or um, interfacing and wadding makes it a bit better cut a cut a square out the bottom corner of each of the two um, and then you have so two pieces of outer two pieces of lining sew them together down the sides and across the bottom box the corners and sew them together and the lovely thing about it is you can turn it round the other way fold it but i mean you can use them for any kind of storage it's just because they're succulents and i've got these plants on my windowsill so if i turn it that side out there we go you can just choose which way around you have it. So when you get bored of one side, or depending on seasons, you just do. I mean, that was easy. I did. I made that in under two hours. Really simple. It's a really good way of showcasing beautiful fabrics. I think I prefer the other way. I've, ma I've made it originally that way, and then I changed my mind and decided I'd go that way. But I mean, these storage you could use them for all sorts of storage. But if you've got plants on your windowsill and you think, oh, I'd quite like to make them look a bit pretty, and the good thing is, because I have a few of these, is you can just pop them in the wash when they get a bit dusty. And because I only usually have artificial plants, I put that in the wash, wash that as well. So this is very limited. So this bundle has half a meter of this gorgeous big desert bloom one. This fabric is really, really in demand already. I'm not surprised because it's gorgeous. Um, oh, look, part of my leaves are coming off. <laughs> Half a metre, and then would think they were real. I'm actually killing an artificial plant. Um, half a metre of this gorgeous succulent one. There's only three of this bundle. Half a metre of my favourite watercolour stripe. And half a metre of the one with all the words on the inspirational 29.96 two meters it is beautiful fabric isn't it there's those are the, the four and it is so lovely to work with so you could make yeah you could well you can make the pot from this because i use two 13 inch squares for mine that's that bundle um then a little bundle Flowers and butterflies. So this is lovely because I know it's own street. We all love flowers and butterflies. So we've got these gorgeous cactus flowers. The really big, you know, they're like the marigold colour. But then the butterflies, beautiful fabric. And then this is a really nice plain blender fabric to have with it. So this is the sort of thing, if you were making something with, with this, you know, even if it's as simple as tote bag front, tote bag lining, tote bag handles, that looks really good together. The blue works so well. It's something, I think this is why fabric designers are so clever. Something that I wouldn't think about putting that together, but it works really well. Lovely little bundle, just 22.47. If you're making a few sort of craft makes, if you're thinking about summer fates and stuff, and you want to make something a bit different, remember dream catchers and succulents are all really in this year. I mean, you think of all the little cosmetic purses you could make from this, but they are really in this year aren't they nice um so the whole bundle the big bundle has that in we've also got a complementary so we've put together some plain fabrics that go with this whole bundle is <coughs> hannah made the bundle and she couldn't she couldn't decide which fabric she liked the most so let me get the panel out because that will show you how it works. So in here, you've got four meters. So you've got 
eight half meters of fabric and it works beautifully with this so let me show you how lovely it goes so if you've bought the big bundle or if you've bought any of the fabrics by the half meter the joy of a complementary fabric bundle is it makes your designer fabric go further so in the bundle you've got the um, the light blue and the dark blue you've got the two beautiful shades of cactus green cadet cyan <laughs> so Hannah's reading them out to me chartreuse and sage blush blush and peach that's blush that's peach gold and tan so you've got the blue of the butterflies you've got the green of the cacti you've got the pink of the flowers um, you've got the tan of the feathers and the gold of the butterflies so this makes your fabric go further because you know that all the colors in here will match beautifully with the rest of the colors in so even if you've bought just a half a meter of the feather fabric or half a meter of um, this one here you know it's not going to go together beautifully because when Jane designed these and she did all the watercolour paintings, the whole colour palette hangs together and the colour palette in here works together really well with it. It's lovely, isn't it? Really like, like that bundle. So if you want fabric by the half metre, do we have any left? Some. So, oh, I'm just folding that up. So if you want just the panel, we are limited on just the panel on its own. Less than 20 left of these. 9 99 Remember, you get six of the panels. They are, now I cut them all into 11, sorry, six of the pan rectangles because i think of them as pans you get six of the rectangles um i cut them into 11 by 13 inch rectangles so they must be a little bit possibly bigger than that i just remember i just remember what i cut them into yeah so they're sort of 11 and a half only oh no, 11 by 9 11 and a half by 9 and a quarter that's the size but they work, work really nicely they're a nice dimension so you get six of those they're all slightly different and again you don't have to cut them out and use for things you can just quilt it as it is because it is on a lovely background i cut around the edge of them just because when i'd worked out all the measurements that's how it worked um again think about the um canvas wall art must do some of that. I'm going to do a demonstration on that because it's a really lovely thing, a very, very quick way of showcasing your favourite fabric. Because what you can do is if you buy the canvas frames, you can then make your fabric by putting a border on it to fit it. And it's really quick and easy to do. Next time, I can remember to do that. I love the feathers across the bottom as well. Remember the panels in the Mega Bundle? So if you really love the panel and you think that, but it is extremely limited on its own. So if you have got it in your basket, please check out, because I think this will go today. It's the first time we've had it on air. Brand new today. Oh, we've got a message. Hi, Reckon Team. Hannah, thank you so much for choosing the complimentary fabrics. You've such a good eye for that. I don't. Elaine, I know she does, doesn't she, Elaine? Thanks for your message. Because she does, actually. She often says to me, oh, what do you think of this? Don't think it goes. And it always does. She always does a brilliant job. And and you know what? The thing is, is that because we've got all the colours here, we have all the shades, it's easy for us to see what goes with what. And we have so many people in the office who we can talk to, all the different designers. And Hannah's great at putting fabric together. So you know that when we choose a compliment, well, when Hannah chooses a complimentary fabric bundle for you, it's going to go together really well. And yet sometimes, and sometimes she says, oh, I don't think this goes, but it always does. I know. And it's lovely because even if you haven't bought any of the other fabrics, but you just buy the complimentary bundle, isn't it lovely? It makes you think of deserts and cacti. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's very in this year. I had an email from Pinterest telling me what... Um, as you do personally, an email from Pinterest telling me what's up and coming in 2022. So I know what's on trend. Um, checks. Checks. That's why I've got my check dress on. Everything's going to be checks. Um, but also succulents. Just saying. That was on the list. Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be bang on trend this year. And checks. Checks are going to be everywhere. 
So that's it from now on. I will only be wearing checks because Pinterest told me. And apparently they always predict the trends and they told me that they always get it right. <laughs> I felt such confidence. Wouldn't that be great to go, I always pick the trends and I always get it right. I thought, I bet you haven't. Right, the, um, the succulent fabric bundle. Oh, this one. This one is, oh, Hannah. Oh, right. I'm getting really confused. Everything is called succulents. The pack succulents. The pack succulents, this one, is about to sell out. Isn't it gorgeous? Wouldn't it be nice as a blouse? I'm thinking summer blouse. That's so pretty. But it's very bedroom as well, isn't it? I think, you know, if you want to make, that's when I made my cushion. I just, I made it halfway between a cushion and a pillow so that you could have it in the centre of the bed. It's just a nice little update, isn't it? A nice little gift for somebody as well. I kind of think teenage bedroom as well. But pretty, pretty for the guest room. But this is beautiful. Anyway, £7.49 for half a metre packed succulents multi. This is about to sell out. So if you want, if you want more than half a metre, put that number of units in your basket. It will be sent to you as a whole cut piece. So if you need a metre for that little summer cotton blouse, put two units in your basket. It will be sent to you as a whole piece. The other succular one, which I think is my favourite one, although it's not like the most colourful and the most complex. I really like this. It's beautiful, isn't it? You could... Um, hoop art as well think you know in, put that into a hoop maybe an eight inch embroidery hoop you could applique some butter flowers on it or embroider your own flowers make a few of them hang them on the wall instant art now you go out go into um, places like anthropology and look at the cost of their hoop art bargain that's really lovely isn't it i like that one i like the pink tips to it i like crocheting cacti actually and succulents I've got, um, on my windowsill upstairs, I've got a whole collection of crocheted things. You see, I either buy fake flowers or I crochet them, guaranteed to keep them forever. But I have a lovely crochet pattern for a succulent like that. I love the little pink tips on them. So if you want more than half a metre of that, you need to put that number of units in your basket. Okay. And uh, which one next? Succulents with words. This one is also limited. Again, very good for wall art. Um, how about pyjama bottoms? I know the cactus, well, they're not, they're succulents, so they're not too spiky, but lovely for a pair of pyjama bottoms. Quite easy to um, make your own pattern by just copying a pair that you've got. Or there are lots of really nice pyjama bottom patterns around. I bought one um, for my niece for Christmas, really lovely. You need about two metres, or if you make short ones, but what a lovely present for yourself ready for the summer. And this is extremely soft, 100% cotton, beautifully breathable. But even if you made little short ones, perfect for that. Just Or just a little drawstring bag to keep your laundry in. Put your pyjamas in. Um, but you can use them for, you know, for, for laundry, one to put your underwear in. But it's just really nice. I think the whole sort of the dream idea. But just all, you know, with half a metre, you can make two cushions. Use a different fabric for the back. If you've got the complementary bundle, use one of the plain fabrics for the back. If you've got a little bit left over, like this one here, Catch Your Dreams, you could just cut that out and sew that to something. Just sew it to a, a card be a lovely little gift card for somebody, wouldn't it? Another lovely message from Elaine. First present from my boyfriend, now husband. A cactus. Still have it after 45 years. Wow, that's very impressive. His mother gave me a succulent, so always love them from Elaine. That's really impressive. Now, I've got a collection of five cacti that I've had for about five years, and I'm really impressed they're still alive because they're actually my only real plants. So that's 45 years. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? Well, thanks for that, Elaine. Anyone else got some good cacti stories or collections? I love the one with the... So actually, now I know which these flowers are from. So this one here, available by the half metre, we can now see, because I've just seen it, where this comes from. 
because look, it comes from that one there, doesn't it? Doesn't that look nice together? But look, that one is that one. So now we know where it went. So I used that. That looked really nice, actually. I used that in the, um, the half square triangles because it looks lovely just as a little piece, doesn't it? But, you know, when you look at a piece of fabric as a whole, you think, oh, well, that's lovely. But you think you have to think of it. What does it look like if I cut it in pieces? You get just really lovely flashes of orange, yellow and green just in a small triangle. It works really well. So this one, by the half metre, yellow, cactus flowers, yellow. And the thing is, in real world, these cactus flowers don't come out for very long. It's the only time you're going to see them for any length of time on a piece of fabric. But nice to embroider on as well. Just think of, you know, if you don't want to, if you only want to do a little bit. Ooh, there's my hand there. A few French knots, a little bit of embellishment in the centre of there. You could do some straight stitches on there. That's lovely, isn't it? Like that. Yellow fabric. Um, then, oh, which one should we do next? Then the butterflies. So if you want the butterflies by the half metre, oh, we showed this one to you, didn't it? It's lovely. I am thinking a plique. Look lovely as a plique. Isn't that lovely? So you've got alternate blue and ochre butterflies. They're probably some amazing desert tossed butterflies, they're called. Like the feathers is called tossed feathers. Tossed butterflies. Again, lovely to use. Now you could use these. Be nice pyjama bottoms. I think I'm a bit obsessed with pyjama bottoms at the moment. Probably because mine are rubbish and I need to make some. But I think we often look at this fabric and think, oh, this is a quilting fabric range. We forget we can use it for dressmaking as well. Obviously, any home makes as well. It doesn't have to be patchwork and quilting. But just think about dressmaking as well. Man's shirt would be nice in that, wouldn't it? Because it is such a soft and really lovely draping fabric. So I'll give it a little shake for you. Or using inside colours and cut, collars and cut, colours and cut, collars and cuts. But look, does that look nice? Does that look nice as a shirt? Nice as a lining as well, wouldn't it? I like that. So remember, dressmaking too. Now, when it because it says 0.5 metres after it, that means that you can buy it in multiples. So if you want two metres of this, put four units. It will be sent to you as two whole metres, not four half metres. If you see what I mean. But it's very grown up butterfly because sometimes you see butterflies that are a bit more cartoony, a bit clip arty. Whereas this is quite grown up, isn't it? I think it's really pretty. Nice one, that one. Um, the mini dream catchers. This is gorgeous. Again, this is really good for fussy cutting. You can cut out little, little you cut these out individually, couldn't you? Because they're beautiful, aren't they? Just like little baby ones. Aren't they nice? Aren't they lovely? But I love the fact that all of these little dream catchers, they've got the ribbons and the feathers, and they all mean things. It's quite symbolic, the whole, with all the different beads on them. That's beautiful, isn't it? So if you just fancy some mini dream catchers, then, and then you can catch your special dreams, but only the nice ones, not the horrible ones. But then aren't the horrible ones called nightmares? I'm going to turn that one around. Don't they look lovely in miniature? I'm presuming, I haven't actually checked. Are they exactly the same as the big ones? I'm going to see if I can find the matching one. Yeah, look. So, 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 on the big panel, look. On the big panel, there's the big dream catcher. Uh, now, the big panel has sold out on its own. It is in the mega bundle. And you get them, you get this fabric in the panel. But look, there's the big version. And look, same one, but the baby one. So they are exactly the same. In fact, I can spot all, I've, I can spot them all now. So if you want to buy the mega bundle, £77.40, that's the only way that you can get hold of the panel because the panel has sold out on its own. And the pack succulents, which is this beautiful, this one. That one is sold out on its own. And this one is close to selling out. So if you want to get any of those and you want them, you have to get them in the mega bundle. Look, I found that one's little friend. Look, 
there's that one's a little friend but there is still some of the mega bundle left so if you do want to have the whole collection be as excited as i was when they arrive in at home it's gorgeous isn't it so that one you know you can think of the little just cutting out the little ones of that but it's just beautiful isn't it i mean these it's lovely to see a different theme we see so many different themes of fabric, all different sorts. This, I've not seen anything like this at all. And it's lovely that they've used an artist, who's all, Henry Glass has used an artist, Jane, who's also a quilter as well, to create this because she understands. And look at the background of this one. It's layered, it's feathers. So the little feathers that are falling. Um, can we zoom in, please, Elliot? So if you see on this one, you see these little feathers. They are the background to here, which it gives it that almost like, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, it's like a parchment background. And then I looked closer and I thought, no, it's feathers. The details, fab, isn't it? It's dream catchers lying on a bed of feathers. Oh, maybe that'd make you help to sleep really well, wouldn't it? Make a nice um, wash bag. Nice little bit of waterproof lining, bit of eau de coat on it. That'd be lovely. Um, which ones haven't we done by the half metre? The feathers. Tossed feathers. I really like this one because I like the blue. I think the blue is really clean and clear and beautiful. The red dots are the beads that are on the feathers. Now, I can't remember the symbolism behind this, but you have the feathers on the bottom of the dream catchers and you have the beads as well. And I used that on the hanging and actually it works really well when put in tandem with just the um, dot on its own. So I used the, um, the feathers on the side sashing and then I used the plain dot on the top and the bottom and it works really well together. I love this one. Really pretty fabric. <gasps> that was a bit closer, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, so the beads and the feathers, there, there's the feathers, that hang off the dream catcher are thought of as sacred items. Thank you, Hannah. She's a dream catcher specialist. So they are sacred items and they also have ribbons on them as well. So that's part of the Captain of Dreams. But isn't this a gorgeous fabric? So although it's part of this whole sort of dream catchers and deserts and succulents, it's just feathers. Feathers on a background, it's lovely. So if you only want half a metre of this, you don't want the rest of the, the bundle, you just want this as a half metre because it is so pretty. Then 7.49. And remember, if you want more than half a metre, you just put that number of units in half metre increments in your basket. But I, I really like this. It was hard. I ran out of time. If they gave me a month, I could have made more. <laughs> and I'd have had even, I could have made even more. But that's a beautiful fabric, isn't it? I really love that one. And then just the dots, which is exactly the same as this one. But it's funny, isn't it? So um, sometimes even when we buy fabric ranges, we don't always buy all of these. And these sometimes get a bit left. But they're really, these fabrics are just as important part of a collection as the big feature prints. Because these are the fabrics that make things stand out. So these are the fabrics that you put round the beautiful panel and then that makes it stand out. So they're just as important, although I think we often concentrate on the big feature prints, they're amazing. It's these that coordinate. Where can you get these fabrics? The plain, exactly the right colour without knowing. And often you just buy the main ones and then you think, oh, I don't know what to do with the edge of it. Because you can't use all the big feature prints because otherwise uh, they're all trying to compete with each other. You need different levels. You need your big, bold feature prints. You need your nice, low volume, small spots. Having the two together is lovely. And sometimes in fabric collections, you'll get a couple of these low volume ones. And it's lovely because they blend beautifully with the main feature prints, but they also make them stand out. And also, I think sometimes they we forget about them just as a fabric on their own. So these two fabrics are a beautiful pair. They work really well together. You don't have to then use all of the um, all of the rest of it. So the graphics on set dots, that's the plain one. If you want the feathery one, that one's called tossed feathers. Um, and then the final one is the stripy one, which I love. And again, this is great. Now, I was really pleased that this, the way the stripes run. 
stripes run differently on different fabrics, but they run um, parallel to the selvage, which is great because I think this is a perfect binding and border fabric. And because when you cut a binding and a border, let me just move those, um, you cut to put it like this, you get your um, rotary cutter. If I had one, I'd show you. Can't even see. Well, you get your rotary. Oh, hang on. one moment. One moment. Oh. When you're cutting borders and binding, you lay your fabric like this on your mat. So you've got the, I always put the fold at the top and I put the selvages at the bottom. Then I line up the fold with the line on my cutting mat. <coughs> I'm going to go for the full on, show you how to do this. Cutting mat. Now I've got a bigger cutter. You obviously need a bigger cutting mat than this because this is the best way to cut full on fabric. So this one isn't big enough, but I, the other one's around the other side. So line up the fold on the fabric with one of the lines on your cutting mat, doesn't matter which one, and make sure your cutting mat is big enough. This one isn't, so just ignore that. Now that fold will be nice and straight. So when you first start cutting, if you've got one of these big 24 inch rulers, if you have a look on our website under the ruler section, you'll find them. You can, first of all, trim off. So line up the edge of your ruler with one of the lines on the edge of the mat and make sure it overlaps this all the way along and then trim it along. That will straighten it off. Now when you cut your borders and bindings, so say I want to cut a two inch border. Now I've cut it straight, I just cut along the two inches and because the stripes are going that way, that means that on the, um, on the, borders like this you get the stripes going that way but also when I bound the edge of this quilt when I showed the bound the edge of the quilt it made the stripes went that way um. so because I really wanted the stripes to go that way and because they're print and it works better than if you've got the stripes going the other way you don't see all the color so just if you cut it, always line it up across the top with the fold. Then you're cutting the two layers together. And that's why I love having a 24 inch ruler because you can cut a whole width. Obviously, remember this cutting mat isn't big enough, but you can cut all the way down. Well, after you've cut two or three strips, square it back up again because it always goes off a bit. Anyway, that's my top tip. Top tip for cutting fabric. You can tell that I've um, cut a lot of this fabric <laughs> recently i love cutting out fabric actually you need a bigger cutting mat yeah i know but it's, it's a good job yes if i hadn't loved it well i would have sent it back and said no i cannot work with that i do not love it i cannot work with it i don't think they'd have been very pleased but no i do actually love it so i'm just going to quickly whiz back through the mega bundle because a lot of them have sold out so in the mega bundle you get the panel which has all of this, all of the six, um, all the six Dreamcatcher rectangles. This is the only way to get hold of the panel now because it has sold out as a whole. Oh, we got a picture of all of them. Right, so you get the panel that's there on the right. Then you get half a meter of all of these nine fabrics. You get the set dots, the stripes, the one with words on the butterflies, the cactus flowers, the lovely green succulent. All of those beautiful floral ones together, the mini dream catchers, tossed feathers, and there are only three bundles remaining when everybody has checked out. This is brand new today, and I'm not, and it's everything because I did check because I thought I don't know if they've bought them all. So I went onto the Henry Glass website and I checked, and we do have all of the fabrics, which I was really pleased with because quite often. I say, people think, oh, we don't need those, the smaller ones. Yes, we do. We like all of them. I'm not sure whether we will be getting this back in stock. Well, we won't. We will not be getting this collection back in stock because the whole point in is that we want to bring you new fabric collection, want to get them out there, sell them to you so we can bring you more ones rather than keep buying the same stuff all the time. Um, and because some of the fabrics have now sold out by the half metre, we won't be able to do this bundle again. And so when it's gone, it's gone. And there are some fabrics in this that you can't get anymore. So you can't get the panel. You can't, you can't get the pack succulents bottom left-hand corner. 
there are now more people wanting this bundle than we've got so if it's in if it's in your basket quickly check out and you will love it as much as i do and please when you've made something with it send us a photo because you know i had to i sat there and thought oh, what am i going to make with it so i'd love to see what you make with it particularly if you make some pajama bottoms i'd love to see them right i've got quickly 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 um that we haven't had on before but it's lovely. It's really colourful and it's really bright. So Hannah chose it because it goes really well with it. This is lovely. It's like, it's like this glass mosaic tiles. There's a mosaic tile shop in Bath where I live. And they, the window is full of baskets of these. And this is what it reminds me of. They're those little glass um, mosaic tiles. Isn't that gorgeous? Glass menagerie, cool stained glass fabric. So this is what a full half metre looks like. Look at the colour. So you can use it as a whole piece because you've got blues and greens and yellows or you could um, use it as different strips. You get lots of different colours in here. Work fantastic as a binding if you used it as a scrappy binding. But what's lovely because you, can you see you've got the shine on the tiles and that means that you'll get a lovely texture, almost like a 3D look to your fabric. Um, we've also got the same fabric in like um, ochre, ochre colours. That's gorgeous, isn't it? So you've got that in yellows, golds, ochres and then deep, deep red. So again, you've got a lot of colours in here, but there's a real depth to it. Beautiful. Yeah. If you were, yes, Hannah says. If you were doing a sunflower, wouldn't that look lovely for the middle of it? Well, yes, it would. Can you imagine that's the circle in the centre of a flower? Because it does look like all the little seeds in it. Just very unusual. It's lovely to see fabrics like that. Again, this is available by the half metre. It's not a panel. So if you want more than that, if you want more of it. Um, and then Hannah's favourites. These ones. These are lovely. Well, these look like mosaics you've got on the sort of on the pavement, don't they? Like you've got the concrete and then in it, you've got all of the mosaics. It does almost look like a photograph. I don't think it, I think it's a drawing. It's gorgeous. <coughs> yeah, Hannah says there's a house in Philadelphia where the, the, a man does this. And he just mosaics everything, but it's quite Barcelona as well, isn't it? That's very mosaic-y. But it's beautiful, isn't it? So it's a lovely fabric to own because you've got lots of different colours in there. Maybe if you're doing FPP or you're doing applique and you want lots of different colours. But again, as a whole fabric on its own, it's beautiful. If you're doing something and you want sashes, sashing and borders, but you want something with a little bit of colour and interest, this is just stunning, isn't it? Love that. We also have it in another colourway, which is this one. This is like sort of primary really super bright look at that one red blue stained glass fabric it's so unusual love to see something that's just a little bit different isn't it because again brilliant brilliant put it in your fpp bucket i actually have an fpp shoe box it's not a thing it's just all my small scraps of fabric i put in a shoe box and this would go in it as well because you've got so many little colors here but works beautifully as a whole fabric too now, the next one is actually my favourite one. This is um, Hannah's favourite one. But this is mine because I think, I have seen this one before and I think this is amazingly clever. Having spent a whole year on Bird of the Month, I thought I'd never want to see another bird. But I became very um, attached to them. And look at these. Completely different. But these, again, are mosaic. Like, and I'm, sh I'm sure these must be photos of them. So you've got that kind of grouting, concrete -y background. But look at this. You know how when you see mosaic artists and they often use like shimmery colours? So this part of the feathers are really shimmery. Beautiful colours for the, um, the red berries. So on this panel, this is a panel, so it's not, you don't buy this by the half metre. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten birds, but different shapes. So you've got like a big, big birds, two small rectangulars, four small rectangulars, and then the bottom. So again, you could just buy this, quilt it as it is, 
or you could cut them out, put bigger borders on, other bindings, and make it into an even bigger piece. You could use it in amongst other things, so you could make a really big quilt by um, choosing some sort of plain fabrics to intersperse amongst it. And I love the fact it has that mosaic border down the side as well. Um, one more. Yeah, Beth will be back on with us um, very soon. But as we're, we're Sunday, I don't think we need to take account of o'clocks. We'll just go 15 from now on. Um, and then the final one. I love this mosaic art. Makes you want to have a go at it, doesn't it? But if you're no good at art, no good at mosaic, you just buy the fabric. Look at that. Right, yeah, so if you love mosaics, look up, not now, in the break, Magic Gardens Philadelphia on Google. That's what, yeah, oh so yeah, so Han, Hannah's just found the picture, but um, Kaif went there and he's used that in his photos. So have a look at that, Magic Garden Philadelphia. Look at this panel, look, zebras. It's amazing, isn't it? You've got a giraffe, you've got a fantastic, I have to move it over because it's so big, fantastic lion's face, I mean, that's quite stunning, cushion on the sofa. Then you've got a mm, leopard, leopard or cheetah, not sure. Another, and a leopard or cheetah. Not very good at knowing the difference between the two, but isn't it beautiful? I love the giraffe. It's gorgeous, isn't he? All on a piece of fabric. So that one is a panel, 12 99 it's um, your normal 44 inch width, but then it's 90 centimetres long. So you get all of those um, beautiful, they're just gorgeous, aren't they? Lovely. Well, look, imagine the quilting that you could do. You could even free motion quilt the whole thing by going along all the lines. Anyway, what a beautiful fabric collection we've had today. So Beth will be with us in a couple of minutes. She is going to show us her brand new kit to make this gorgeous sewing organiser and... Um, quilt black holder and we've got the um, needle case and we've got lots of different options just like last time where we've got um, instructions only we've got instructions with fabric we've got hardware only all sorts of things and we're going to learn all about p sewing with pu and how to insert the zip as well and how to make a hanger um, right i'll see you back here in a couple of minutes don't forget to google magic gardens philadelphia and i'll see you in a bit Bye bye <laughs> Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also a plique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? 
why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Do you love sewing? Are you creative, inspiring and love to share your skills and tips with others? We're excited to announce Sewing Street's Search for a Star 2022. We're looking for talented sewists of all genres. Dressmaking, quilting, homewares and needlecraft to join the Sewing Street family and share their sewing wisdom with our viewers live on air. To enter to become our next guest designer, all you have to do is send us a video submission of you introducing yourself and a brief demonstration of some sewing. Send your video to studio at sewingstreet.com with the subject, search for a sewing star. If you have any issues, email us and Director Elliot will be sure to help. Please keep your videos under three minutes in length and in landscape. For more information, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Good, Good luck. luck. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Welcome back to Sewing Street. So we have got the lovely Beth back with us who has designed a brand new kit. Well, when I say kit, it's a kit that... Hello. Oh, well, there was Beth. They were, you were there a minute ago, but I think she was on the floor. Hello, Beth. She was on the floor. <laughs> well, she wasn't actually on the floor. Not she quite. Was picking up stuff off the floor. So this brand new kit makes three things. And we have various options for you. So it makes this brilliant... Pardon? <laughs> Elliot shouted at me. He's very bossy today, you know. He's be really bossy. He's not bossy. We don't do bossy. Um, it makes this beautiful, well, sort of organizer, project yeah. holder. Yeah, block tidy. Block tidy. I've got lots of them now. And once you've got the instructions, you make them in multiple sizes. So on the inside, it features a quilt block. You've got PU here so that you can see everything inside it. It's got a zip across the top, and then you turn it over, and it's got this lovely little panel on the back. So it is brilliant for workshops, for if you're making quilt blocks and you can hold it in there, or if, you, um, if you're going off thing, you want to keep a project very clean and flat, it's perfect for that. That's one of the projects. In the bundle, you can also make this lovely quilt hanger. Let me hold it up like that. There's enough to make all three. These three are all in the kit. So I'm just holding up so you can see what it looks like. And it has pockets. See, all of these are pockets. And then that simply clips around the hanger so that you can take it off if you want to. So if you wanted to hang, keep this hung up, but then you wanted to take it down to take things out, you can, but these are all pockets. Isn't that lovely? And it's lovely fabrics. I'm sure you need to see the fabrics because they are in the kit, but that's gorgeous, isn't it? And finally in the kit, you get this little um, needle sewing case, needle case. You only get one. So you get in here, you get this, because it uses this panel on the front and the back, get your daily dose of iron. Oh, we could give that one to Elliot, couldn't we? We could, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, he cleans the, uh, well, when he cleans the iron. It's all about finding the fabric. And then inside you've got the felt and the fabric store all your needles in loads gorgeous and as a little pocket in so you could keep your scissors in there too so we have a choice of four different bundles right so concentrate concentrate bundle number one in here is everything oh look at that i saved the sticker 
everything to make exactly what you've just seen. So you get the instructions for the sewing room organising set. Everything you need, look at the really clear photos, lots and lots of information, all the information you need about sewing with PU, all in there. Um, you get the zip, that's used for the top of the bag. You even get the hanger, very important. These are, the, you get the fabrics used for um, all of the items. You get the felt that's for the needle case and the fabric that goes into the pages. And you get the panel that features on all of it. So everything you need, bar a bit of wadding and some PU. We didn't put the PU in there, but don't worry because we have that for sale separately. This is the... Um, this is the panel that is in the kit, and there's enough on this panel to make all of them. It's a lovely panel, isn't it? It's really great, like that. Isn't it? My happy place, it's called. Yeah. Mm. Of course it is. Of course. Of course it is. That's what my my son's my best happy place. My happy place. Yes. Do what makes you happy. All right, then let me sew. Hmm. So, that's all in that kit. It's an extra long zip um, as now, well. Now, if you want, oh, let me have the wadding. Thank you, Hannah. So you. I'll talk about wadding in a minute because you need wadding and PU. So that's that kit. Now, if you want just the fab, just the panel. No, it's the hardware and panel. Panel and hardware. So if you want to use your own fabrics, in this one, you get the full instructions, you get the panel, and you get the zip the felt that is used for the needle case and the pages and the hanger. But with this one, you don't get the fabrics because you can use your own. So the, the, the reason behind all of this is Beth, obviously she's a sewer, just like we all are. She understands completely that we do have fabric. Some of us like a complete kit. Some of us are thinking, I really must start using up some of this fabric. Or some of things, some of us thinking, oh, I want to use up the stash, but actually I've got some fabric that I really like that will match with something and I'd like to use it for that. So if you want just the hardware and the panel, because the panel really is part of it, then that's in this kit. Right, kit number three. The next kit is no panel. So if you want just the hardware, so maybe you're thinking, um, I've got little squares because it doesn't matter. In the instructions, all the measurements are in there. So it doesn't matter if you haven't got the panel. So in this one, you get the zip, the coat hanger, the felt and the fabric from the needle case. You can use all of your own fabric then. So the little, so the little pockets that are on the hanger, you could use your, um, you could use... You could use your own fabrics. Maybe you've got some lovely two that you like. A bit of case that's gorgeous. Or maybe you've done an FPP. We're going to keep coming back to that. Maybe you've done an FPP block. You could put that in there if you've bought the 100 book and you think, what, what do I remember? In that 100 FPP book, there are some um, blocks that are sewing themed. There was the iron one and the thread spool one that I made. Mm -hmm. Or garden themed. You could get your seed packets in there then, couldn't you? So if you've got your own fabric but you want the instructions and the zip and the hanger and the, f and the fabric and the felt for the needle case. This is the one for you. Finally, 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 is if you want just the instructions, that's here as well. So we've covered everything. So maybe you like the idea, you know, or you, you could use a bit of dowel in the top of there instead of coat hanger. Maybe you think, well, I only want to make that part. I only want to make the, the workshop bit. And later I might do that. So if you only want the instructions, then that's that set. So you can choose instructions, instructions and hardware, instructions, hardware and panel or everything. Now there are two other things that you will need is wadding. You'll need a bit of wadding, 8640, which is our iron on wadding. It's fusible on one side. Will one piece be enough? Half a metre would be plenty yes. for the lot, yeah. That's half a metre. Yeah. Plenty. So that will that's used to sort of wad the back of the um, work holder. So if you want, yeah, they don't, these come pre-cut as half metre pieces, just we've had a few questions. So if you buy more than half a metre, it won't come as one whole piece. They are all pre-cut. But you only need half a metre for this. So this is um, H640, which basically means it's an iron wadding. It makes it a bit easier. Um, you also need PU. Now we have two PUs. We have a plain PU, which is the one that Beth used. Half a metre is more than enough. 
and Beth is going to be um, talking to us about three out of that PU. Bit. You can make three out of that. So we'll out, we'll ask her in a minute some, for some top PU tips about this. So you get half a metre. That's only half of it, by the way. But you will only need half a metre. You've got more than enough. Now, and then we also did this one, which I'm really surprised. Said, Beth, I can't believe you didn't use this one. But she said it's because she didn't have it. So this is PU with glitter. And it's not just any glitter. It's rainbow glitter. Oh, is it? Oh, I so need You can't that. really. Well, you can. S it's, well, it's called silver, but I think where it catches the light. Can you see it? I can from here. It's beautiful, isn't it? How nice would that have looked? It would. I'm down quite I know. upset now. I can't believe Maybe you. I'll just pass me that bit and I'll use it. Yeah. Well, we'll have a little swap. You know that grid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah. Oh, but you don't mind, do you, Hannah? <laughs> you can use it if you like. Mm, sure. Should we let her use it? Because it's gorgeous, isn't it? Um, so if you want the PU, I love this. If Hannah lets me use it, I'll use it. Yeah. Oh, well, excellent. we need to see how it works. Well, yes, I mean, it might not be the same. Well, obviously it might so not be. So we need be. to check. Oh, it's beautiful. I know, you can't really see the glitter as well oh, there. Can. It's lovely. It so is my first so gorgeous. question, Beth, is when you get it and it's like that, where do you, how do you use it? Because you can't really press it. It's got clear. Well, you sort of can. OK. On one with something over the top. Right. And just... So show us with that one. That we've just given you what i'm how to do it yeah because it's something i would think i mean i have used you would it, think that you can't but it's sort of scary isn't it it well it sort of is and it sort of isn't i mean elliot would absolutely kill you if you used the iron on that wouldn't he you'd be that be it it be i'm about not do it on that side put it on your ironing mat nice your wadding as well i mean i've got a joint i've joined my piece of wadding because i don't like to be too wasteful <laughs> But it was it was literally just a bit of hat. So so literally, you want to turn so just your, a bit of cotton fabric. Yeah, put something over and literally mm. just. I presume it's not steam, just a hot iron. Uh, I don't know. Is that on? Yeah, I, pl I plugged it in. Oh. But you don't want to linger. Okay, so press but don't linger. Yeah, and and it will be warm and it will. It will sort of feel, feel floppy. <laughs> Try not to drop the iron. <laughs> well, the iron was going in there one was, direction. And the <laughs> PU was going in another. <laughs> hey, I caught them. It's called juggling. Okay. Um, and you can see it sort of ironed it out. But I mean, you, you can sort of steam it from a distance oh, okay. if you've got a steamer. So as long as you don't literally put the iron hang it up. on it, yeah. it's fine. Because look, I mean, I don't know, can you see that that creases? Yeah, fab. And it will be sort of s softer once mm, you've done it. Yeah. But then it'll go back to being normal. Brilliant. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, you can iron it. Lovely. But just gently. Gently. Okay. Well, because they I don't let it slide creased, off the table. It? it does have all the fold it, lines in it. So yeah. I guess you need to remove them. Yeah, because that. So, where do we start then? Should we start? Because I'm really interested in making this because you've got PU and you've got zips. Right, I'm going to... So the graphic that's on screen in now, um, that's 29.99, that's everything. So that's fabric. It, the only thing it hasn't got is so it's got the fabric, the hardware, the instructions. The only thing it doesn't have is the PU and the wadding, but we do have that for sale separately. You only need half a metre of each, but everything else is on there. So let's start with this one. Love this. Where do we start, Beth? Right, well, I'm just going to chop this piece of PU down to get it roughly to size. I was in the other room just a second ago and I've been stabbing my thumb. So sorry about that. Why? I've on purpose? Or yeah, yeah, I thought it would be a cracking idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have anything better to do. Like so I thought, up. yeah, let's just, <laughs> let's just sit and stab my thumb. So I've got a bit of quilter's tape on it just... What were you sewing? Um... I was just doing a bit of hand embroidery because oh, okay. I've got some more kits that I'm putting together, oh. as I do all the time. All the time. Sneak peek, time. sneak peek. Do not stop right. yourself. Yeah. So, they were the, so the graphic on the right-hand side, glass, clear, glitter, PVC, silver. Right, I could probably do with my, my slightly bigger roll of this, but it's fine. We'll, we can fold it and... 
So there is this, this bigger mat on the floor. I'm just, yeah. So you just cut it with a rotary cutter? Yeah. It, I mean, you go through your rotary cutter blades anyway, don't you? Yeah, well, I do. So I go through pins. Hey? I go through over pins all the time. <gasps> I've just bought myself another pack of 10 blades. Oh, and I know, well, I don't know how Have you happens. got one of those sharpeners, though? Yeah, I did see that they sold them on it. I know, I know, I need to work out how to use it. Because uh, yeah, the problem it, is I'm a bit of an untidy sewer. I, so with I've those, I tend to go in one direction mm. rather than backwards and forwards. Oh, okay. And I find it does it better for me. Right. But, okay, I mean, there we go. I, I'm just orphan. Have, I've got orphan. Orphan? Orphan. Orphan. I'm orphan. That's where that came from. I've got quite a big cutting mat that covers my whole table, so it's always covered with other things, not just fabric, and there's often pins on it, and I'm not that a tidy sewer, so. Mm, I guess yeah, you see, my, my sewing room is just dire at the minute. I need to properly have her. Now, I, I don't mm. tend to trim my PU completely to size before I start because you it, you can trim it to, the, to fit the block better once you've got the block in size. Right, okay. Now... So you just cut your PU to size. Cut your PU, and it's um, 16 by 14. Mm. So I'll move that bit out of the way if, if you want. And then go, th go through, read your instructions. I always say read your instructions properly to start with, and then cut your pieces. Mm. Always start cutting your bigger pieces first. Right. Then you know where your bits are going to be. Yeah. Yes. But with the block that's got the 12 squares on it, you want to identify which squares you're going to use. Now, it's only the this block tidy that we're doing yes. that needs four joined together. Oh, OK. So you've got to choose which four you want joined together. Yeah. Then. They come, I think it's three by four or four by three. OK. So, yeah, four by three. Um, so you've you've got them in pairs mm. anyway. So just keep these, keep your four together. The rest of them will be naturally in pairs to work with everything else. Um, and if you can keep on as much of your grey as possible, then it just gives you a bit more of a frame. Okay, a little bit more leeway. Yeah. Okay. So so w do all your cutting out first. Then once you've got now, I've done half of the zip just because. It was easier. But cut your pieces and then with this first half of your zip, you're going to iron under a quarter of an inch on right. your narrow piece before you attach it to your sides. Okay. You've got an extra long zip in there and I put a heavier weight one in as well. Yes, it's nice, isn't it? Nice. Because that way um, you've got less chance of breaking it. Yeah, true. <laughs> and hopefully it should last you longer. Yeah. But because it's a nice long one, then <laughs> you could make your zip tied a bit bigger if you want to. Oh, yeah, true, or, true. But the better way is because your zip piece isn't going to be in the way yes. when you're doing it. Right, so you sew one piece to one side and now you're going to show us... Now, your glue pen, just... I know a lot of people are scared by zips. Yeah, well, that's. I think that's probably why... I've done it this way With because it makes it nice it and easy. And using glue. Yeah. And then and just literally you all you're going to do... Because you've crashed under the glitter PVC. <laughs> Let's move that bit out of the way for a second. You're just going to glue one side to your zip. Yeah. And then turn it over, make sure your zip's lined up, and just glue the other side. You can pin if you want. You don't have to particularly glue this one in. Place. Like a bit of glue. It, it, it makes for a slightly easier life. Doesn't well, it? it helps to keep all the three layers together. Yeah, it? and if you just sandwich those three layers together and you don't actually need your zipper foot for this because if you're right. making a bit of a feature out of the zip. Because the zip's quite wide. Yeah, but you can actually then keep... If you, mm. if you, keep, if you sew away from the edge of the zip, A, you're making a bit of a feature of it, and see, you're not going to get your fabric stuck in the zip. You've got no chance of it yes, if the fabrics are close. Yes, yeah. No, that's quite nice. Well, because the zip is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it I'm needs not, to be a bit of a feature. I'm not plugged in, really that's nice, why it's not it? going. Oh, well, so you've got quite a nice gap here between the top and the bottom because you, then you, your zip is a feature. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. So once now you've glued them together. You've glued them together. 
You've turned your machine on, which always helps. <laughs> and then you literally just, I just use the edge of my foot as the guide. And I'm just going down the three layers. And you're going to do this for both pieces. It's just that I've done one side already. And you don't have to back and start at the beginning because those bits are going to get trimmed away. So then, once you've done that, you're just going to turn that over and keeping away from the teeth as much as possible. Just press one side over slightly, turn it over and press the other side over slightly. There we go. Very neat. And then... That looks quite easy. Yeah. It, it is really nice and simple. I don't like making things difficult for people if I can help it. Well, it puts people off. It does put it? people off. I know some people, I can't do that because this is it, but that looks quite easy. But because I've given you a longer zip, yeah. it then means you you're not having to worry about the teeth. Yes. Sorry, and you the, don't the have zipper, to zip but, but Yeah, that's the bit. Yeah. The glue is a good idea. Make sure you use fabric glue. Don't use a clip stick. I tried that once. Terrible. Yeah, that gunks your machine up. Yeah. That's not a good idea. So that no. is half your, that is your zip put in. Done. Done. Job's a good one. Okay. <laughs> and then because you've... <laughs> is that just me being too young? Job's a good one. Job's a good one. Job's a good one. So, yeah. So, now your PU. Come to your beautiful... Oh, the beautiful glitter now PU. Now, you see, why didn't I have this is the question. It is gorgeous. Does it have a wrong and a right side? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it does, actually. I would worry. No. It's see-through. So, That'll impress the people in your workshop group, won't it? And you go, look at me with my glitter PU. Oh, yeah. mm. Where did you get that? You could make a raincoat from it, couldn't you? Can you imagine? Do you know, when I worked at the theatre, we, we were doing um, Singing in the Rain, mm. and we had to make clear PU raincoats. Wow. But all the dancers. Oh my lord. And the number of times they got ripped and had to come back up to wardrobe to be repaired. Oh god. Because they were dancing in them so they weren't doing like ordinary movements. No. They were properly putting them through the paces. <laughs> and but, oh wow. Well, yeah, there were, I think there were twenty five oh, of them on stage wow. at any one time. So, but they didn't have glitter PU, did they? They didn't have no, glitter PU. No. We had to get um Brollies specially covered in clear PU as well. Wow. Because they had to be able to see yeah. the dancers through the clear bar box. So yeah. It was a bit of a production that one was. That was amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> back 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 to the but yeah, away from the, ra the raincoats, but it sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Uh, they, they worked in principle as long as you weren't a chorus line dancer in them. So you, you can use it for anything. Mm. So then what I've done is I've just, on the side of the zip that I've just um, had the, the end. And what I've done, I did there when I ironed it over is I tried to keep it so that they're going to match because this is the bit you're going to see both right, sides Right, yeah, so because you, you don't want to see one from the front and from yeah. the back. So and then all I'm it. doing is I'm just tucking that PU up. So if you don't have glue, I guess you can't use pins, can you? Um... Technically, you sort of could um, because you're going to be doing it through the seam allowance oh, and that isn't going to be yeah. seen. Okay, yes. But I sense. still don't want to. Only. And then put a nice. On the other side as well. And oh yeah, so you it. could, yeah, you could pin through there. You could you? because you could, it, it, it yeah, is it it's it is gonna be in that bit that mm. you're not gonna see. So give it a nice good squish down. And then all you're gonna do is and it doesn't need a Teflon foot because the base of your foot is on the uh, oh, fabric yes, yes. anyway. Oh yes, yes, you're not actually 
you haven't got PU on the top or the bottom, it's on the inside. It's sandwiched in between those two layers, yeah. And that is your zip and your PU and the whole of your front. Done. Done. Wow, that was quite simple, Easy. wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. And then all you're going to do is once you've worked, because I always do the back and make sure I've got it exactly the right size, because if you can change the sizing of your quilt block case mm. by the width of your strips. So if you want it slightly bigger, your zip's big enough. Your PU is going to be big enough. Yes. And there's enough fabric to make it slightly bigger. Oh, okay. So if you do want to make it like, because this, this one here is bigger than this one. Do you and want to bring it down? It's sort of got stuck behind the PU label on the screen. Because <laughs> you've got two. There we go. That, that, that's my workshop one that's got mm. everything in it already. And this is one I've just used bits and pieces from the dragonfly bag I did, actually. Yeah, no, it's smaller, isn't it? So um, you can make it whatever size you want. I like that yeah. fabric, that's lovely. Yeah, that's mm. what we did the um, Sashko dragonfly bag in. Oh, okay. Not so long back. Nice. So, yeah. So that was something I had lying around. But, yeah, so you can... So you can make it a bit bigger. So if you make... So you start off, really, by making the back of it. You start... Well, yeah, it's... That you can start by making the back, you start by doing this bit. If you're following the instructions exactly, then you just make it to this size. It's only if you yeah. want to adapt it. Maybe if you've made one and you think, oh, I'd like to make another one, then you can start adapting it, can't you? Yeah, because you can, you, you can use any zip, any colour. Mm. I mean, this one here was just an invisible zip I had lying around. Oh, of course, yeah. So once you've got the instructions, so maybe you buy the whole kit, you make up this one, learn how to do it, and you'll have extra PU left over, then you can yeah. make up more of them. And to make your zip the right length, just very, I never do this at speed because mm. I don't like to sort of be horrible to my sewing machine. But literally, you're just gonna go to your machine and slowly go backwards and forwards. Oh, across the end of it, right. over the end of your zip a couple of times and then that will stop your zip and likewise at Coming the other off, end i did that the other day and i really swore very loudly did you cut it off before you put moved your thing yep. i can't remember what i was doing or why yeah and i swore quite loudly yeah no you always need to remember to move your zip <laughs> In all fairness, I think how many sewers haven't? Mm. I, I know, I was putting tabs on the end of a zip to put like in a pencil case. And I put the tab on one end. We all do something at some point. Mm. How annoying. It's, na it's, it's the nature of the beast, isn't I it? I know. Really so, so yeah, by just going over the end of your zip. Yes, then that like stops that. you swearing That's very loudly. Yeah, it does stop <laughs> you swearing very loudly. And it keeps your zip nice and secure. Yes. And you can do that at any length. Um, and as I say, because you've got a slightly longer zip, it's great. Fab. So, um, for the rest of this, the back is literally just um, strips cut to size, to width, and it's like sashing. Yes. Your the, yes, I, I can see. Yeah, so they go all the way around the edge of the block. Your, in, your inside, behind your clear PVC. I mean, I've done like a pinwheel one. Oh yeah, I like I've that. I've done it in a different colourway mm -hmm. this time. Just cause? Yeah, I don't want all my things exactly the same. And yeah. That's nice. Um, your half square triangles, again, there's different ways of doing them. There are so many different ways of doing half those square triangles. I prefer the method where you put your two squares together. You find either a friction pen or a 
again, one of my... If you want a friction pen, they're the heat erasable ones. They are on the website and they are brilliant. Oh. They're my top five tools of all time. Have you got white ones on now? No, we haven't got white. We mentioned it when we you were did, on last time, yes. didn't we? Have we got them? No. I love my white ones. Mm. Well, when you send that um, piece of grid to me, I'll have a white one. <laughs> I'm going to have to put in a little order, aren't I? Um, Here's my order the following items from your shop. I don't actually sell the white ones. Well, you should do. I'm going to have to. You should I? do. We need white ones. Yeah. So, I mean, again, if it's something that's going to be a raw edge line, which this is, then you, your ordinary pencil's fine. Okay. Um, and and two right sides together. Two right sides lines. together, line down the middle, and then you're going to sew a quarter of an inch away. You've only got two squares to do it on because it's only... Um, Yeah, because you're only making... You're only making four half square triangles. So is this all of the instructions about doing this, Fab? So you haven't got to remember anything, don't panic. No. It's, um, it's all in there. Yeah. And then again, you can either go down with your rotary cutter or... It's quite nice thing because you've got such a mixture of techniques here. We've got putting a zip, sewing with a bit of PU, then you do a bit of patchwork and then you do... It's It's, lovely. it's skill building, isn't it? It's... I know, but in a nice way. Yeah. It... I like that. I don't... I... As I say, I don't like making things hard for people. I like to try and encourage as many people as I can to sew. Yeah. Because I think it's becoming a forgotten skill. It brings joy. It does bring joy. And do you know what? It brings joy to others when you give them something that yeah. that's been made. My mates love it at Christmas because they always know they get something made. I know. I've got two friends like that. I made them a Christmas pudding doorstop one year. Idiot. And then this year they're like, oh, can't wait to see what you're going to make us this year. I'm thinking, oh, Really? Pressure. I did. I did my mate. Um, she'd had a bit of a rough year, so I did her a, a B lap quilt for a new lounge. Oh, oh she was so made up. Really? Yeah, she thought it was amazing. Oh. And just just that makes it all worthwhile. Well, it does, didn't it? Doesn't yes. it? Just see, just seeing the joy that you can bring to somebody else makes it all worthwhile. So when I when I do my half square triangles, how much are these to measure? Five and a half. Yeah, five and a half. Helps if I can remember the measurements, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I always cut my squares to six inches or half an inch bigger and then trim them down because I do like my um, squares to be accurate when I'm doing something like this. Yeah, no, I do as well. I like a bit, a lot of trimming. I'd prefer, yeah, I'd prefer to trim... Then have they a say like you cut them, I think, seven-eighths bigger, but I don't, I would go for an inch or more. Y yeah. <laughs> it allows for inaccuracies along the way. Well, it's like this one, I haven't actually got a quarter of an inch foot on it, so I, I had to sort of guesstimate it. Right. So, but it's not turned out too bad, it works. We'll get there. Oh, my thumb is proper sore now. Why did I stab it? That was really silly, wasn't it? My husband always knows when I've had a good day in the sewing room because he always comes back to find a, a plaster on one of my fingers at some <laughs> point along the line. Perhaps I've stabbed it off, done something. But again, I think it's part of the job, isn't it? Yeah, I've usually got bits of masking tape around my fingers. Got this is Filter's masking tape. Mm. Usually regularly. Yeah. They get in the way, plasters are too thick. And they're, they're after about 10 minutes. Micropore they good. Stop, it's good. They do stop bleeding. Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've got a different colourway for this web. So, I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't do that on the inside of yours. You get equal amounts, I right, think, Right, so you bits. can choose what colour. So you can use the yeah. teal and the pink or the pink and the grey, but whichever way you want yeah, to do you it. Yeah, you can sw or swap a mixture. and Yeah. Even. That's you can swap nice. and change it. That's not right, is it? Is that right? Yeah, oh, we've got a message, Beth. Oh. I've lost my sewing mojo recently. Learned to crochet instead, but I can't wait for this to arrive to get going again. Thanks, Beth. Oh, um, Beth. I hope you find your Andrea. mojo. Yes, although I don't mind you having a crochet mojo. No, crochet, a crochet mojo, a crojo or a sojo is good by yeah, me. Yeah, any, um, any, any Joe. It does happen. I find that. I think maybe if I've been sewing too much 
I don't think I've had too much. But you do you lose it a bit, too much? don't you? Well, I don't know. Sometimes, particularly with working sewing, when mm. I worked for Simply Sewing magazine, I used to have one week a month where I would just make a load of projects and I just sewed sort of solidly like 10 hours a day for a week. And I really lost it then. I had to have a few days off. Really? It didn't I take much then. No, I don't you know. You see, when I've finished in my sewing room, I've always got hand sewing. I know, but the problem and is, the is, arms I think of my chair. When you're just sewing to, um, to press time deadlines, yeah, as most well. of mine. Yes. I know. I lose. I lose it every now and then. But I'm glad. I, and I think. And I think. Oh, I'm really. It's usually if I'm doing something, it's a bit tedious. You know, where you've got to make like 140 balls the same thing, um, like a half square triangle. But I think once you see a new project that inspires you, yeah. it all comes back again. Yeah. But these kits are brilliant. Are brilliant. So I'm just going to go through them while you sew your triangles together. So remember, in this kit, you get everything you need, nearly everything, to make three projects. So you get this wonderful, well, it's like a quilt block holder, but it's you can use it to keep quilt blocks in. You can keep use your current project in. You could make a few of them once you've got the kit to keep things in so you can see them. You could keep some of your tools in, but it's really good to keep flat in. It'd be even really nice as a travel thing. You know, put your passport and your tickets and your visas and your money yeah, and everything in. Yeah, you can in. make a slightly different um, travel, travel size yeah. one, couldn't you? Or it'd be a lovely um, present for somebody if you wanted to put something special in it. But it's, you know, like certificates and things. But really, it's very good for putting maybe your current project on or quilt blocks if you're making them. But to keep everything flat. So you've got everything. All you, the, In this kit I'm going to show you now, you only need the PU and the wadding isn't in it, but everything else is. So you get this. You get the lovely quilted wall hanging. Quilted wall hanging. But it's got pockets, not just a wall hanging. It's a useful thing. So you get, it's got the pockets in it. And then this is puckered round here. But you could use buttons if you want. You, you could stitch it, but that just means you can take it on All and off. It's got little loop. pockets in. Or hook and loop, yeah. Bit of hook and loop tape. Yeah. And you get the um, needle case as well. So it's got the panel pictures on the front and the back, and it's got all the pages. So you will need to add to the kit PU and wadding. So let me show you, we have a choice of kits for you, depending on what you want to do and what you want to use with your fabric. So the first kit has got everything except for the wadding and the PU, which we have got separately. So in this kit, you have got all the fabric you need, which is the grey fabric, the pink print fabric, and you get the teal, but then you also get the panel, which has got 12 squares on it. All sewing theme, do what you love, my soul is fed with needle and thread, get your do daily dose of iron, make something new today, beautiful. We'll give that one to Elliot. Um, then you get the grey, the felt that goes into the needle case, you get the pages of the needle case. Then you can make exactly what we've got. You've got the hanger that's used for the hanging and you get this lovely big chunky zip that's used in the quilt block holder. So that is all in that one. So that's the biggest kit, $29.99 and you can make it all. It's lovely, isn't it? When it's like, you know, our last message, so inspiring. It's something completely different, really nice. And you've got a lot of skill building there. Um, remember that you will need half a metre of the PU and half a metre of wadding. We have got the PU in clear or silver glitter, whichever you want. If you go into sewingstreet.com on Watch Live and scroll down, you will see all of those products there if you want to add them on. Right, the next bundle is if you want... The, um, the, if you've got your own fabric, but you want to buy the panel, because obviously this panel features and it's beautiful, and you want to use the panel, you've got the pages of the needle case and the felt, the zip and the hanger. So if you want to use your other fabric, so the pink and the um, teal and the grey that Beth has put in her kit, if you want to provide that yourself, then all of the other items there, that's £16.99. Just to give you some options, um, depending on what stash you've got and what you're going to use this for. So that's sixteen ninety nine. The third nearly, one. Hmm? I very nearly put the rose hubble chartreuse in. Oh, did you? Because it was like I just could not decide. It's so a, that it, is well, a it's very hard. Like yeah. Beth said, she always put her different colours in because so many lovely colours in that panel. Hard to choose, really. But that the rose hubble chartreuse goes beautifully. But look at the the price point of this. So 
Because, you know, normally we would charge over £10 for a panel. So for £16.99, you get the panel, the hanger, the zip, the felt, and the needle pages. Amazing. That's that kit there for £16.99. That's amazing value. And the full instructions. Now, for this kit, there are more people who have that in baskets than we've got available. Because obviously, you know, everyone has different things about whether they want to use their own fabric or not. So if you've got that in your basket, you probably need to be checking out. Oh, we will run out. Um, the next kit, next one down, is if you doesn't have the panel or the fabric, so it has the full instructions, the hanger, the zip, the felt and the pages for the needle. So the needle case, not the needle, the pages of the needle case. So that's 12 99 so you've got full instructions and you've got the hanger, the zip and the pages and the felt. So if you, because all the measurements are in the instructions, you don't need to have the panel. If you've got some fabric that you love that you want to showcase, maybe you've got a pretty bit of liberty or you've got some, um, little charm packs and you want to use that you don't have to use the panel so if you want to use all of your own fabric we just want to have a dash with that one and then finally if you just want the instructions and nothing else at all there they are 9.99 so there's four different choices because we we do know that at this time of year particularly if you bought fabric in clearance because you didn't you might want to use it or you might have fabrics that you want to make specifically for someone to use for something um, special or to coordinate with something or whatever. So th those are the four options. But just go on to sewingstreet.com, click on watch live, scroll down, buy, and then you will be able to see it. Or you see on, the, on there, see that QR code? If you put your phone and scan that, it will take you to the Sewing Street website. Then you can um, have a look and you can see all those four options and you can decide what you want. So, Beth, where are we? Right, well, I've just been zooming ahead. I know, she's finished now. Finished. Um, and I've just been... I've put the half square triangles together. Yes. And I was just putting the strips of sashing around the edge. Now, you can see that I did the squares on different sewing machines because they don't quite match up in the corners. But I can live with that. I can. I promise myself, I can. Yeah. <laughs> There are no sewing police. No, there are, are there? But again, that goes back to that other one because everything does match up on that quarters grid on the other oh, thing. I know. I it know. is. It is. So, uh, for, for people starting out, I think it's a game changer because mm, it it'll give you the confidence to move on, yeah. thinking you can do it. So. Well, anything that makes it a little bit easier. You know, yeah. that's why they invented rotary cutters. I know. That's not cheating. I know, it? but I do still go back to my scissors. But I think that's do my dressmaking bit. Do there. you? Well, yeah. anything, only a straight line is always a rotary cutter. I'd never cut yeah. a, a curve with a rotary cutter. Do you know? I've mean, tried so it. I have done, I have done the odd curve with a rotary yeah. cutter. Rubbish. Cut all the fabric in the wrong place and all over the place, just like out of control. <laughs> so, no. So, once you've done your back, your inside, yes. and you've done exactly the same to the other, you're going to layer those three up. And I'm going to pretend I've got the two back back okay. bits. So you and then you're going to you take your um, front, and this is where you're going to trim it to the size of your. So do you make the back up first with the layered with the wadding and everything? I I I well, all three layers yes, would be yeah, yeah. put, and then before you, I right, trim this okay. down to size. See but now the silver PU stands out, doesn't it? The, the, the rainbow yeah. really stands out because mm -hmm. the pink and the green are being hit yeah. by the background. So, <laughs> so yeah. So then you're gonna you're gonna do that. Gonna put all your layers together, and then you are literally going to bind it as you would a quilt. So shall I do a little teeny weeny bit on the corner? Yeah, do, pretend yes. it's pretend do. it's got layers. Right. Because let's just chuck that behind it. I'm just going to do this teeny weeny bit here because so you're going to have all your, all your layers together and then I always put my binding on from the front why do you always put your um, binding on from the because front? because I like to do my hand stitch into the back oh okay on my quilting 
Uh, well, I do actually. Yes. I'm yeah. on my. It's neater, isn't it? It is. It, it just gives it a, ne a much mm. neater edge. So then your your block is literally just going to have that turned over and sti slip stitched in place, and your block. Yeah. Is done. That's no. That is much neater, isn't it? Yeah. Because some people do it where they go the other way around, don't they? You can. You can do it from the back but and actually, then go. Yeah. How would you hand sew it on? Because you'd be trying to hand sew onto the PU, wouldn't you? So you wouldn't be able to do it anyway. You'd have to catch it through the stitches. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you, you unless you did it from the back. No, I think. And that's... then top stitched it over to no, the front. No, it looks. This is good. But then you this can all. Good. I think you've always got the chance of seeing that row of stitching mm. if you don't get it. I think that's perfect, neat. Well, perfect. also I've seen your finished one here. It's really super neat. Looks lovely. Yeah. Some I know. I always hand stitch my binding down because every time I try and top stitch, I miss, and it looks rubbish. So yeah. I always hand stitch mine down as well because it always seems to miss somehow. I don't know why, but that yeah. looks really nice, nice and neat. And then, Jimmy, shall I do a bit, a little bit on the other two? Yes. Yes. So. Well, this was the one I wanted you to focus on because I think that's fascinating. You know, because you've got the PU and you've got the zip. It's mm. really nice to see how you do that. Your wall hanging. So the wall hanging. With now pockets. he's he is super super easy. You're you're going to bag out two ends on two of your pockets to okay. start with. So I've done the top of one already. And all I've done is I've stitched, I've put right sides together. Yeah, that is the top. Make sure, make sure you've got the top. On the bottom one, all you're gonna do is the top because you're gonna catch the other bit in with your bagging out of the actual right. whole thing. Okay, yeah. That's just a neat little top. Move that bit out of the way a second. And then you, if you press, which way was it? Press to the back. To the dark side. Yeah. Press, just press it all to the dark side. I love that because that's that's Martin Star Wars reference. Bless him. <laughs> he thinks it. Side. Yeah. Um, this is really simple, isn't it? This because, is super it's simple. Lovely. It's so but you nice. could as well. You don't have to on the on one of your pockets. So up the middle so you could have a longer one. Oh yeah that's true I know it's lovely because I think you know for a bit of vertical storage just think of everything you can get in there. I think I'll eat some vertical Oh you can get so room. much in. Because I've, I've run out of space I think I need some of this. But I like the idea see I think what you could do is you could then because you've only poppered it on you could take it off afterwards and you could fold it and then you could take it somewhere couldn't you if you yeah you know. Yeah, it could be another little stuck, movable thing. Mm. Or, I mean, if you didn't have the poppers, there's no reason why you couldn't do a row of stitching along there and actually stitch it. Yeah, there's enough true. fold over yeah. space yeah. for you to do that. Now, by, by doing that and top stitching along that mm. bit on the dark, when you fold this over, it is naturally going to want to fold ever so slightly so that the grey is going over the top oh, okay. and That's the backing isn't showing. So if you always press your seam towards the back, yeah. then it will naturally... It will, and, and, and do that top stitching okay. line along the back. I mean, you can do it so that it's through both if you want, but if you don't want a top stitching line on the front, mm. then press it to the back and it will just naturally fold okay. over that's a good so that it's... I didn't realise that. Well, I think that's, I, how, that's how they do it on clothing and yeah, things. Yeah, no, I think I always like, I don't know, what do I do? Press them open maybe, but that's a really good idea. Like well, it, it just mm. it, it just gives you a crisper edge. Yes, yeah. And it it's one where, because you can do the same method um, and press it to the back and then just top stitch through both layers. And again, it will just still naturally... Mm. fold over towards slightly towards the back but as I say that that's how they do like your necklines and things they, oh, they don't okay. want top stitching on the front mm. they'll stay stitch it to the back yeah and it just keeps the lining behind 
Yeah, nice. So okay, you might as well use it on mm. your quilting as well as... Why not? Yeah. Right, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Right, Keep so then over. what you're going to do is, after you've done that side, if you then literally whiz down the other side... And then you're only doing the side, so it's, it's nice and easy just to quickly turn through. It's not, obviously, it's nice and quickly to turn through. And press again, give that a quick press. And then out of your fabrics, mm -hmm. you, um, identify which one you want as the front yes. um, and which one you want for the back. And then you're going to lay your pockets on. And your bottom pocket, as I say, you've only done the top seam. So you're going to lay your pockets on, matching your raw edges round. Mm -hmm. And then you, you need to leave about half an inch. I've not pressed that very well. But that's all in the instructions. Yeah, so you need to leave about Lovely. half an inch just so you've got clearance for your pockets. Mm. It would have been better had I pressed that better, but hey ho. And there, and then you're gonna layer these bits on top. So you've got a nice sandwich again. And you're gonna start at the top, you're gonna sew all the way around. You're gonna leave your, your bit at the top. Mm. When you come to trimming away, snip your corners, but trim right back to the stitch line right. on your wadding. And then when you do your um, top stitching around the edge, your wadding will just give it that, it will almost give it like a little bit of a piped look because it's oh, that bit okay. slightly bulky. Yes, yeah, so, so, so you've only got just, yeah, so it's like a, and like it, if it was piped, it would have a slight bulk. So yeah. it's just, okay, that's a nice idea. Right um, and mm -hmm. then that's that one done and you pop it on. Well, that's been marvellous. Thank you so much, That Beth. one's just bagged out, oh, marked down the case. middle. Yeah. Done. Job's good and that again. Easy. Right, this is lovely. I think because you're, it is, like you say, some skill building. So you're learning PU, zips, you're learning half square triangles, quilt block. You're also learning how to make something you can then use to make other things as well, which is really nice, mm. isn't it? So um, thanks so much, Beth. I'm just going to run through the that's kit right. one more time. So if you want to make the kit to make with everything in it except for the PU and the um, H640. This has got everything in it. $29.99. It has full instructions, very, very clear. It has all the fabric. So you've got the, um, the grey print, you've got the pink print and you've got the lovely plain teal. Um, you've got the panel, very important. It's lovely. Panel with all the sewing quotes on. Ooh. Yours will come the right way up. <laughs> okay. Uh, with the pad that's used for the back of the holder, the wallet, and also for the um, hanger. So you've got the panel. You have got the fabric for the needle case and the pages. So you've got the felt for the inside of it and the pages. You've got the long zip, nice big chunky one, and the hanger. So that's that kit. If you want to use your own fabric but you want but you do want the panel this is the most popular option interestingly i think it's just amazing value because you're paying because the instructions are 9.99 so you get the instructions you are then getting the panel full panel oh it's sold out now sold out so i'm not going to open the rest of it that's sold out now <laughs> there we go so, you will need PU because that doesn't come in any of the kits. Now, you can choose between a plain clear, which is um, Beth has used in hers. Now, a half a metre is all you need. So, the glass clear supple PVC half a metre, only two ninety nine for half a metre. It's really wide as well. So, you've got loads in there. It's an amazing price, actually. You, you could get a three out of So, one. you could make three wallets out of here or you could use it for other things. That's just half of it. Shall I open it out and see? 130 centimetres. Look. I look like I'm in the shower. See? 
could, you could get a Mac and go singing in the yeah, rain. Yeah, you could go singing in the rain with that. Um, <laughs> so you get half a metre there. Brilliant. So once you've made this, you can use it for lots of other things. Really good for document holders, all those clear bags you have to take on aeroplanes and stuff, or pencil <sighs> cases for exams. All those bags you've got to put your cosmetics in when you're yes. at the airport. Yeah, all when, of that. When we get back to travelling. Yeah, what's an airport? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Somewhere it around. smells like... You know when you go to a camping shop and you want to buy a new tent and then you go and stand in the tents? When you remember as a kid, you run around them and you go in the tent. It smells like being inside a brand new tent. Oh, oh we're getting in the morning for our Lovely. This year. Right, we've also got the... PVC with a little sparkle in it. Beth's holding that one. Um, have we got that one? Yes. So glass clear glitter, PVC silver. Look at the bit of sparkle. It is silver, but it goes almost sort of like rainbow. So if you like to be a bit of holographic, sparkle, isn't it? Yes. Beautiful. Same price. You just decide on sparkle or no sparkle. Definitely. Nice message from Liz. What a beautifully calm and understated way of demonstrating. So easy to understand. Beth is one of my favourite demonstrators. Oh, from thank Liz you. In You've made my day. Isn't that lovely? She's a thank great you demonstrator. Thank you so much. Very lovely. We love Beth because she's thank really, you. yeah, you are really easy to understand. And you oh, make good. it look easy. I don't want it to be difficult for people. No. Because I don't want to put anybody off sewing. Mm. And if, I mean, all my patterns as well, they've all got my email address. If anybody <laughs> does have any problems... Just email Beth. She no, honestly, you. and I will get back to you straight away. As okay. soon as I see it, if you've got any problems at all, let me know. Fab. Well, so. you've been brilliant. Um, yeah. Oh, last thing, wadding. We need wadding. You'll need half a metre of H640, which is your iron-on wadding. Right. Um, but we've also got a few kits left from a previous show that Beth did. So... The wall hanging, uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Shall I turn it round? There we go. So we've got the blue and white um, wall hanging, blue and ivory, sorry. Now these are from previous shows. What date was this one on, Hannah? <laughs> on... on that's a question. 12th of September. So if you want to buy this kit and you want to see the demo, 12th of September. So you can make this beautiful wall hanging and cushion as well. And everything is in here. Is it everything, everything in there? Wadding as well in that one, I think. This yeah. one has even got the wadding in it. You get the Shashko thread, you get the needle, you get all the fabrics, you get the instruction, the templates, and even the wadding. And that makes the wall hanging and the cushion. No. It's got the pattern for the oh, cushion. Oh, it's got the cushion, the pattern for the wall hanging and the cushion. But and and I think that it goes up to the quilt as well. Glad you're here. But it hasn't got the fabric to do. You probably would get a cushion front. Yes. But you wouldn't get all of the. It's and like a little added extra. And it's um, a oh, little bit of uh, foundation paper piecing for the arms as well. Nice. So you've got Shashko and a little bit of FPP as well. And what a beautiful kit. Look at all the fabrics. And I love the fact that you get the proper Shashko thread. Very important. So you probably have enough for the front, the cushion front and the wall hanging. Um, we've got the same kit in red. Red and ivory. Let me show you the fabrics on the back of this one. There we go. So you get the Shashko thread. You get these beautiful... Red and white fabrics and the needle, sorry, head. <laughs> but the pattern in there is, it goes up to the quilt size as well. And the pattern in that is for, oh, gives you the instructions to take it up to full quilt size as well. So it's really multi-purpose. You've got everything you need to make the wall hanging, but in it you've got more instructions about making a cushion, making a full quilt size, but this is everything you need to get you started and make a wall hanging. So as with all of Beth's kits, they're very multi-purpose. Um, then the final one. Oh, this is the kimono cushion cover. Have we got this one? Yeah, there. Oh. And Look that gets a little extra bit for the I collar. I like this because I like the fact it has that little extra bit for the collar. Mm. So how much fabric do you get in that then? Loads. Plenty. Have I got the blue and ivory? Yes, I do. So here is the kit for that one, the blue and ivory. So you get everything and look, you can make loads of collars. I like that. I think that's really nice. And this has got a little bit of FPP on it, but it's very effective, isn't it? Only nineteen ninety nine. The collar is just folded as well, so it gives it extra dimension. It's lovely. Look, look. Let me show you. Um, 
Oh, Elliot's got a picture of the cushion. Elliot, can we just have a look at the collar a minute? Look, the collar flaps. <coughs> See, a little bit of 3D dimension. I like that. I think that's really cool. I just think that little pop of colour is lovely, yeah. isn't it? So you've got everything you need to make the cushion in there. In fact, you've got the wadding as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so nineteen ninety nine. So if you think I'd like to have a go at that, I want to do a little bit, a little bit of FPP. I love the cushion. You want everything because you really don't want to go out and get all the other stuff. Then it's all in there. Nineteen ninety nine. Then we've also got the kimono cushion cover in red. So if you like the idea of doing it in red, it's exactly the same cushion cover, but in the red fabrics. And then you've got that lovely metallic waves for the collar in that one. And, and I think that's all of them. I think we've done all of them. Yeah. Yes, because that's the wall hanging as well. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Beth. It's been brilliant. That's all I've right. Learned, I've learned loads. I'm going to have a go with that for you. And definitely the three, the three, the one inch grid. Fantastic. So yeah. let's hope we'll have to some, try and get, get that on at down. some point, won't we? Yeah. When are yeah. you next in? I think think the end of February. I'm just oh, waiting okay. for Ian to get back to me with a confirmed date. Oh, okay. So that'll be nice. But well, you're working on stuff anyway. Oh, yes. I've got loads. Because I haven't been on since October. So mm -hmm. I've had a couple of months. Oh, that's I've good. just been playing. Yeah, oh, how nice. Well, thank you so much. It's been no, fab. thank you. Enjoy your metallic um, PU. Oh, can I keep that? Yeah. Well, you've cut into it now, Beth, so we can't oh, do anything excellent. with it. excellent. Thank you so much, shame. guys. It's such a shame. It'll just slyly just pop slyly. in Slyly. I'll swap it for some quarter screen. Yeah, I know. A little swapsy. <laughs> so thank you for joining me so far. I have, in the next, well, 45 minutes, we have got lots of lovely fleece and canvas and sewing tips about them and sewing machines, including one that I really, really want. So um, I've got lots of tips. I'm going to show you all about that. I will see you back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello everyone, my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance, and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles, so embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making, oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new, and I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it, and you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! 
in need of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. And welcome back to Sewing Street. So it's all about fleece, canvas and machines. Um, I've got two, just two. We have so many machines on Sewing Street, but um, I was allowed to choose two. So I've gone for two ends. One, which is my ultimate sewing machine that I would really like to have. So I've had my current sewing machine for, I think about seven years. And it's fine, it's absolutely fine. But if I ha was able to buy the next one, it would be... Um, the 720 which we'll talk about in a minute so we'll talk about that in a minute so but first but first the five oh <laughs> i moved it completely out of the way the 570a now this is the one that i often use on air the um the 720 <coughs> is a really big heavy beautiful machine this one is much more portable and um i use this one mostly when i'm on air because what I like about it, so this is the 570M. What I like about it is that it is the same in workings as the 550 and the 560, but with all the bells and whistles. And they're bells and whistles that I actually use. Not sort of, you know how some machines, you have things on, you think, well, I'd never use that. This actually has things on that you would actually use. It's really good. Now, you have to think about, you know, are you a beginner? Are you considering? So there are three reasons why you buy a new sewing machine. Number one, you're a beginner, never used a sewing machine, but would like to start some machine sewing, so you need to buy one. Number two, you've had inherited a machine, you've borrowed one, yours was broken, so you need a new one. Or number three, the one that you've got is not adequate for your needs. It's too basic, it's too simple. Now, obviously, I, we know, don't we, that you can buy machines for under £100. You can buy machines for under £200. Um, but I'm just warning you that if you, you tend to, I would say, with machines, is you get what you pay for. And if you buy a lower value machine, if you're a complete beginner, it won't be long if you like sewing before you need something else. Also, it won't last as well or do what these will. This fits all of that. So 
This is a computerized sewing machine, which means that it thinks for you, it works it all out for you. When you set it to do a stitch, it knows what the tension needs to be. It's really, really easy to use. It has loads of features. So look, let me put down here so you can see it, you can read it. I'll, I'll read it out. This, these are the features. These are the things that are really important. So you've got a sewing space of 170 mil, which is a really, really good um, amount of space. At the moment, this is 639 pounds. Now we have only got a few of these left. When, four actually. When it goes, back up in when we get more in it will go back up at price so we have only we've only got four of these today remember it's available on split pay I'll go through the features in a minute it's 159 pounds 75 I mean we know we don't know for definite it will go back up but looking at the marketplace and how things are working at the moment we're pretty certain that when we get these back in stock they will go back in price most sewing machines are going back in price. If you are thinking, right, I'd love to buy that. I haven't got £639 at the moment, so I would like to spread the payments. We can offer it you over four equal payments of £159.75. It's interest-free. It won't cost you any more. We will um, send it to you straight away. You pay the first payment, and then the other ones will get sent across the other three months. It's dispatched to you direct from Elna, and you pay one p and for it. 3.95 that's it that's 3.95 so i just want to show you what the price would be if you had to buy it elsewhere because i think it's really important when you are spending this sort of money on a sewing machine you need to know that you can't get it cheaper elsewhere that it is competitive so i mean this this is pretty much 6.99 is pretty much the standard price for this machine now you might be able to find it in other places cheaper people have got it second hand or x um, or X demo stock, which we don't compare because that wouldn't be fair. But the pretty standard price across the market is six nine nine for this machine. But we've been working for Elna for quite a while. We have a good relationship with them, so we're allowed to negotiate decent prices. So six hundred thirty nine pounds. Now we've only got four left. We may not be able to, and it's doubtful that when we get them back in stock, because we will, because they are so popular. They are a lovely machine. A lot of our guests love them. Um, they are £639. So the features in them, look, look at all these feet. Standard foot, satin stitch foot, over edge foot, zipper foot, blind hook foot, quarter of an inch seam foot. I'm amazed that comes as a standard. That I mean, that's like every patchworker's dream foot. And normally, I, with other machines, I've seen you have to buy that extra. You get an automatic buttonhole foot. You get all the bobbins, the seam ripper, spool holder, um, additional spool pin, which is great if you want to wind the bobbin and sew as well, or if you're doing um, twin needle sewing. You get the lint brush, needle set, screwdriver, foot controller, instructional video, hard cover, and extension table. Can we show a photo of that? Look, so you get your normal space. You can also remove the, um, you can remove the accessories bit, so you can do your... Um, small arm sewing if you're doing like collars or cuffs or into bottoms of bags but we've also got the accessory table which comes with it um, i have to show you a photo because i haven't got that at the moment that makes it much bigger so if you if you're um quilting you're doing big quilts you need extra space it's perfect for that but it has got everything you need it's got a speed i love the fact that it has a speed one it's got a thread cutter now if your sewing machine doesn't have a thread cutter that is life-changing it makes such a difference it's got stop start so if you don't want to use a foot and sometimes people don't there are some people that don't want to use the foot depending on their mobility or if you're teaching them you can with the um the, you could use the stop start button oh yeah I, you know i can see it in the i can see <laughs> I know, I honestly, I, I cannot do mirror image. There it is. I just can't do it. So there's the stop start button. It's got a reverse button. Um, it has all these different things. It's really, because it's computerised, it's very easy to change the stitch, length and width. They aren't sort of standard. It's not like a dial on a machine. You don't need to think of the tension. You just set it. You can override all of those things. So there is a set zigzag stitch. But if you want it longer or wider, you can override that. Um, it has all of these stitches. 
And I like the fact that they're all here, so they're easy to see. Obviously, when you're using it, the machine's facing you. You can choose all these. Now, it has all the utility stitches. So the things like special stitches for overlocking, overcasting, working with stretch fabric, all of those kind of things. Uh, question. Can you tell me how many different stitches this machine has? Thanks. And it has 380, including an alphabet which is what the others don't have, including an alphabet. Oh, it's got two alphabets. So it's got the normal alphabet, and it's also got the um, the kind of, the, like the handwriting sort of, and oh, like the, oh, the Cyrillic alphabet, very important. So depending on what you want to write, and you, you know, whether you want things with accents on, so it's got the, um, it's got all of those. So it has all those utility, um, feet all these utility stitches that you need you know when you want to do a bit of um seaming and overlocking at the same time or you're working with stretch fabrics or the zigzag or the buttonhole so it's got all of those but it's also got lots of decorative stitches as well and they're the sort of thing you think well i don't need those until you do and you think well i'm just doing a bit of hemming i'm going to put a decorative stitch on there if you um if you go on to sewingstreet.com um, and have a look on the page there with this. It, all of those features that I've just talked to you about, they are all listed there. If you want to know more about it, it's all there for you. It has all the feet. Look at all those feet. It's even got a buttonhole. But you've got the, the buttonhole foot. And you have all of these. Uh, I like the fact, it makes it so simple that all of the, the stitches are on little cards there for you so really easy to see you haven't got to get your manual out and see where it all is and it's very simple to, to to work you just press the mode button and then you choose which which stitch you want there's another one let me show you the third one look at all of the, look at all those satin stitches let's go on to the decorative ones I love the um i love the leafy one there we go so i've got um the photo here, I'm going to just show you in a minute. Um, this is what this what it looks like with the screen on. So when you select a stitch, so that was selected zero zero, which is the basic one, it says A on the top. That means you need a foot. So you can tell which foot to put on. So say you've chosen uh, maybe one of the overcasting feet or the hem foot, the hem stitches, it will tell you what things. So it thinks for you, which is fantastic. So if you're at the stage where you think, I need a new machine, I don't want anything, you know, it depends what your budget is. I don't want anything really, really expensive, super easy. I want a really good solid machine that's got some really good features on it. I want to do things like I want the cut, the thread cut. I want a choice of stitches. I want to move up to the next level. Then this is, br this is a brilliant machine because we do have the 550 and the 560, which are great, but the 570A just has that extra. It has more. It has memory. So you can choose you see the memory at the bottom the row of ones here really i honestly can't i need to practice in the mirror i'm rubbish at backwards the extra row of buttons so you can set the memory for the things that you do but if you're at that stage where you do need another machine but i would have to say do think about it you know if if you are a beginner and you are tempted to buy one you know a machine if you see a machine that's under 100 pounds how how long is it really going to last? You know, if you're like me and you end up using it hour after hour after hour, this is a great machine. It's not worth our while on Sewing Street selling poor quality machines. It really isn't. Um, because then we have to keep sending them back. It's just not worth it. Um, also, these machines that we have in the studio, the ones that our guests use all the time, they come on air when they're in, because we've got various ones, we say, which one do you want to use? You know, and, and it's quite... Um, spread across the board they won't want to use the rubbish ones because they've all got decent machines at home and also I think you know I think it's our responsibility that we show you good quality things we don't want you to start a hobby and then just get frustrated because you can't do it now there are loads and loads of other feet so if you find you start doing other things you know this comes with a lot of standard feet but if you find that you want other kind of feet you need maybe a roller foot because you're working with PU um, or you want a concealed zip foot, then Elna sell all of those feet that you can buy separately for them and they will fit the machine. Um, 
message. I was what I watched the presentations about a dozen times before getting the 570A. It is excellent and makes my sewing more enjoyable. I love it. Sent by collector emergency. Line. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that feedback because it is it is a considered purchase. By I went into my local sewing machine shop before I started working here, and. I said, I only want to spend £200. And the man looked at me and went, well, what, what do you think you're going to do with that? He said, have you already got a machine? And, he said, and I went, I know, but I don't want all those stitches. He said, well, why don't you? I, I won't use them. He goes, no, you will. Well, I didn't spend £200 and I have never regretted it. And I do use all the stitches and I do use all the features. And, you know, it's your hobby and it makes a big difference. But, um, you know, it makes a difference. So that's the 570A, which I would say is perfect for a beginner or someone who needs to replace their machine um, and somebody who just wants something really reliable with lots of features, things that will help out a bit, like the thread cutter, like having all the feet, all the different stitches, the choice of stitch lengths and widths, easy to play, and it's a computerised sewing machine, which makes it easier to use. And you don't have to leave it in the box for three weeks before you get it out because you're scared to use it. You just thread it up and go. And then learn as you go along. Well, I'm always doing that with my machine. I think, oh, I don't know. I'm doing um, hemming, a stretch, a T-shirt. What stitch do I need? You don't need to learn it all at once. So don't be scared of getting out of the box just because you don't know what to do with it. Right, next machine. This now, this. This is the one that I want. Now, this is, it's called the Pro. The Elna Excellence 720 Pro. And I love it this machine it's recommended it's a very it's like a workhorse it's almost like a semi-industrial machine it's heavy you're not going to be carrying it to workshops it lives on your table you use it all the time i'm going to remove the card so you can see it properly it's beautiful i mean it's quite heavy to pick up i mean it's got a handle but it's you know it is different from all the others it is again it's a computerized sewing machine it has got everything you need in it uh, but it is inspired by industrial machines. You've got a really lovely, big, deep throat here, which makes sewing a lot easier. It has an independent bobbin winder, which makes a massive difference to be able to use that so that you can thread and sew. Shall I go through the features for you? It's got 200 stitches, including nine buttonholes. So if you're doing dressmaking, brilliant it has a really wide sewing space which is great when you're sewing big thick jeans when you're doing curtains because if you make lots of curtains you need something if you're sewing on and on and on and on and on this is the workhorse that will get you through it's got a flat bed it doesn't have the free arm doesn't need that this is for some serious sewing it's got the lcd screen and led as well so it's really easy to see and easy to control. Independent bobbin winder, which is brilliant so that you can keep your machine threaded up while you bobbin. It's got the extra high presser foot position, which is massively important. I do have that on my machine and I use it all the time. Because, um, let me show you. I use mine all the time and it's surprising actually. So when the foot is down, there we go, foot is down. Now, normally you'd put it up to there, you take your, your fabric out, but it's got that extra function. Now, I do actually, I have that on my machine and I use that all the time and it will stay up there because you know how sometimes you just can't get the fabric out or what I do sometimes is I can't really see if I'm trying to um, go carefully around a corner and I can't really see, I keep the needle down and I lift that high up and then I can see more underneath. If you're sewing things like jeans or denim and you need that extra high lift or if you do, I use it a lot because I do free motion embroidery and I mount my fabric in an embroidery hoop, I need to get the hoop under the foot and you can do it with that extra one but it's really useful it's just one of those features that when I <laughs> when I bought my machine years ago and I was told about it well I'm never going to use that I use it constantly so and I don't have this machine but this is the one I want because there are certain features that I would not swap for I would not lose me automatic thread cutter but they're great I mean that just makes a difference uh, Mr. Machine, I've got the machine, I love, love, love it. Does absolutely everything and it's a complete beaut. Sent by Sheena and Somerset, thank you Sheena, you convinced me even more. I mean it is, because it's, you know, if you, maybe you do um, sewing for, like you make things for fades. Oh, I've just ordered L720 Pro on Friday. I cannot wait for it to arrive from Leslie and Tiny Wear. Brilliant. Well, Leslie, get it straight out of the box. Don't be square. 
don't be don't be shy get it out of the box and use it straight away because i really want one of these oh my necklace is being very naughty today um yes yeah, so do i now look like i'm in the wind because it's blowing i've got wind i'll just move my microphone there we go i've got wind right <laughs> So maybe you do sewing for um, fates or sales or you do curtain making or you do a lot of dressmaking or you even, you know, what's like patchwork and quilting, you're sewing all of those strips together. This is the machine that will just get you through it all. It's just gorgeous. And I like the fact, you know, that it is heavy. You know, it's, it's £1,699. But it's worth every penny of it. And, and you know, and I'm, I wouldn't say it's not a beginner's machine. A beginner quite easily sew on this machine and love it because if you maybe you start a bit sewing maybe you've borrowed a machine and you think oh, i love this that's it you know you love bag making you love upholstery you know it's one of your things this is your kind of forever machine i mean i can't guarantee that obviously you know because um it might not last forever and ever and ever but this is your pretty much forever you get um let me show you what else you, you've got in it. So where did we get to? The extra high presser foot, that's where we got to. The one step needle plate converter, which is great. So this, this uh, machine has different needle plates, which is this metal, the metal section here. So it has another net metal plate. So if you're just doing straight stitch, then you can put that metal plate in and it stops, um, it keeps the fabric moving better through. And it is much more accurate and it's quite easy to get off as well. And it has the upper feed extension system, which is lovely, and an extension table. So you can make it even bigger, which is brilliant. I do a lot of curtain making and you know when you've got all of that, the curtains hanging off the edge, it's really, really good to have that extra table. It gives you that extra bit of workspace as well. I mean, look at the picture of it with the table to be honest it's one of those things you keep in place you just keep the extension table on it so much there's enough room to put your cup of tea on no that's a joke don't put your cup of tea on there but there's loads of space on it but it, it makes it, this is your your it's like being a real professional sewer well it's called the pro isn't it now if you want to split it interest free on 0% interest, we can split it over five equal payments of 33980. What happens is the first payment gets taken out of your account now. You then um, get sent this straight away by Elna. Then the other four payments are taken out of four monthly equal intervals until you've paid for the whole thing. But it doesn't cost you any more. It's just that some people prefer to do it that way to spread the payments. But it is like, it is, you know, it is... Because when you say, oh, this isn't for beginner, it makes it sound like it's hard to use and it really isn't hard to use. It's just a beautiful, beautiful sewing machine. I mean, we do have we do have machines that um, that cost more than this, but I think it depends if you want something that's really solid. So it's an aluminium frame. It's a good solid frame. Uh, there's the machine size, big sewing space. It has a nice flat bed. Um, horizontal full rotary hook with transparent bobbin cover um oh the auto declutch bobbin winder that makes um winding up your bobbin so much easier it has a needle threader built in that's something i definitely wouldn't swap because that makes a big difference you know what it's like trying to thread it it's so much easier um it has the retractable feed dog which is fab so that you can do all your free motion embroidery um the drop feed sensor so you know when that's gone down it's got three LED lamps in three different locations. Now that makes a difference. My machine at the moment only has the one and I find in the evenings, although I've got those like that light on, it does get a bit dimmer with this. You've got much, much, much lighter as well. Um, it's got a manual thread tension control as well as, you know, it, the, when you set it to the stitches you want to do, it works it all, but you can also change the thread tension. So if you want different effects, depending on what you're doing, you've got that sort of override. The presser feet are really easy to put on because they just clip on. There's none of that undoing screws and stuff. They just pop on. Um, and you can take off the upper feed system. So if you want to sew without the foot, it's a lot easier to do that. Uh, yeah, I was reading my list. I was reading my list. <laughs> the one step needle, we talked about that. 
Um, the foot pressure adjustment. So you can change the pressure of your the, of the pedal, which makes quite a difference to the speed that you sew and how hard that you sew it as well. Um, because they'll they say with particularly when you're using things like well fleece and canvas is reduce the pressure of the foot and that's something that we don't always do we don't realize what the point of that is well when you're using thicker fabrics or fabrics with a pile or a nap you don't want as much pressure on them because um, it distorts the fabrics you want them to go through so having those um, pressure foot adjustments means that working with more specialist or thicker fabrics allows the fabric to flow through a lot better um, speed control slider, really important. Setting the start speed, there's loads there. Multi-language interface, there's loads. Adjustable knee lifter, whoa. S right, these are all the standard accessories that your machine will come through. In fact, there's a whole, bo there's a whole box of them, but they come, I mean, they, you've got all the feet. You've got lovely feet in there. I like the fact you've got a quarter inch foot. That's very important um, to me. You've also got machine embroidery feet and you've got three choices of them, which is brilliant because you need to use them for different things. It's got a really lovely bright red soft cover. Um, it's got... It, the HP, yeah, it's got the special seam foot. So one of the needle plates, the HP one, has a special quarter of an inch seam foot that is used with it. I mean, it's obviously got things like um, the the bobbins and the seam rift and the needle set, but there's even a special stitch for sewing on buttons. And, and I love that, and it has a special foot for sewing on buttons and it has a special plate for sewing on buttons as well. But so many of you have messaged in during this show to talk about the machine and say how much you love it um, and how many of you are getting it. I mean, look at the box. My 720 is fabulous, still experimenting with all the stitches from Lynn. I mean, you know, you guys out there, you are our best reviewers. You're the people who've actually bought it. You're not the rep. You're not the people trying to... You are the ones who've bought it and tell us how wonderful... Because I've been listening to all these for ages, deciding which is my next machine, and this is the one. Now, look at the box. Look, I mean, the box is even like this is the accessory box. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I'll move the machine out of the way so we can look at the box. Look at the box. Yeah, it is a bit of a mess. It's been just because it's all been upside down, but look, everything is in there. You've got all the feet in there, all the specialist ones. I love that. That's one of the machine embroidery feet. There's loads of them, and then underneath here, even more. These are the special needle plate feet, needle plate converters. Gorgeous, everything you need to know. It's even got this is the brilliant thing. This is used for when you have to stitch on slightly thicker fabrics and you need to raise put that on one side so the foot does um, slides across it at the right height it's all brilliant it's very heavy so and you even get needles which is quite handy isn't it right so finally if you want the machine honestly just listen to our customers they're the people who know it is an absolutely brilliant machine it's got everything you need if you want to go to that next level, you want a good workhorse, but not something that's just an industrial machine, you know, that just does a straight stitch. You want all the other features on it as well. I can highly recommend this because I want one. I want one. I think they'll notice if I walk out with that one. Anyway, have a think about it. It is a considered purchase. Read the reviews. Have a look at all the features. Look online. Um, if you have a look on the Elna website, they've got lots and lots of details about it. Read what people say. Have a think about it. But I think we've got it at a very good price. The fact that we offer it on five split pays and it's interest free is worth it. And um, But yes, I mean, have a look at the... There is, I think it is. I mean, it is a good price point and it will, will make a difference. Anyway, finally, finally, I have got some fleece and some canvas. I don't know where the day's gone. We've just rushed through this. The leopard print fleece. Oh, this is great. I love this one. So these fleeces all are different, slightly piled. So you think a fleece is a fleece. But a fleece is not just a fleece. They come in different piles and they come in different weights. So the pile is the thickness 
of the almost like the loops the pile is the thickness of it of the sort of the fluffiness and you might have a short pile and you might have a long pile this is quite a sh well, no, this uh, medium I'd say this one is because you can you can see it goes one way and the other so the pile is how thick the tufts are I don't know whether they're called loops or tufts but they, they, they come there um, now the other thing that you need to know is the nap. Very important, the nap. The nap is which way it, fl which way it strokes. Velvet has a nap. Corduroy has a nap. Fleece has a nap. So very important when you're using fleece is to stroke it and make sure the nap is the right way. So when I stroke that way, it goes really nice. But when I go that way, I can feel it against my hands. So when you're cutting out fleece, if you're cutting pieces, make sure the nap runs from the top to the bottom. Otherwise, it's like cutting striped fabrics horizontally and vertically. It will look rubbish. The, the light falls on it different. So it's really important. Um, when you're sewn with fleece, use your longer stitch length. It doesn't like the short stitches. If you use the short stitches, it distorts it. It's a stretchy fabric. It's a knit, actually a knit fabric, and it doesn't like the shorter stitches. So this is 100% polyester. This is, wow, this is really wide. Now, when you're working with um, fleece, use a ballpoint needle. It's, it's like a jersey. It's a woven fabric. It's a knitted fabric. When you use a regular needle, you will pierce the fabric threads, which can cause it to ladder. If you use a ballpoint needle, it separates the fibres just like that. And then the needle goes in between. I don't know this. Well, this, I tell you what's interesting is on one side, you've got the, you've got the, the pile, the thick pile. And then on the other side, well, I think actually this is the right side. This is more velvety. So you don't need to. Now, have a think when you, if you're going to hem it, have a think about that, what you're going to do. If it's a blanket, that's fine. If you're making some clothing, you will add bulk by hemming it. So say you want to hem it, don't turn it over twice, turn it over once. Maybe just overlock the edge or work a, work a zigzag. Be careful with that. Um, remember, because it is a knit fabric, it will, it will stretch. Again, use a lower pressure foot when work, working on this to stop it, stop it going through. When you're sewing with it, it's a polyester fabric. Use a polyester thread. If you can, always try to match your thread to the fabric. And the reason for that is the same fibres wear in the same way and the same fibres wash in the same way. So if you use a polyester fabric, use a polyester thread. I mean, that's not to say, it's almost like you can go down and not up. You can use a polyester thread on a cotton fabric because it's stronger and longer lasting, but you can't, but don't use a cotton thread for this because it, it, it won't wear and wash in the same way. Also, it's quite a thick fabric. The polyester is a lot sharper. You do need as well, make sure you use sharp, sharp scissors, sharp scissors, sharp rotary cutter. It's a thick fabric. You need to be able to get through it. Um, Soft toy making is great. Another thing is that you will get a lot of fluff and a lot of lint. Same with canvas. Is I know with canvas you think it's not fluffy, very linty. Clean out your machine. When you have been working with this, when you have um, when you have done your finished your project, clean out your machine and also your cutting mat. Because I well, if you're using a rotary cutter, it's a, I don't know how it happens when you cut. Use your rotary cutter on it. It sort of like embeds some of the fluff into the mat, but you but clean it out afterwards. Um, the way, if you want to clean your bath, I always put my cutting mat in the bath. Really good way to clean it. Or just get a damp cloth and give it a really good scrub and that will come off. So that's the leopard print one. Message from Janet. How do you wash the fleece fabric? Would it work for a pet bed? It's absolutely fine. It's just a polyester fabric. Just chuck it in the machine. You don't really want it on too high. Maybe, I mean, I, I don't wash m much more than 30 degrees, to be honest. It's a polyester fabric. It washes, but it dries really quickly as well. Um, talking about pressing though, remember if you press directly onto this, it well may well melt. And if it doesn't melt, it'll go funny. Just put a fabric on top of it. I always have a pressing fabric, which basically is a meter square of calico, which I hemmed because I got fed up with all the, um, the f it fraying. So I did actually hem it, but it's just a pressing cloth, which to me is a meter square of calico, a bit like the PVC. But if you use a pressing cloth, because remember it's plastic, it's polyester, it may melt. And it won't like it. And if it doesn't, and if it doesn't melt, it goes a bit stiffer. I tell you what, the only time is, is that I quite often use fleece for appliqueing onto other things. 
So um, I bought myself, my daughter, a lovely wool jumper, beautiful, and I wanted to applique the name, the day of the week she was born, so it's had Thursday across it. And I cut all the letters out in fleece and I applique them on and I pressed it really well with a cloth on top and it made it melt very slightly, which made it more condensed and it actually looked better. So I practice it, practice it. When you use some, try pressing it a small square, see what happens. Always use a cloth because it will stick to your iron. But it's quite nice for a plique onto thing. It becomes almost felt then. Right, the next one is the black one. Again, this is quite a high pile. This will be very good for making um, pandas. It's like a panda, it's all a black bear. Again, have a think about backing a quilt with fleece. So say you, um, you don't want to do the wadding, you don't want to do the backing, but you've made the top of the quilt. Just use some fleece, and I've done it. I mean, it's not what all the professional quilters do, but honestly, it works really well, because all you have to do, I mean, this fleece is gorgeous, because look, on one side, that looks like fur. You could use that for um, toys, for black people, or for black animals, black cats, black dogs, pandas. Um, but on this side, it's almost like velvety. It's gorgeous. So all you do, if you want to make a quilt, it, fleece is wide as well, which helps, is you could put, put the, top in, the top of this on and then just quilt through it. Treat it like it's a wadding and backing at the same time. It makes it super warm and lovely. Brilliant for things like picnic blankets. So I know it's not waterproof, but it's nice and cosy. Things like car blankets, um, something that you want warm and cosy. I mean, it's not your traditional quilt and it's not your wadding and your backing, but it makes a lovely quilt and it washes really well. Um, if you're using it for dressmaking, well not dress, that sounds funny doesn't it, dressmaking, maybe you're making a fleece top or a hoodie or something, remember it really stretches, particularly on the bias, so if you're doing any, um, any seams, like around the neckline that are slightly curved, oh my god it's so fluffy that one, um, the stabiliser, can I use the zebra, oh my god that's so weird, the zebra, look at the zebra, I want to show you the other side, so you can see both sides. Uh, don't forget to stabilise your seams because they will distort. So if you're, doing, um, if you're doing neck edges, work a slightly longer stitch within the seam allowance. That will hold it, stop it stretching out of shape. Um, that's the zebra. Um, it's, quite, it's a much closer pile than the other two. That says white tiger, not white, it's not a zebra. Mm. It's a slightly smaller pile, but remember it's, it's fleece all the same and it has a nap. They are really wide. Should we, show, should we do this one? And then I can show you how wide it looks. I know I've got long. I've got minutes, but I just want to show you the width because they're all like that. Whoa, look at that one. Cushions. Buy half a metre of it, make three cushion fronts. Gorgeous. So that's one side and that's the other side. Sometimes they're almost a bit reversible. I think they are. There are right and wrong sides, but they are reversible. Um, anyway, have a look on the website because they're all there. We've got two with paw prints on. We've got the blue paw print. We've got the grey paw print. Ball paw print. Brilliant for cat, pet beds, pet blankets. Um, a blanket to put at your feet. This one's only two ninety nine. This is great. Put a blanket in the car for when the dog gets in and it's wet. Shall I show you this one? This one's super wide. 100% polyester, dries well, washes well. Remember, just go for 30 degrees. Don't go for anything too big and don't iron it unless you put a cloth on top. Right, fantastic, fantastic value for money. This is quite a, um, a, small, a small pile, so this isn't like your animal fleece like the others. Um, it's, but it still does have a nap though. Um, then the final one, grey. There's the grey one. Look, it's quite dark on that side. Ivory on grey, pet fleece fabric, half a metre, absolute bargain. Um, right, I'm going to tell you what's on tomorrow because we've just run out of time. Um, but we will run through. We've got some other solid plain f fleece fabrics, so we'll just pop those on so you can buy them. So tomorrow is Neil Garrett's birthday. He is going to be co-presenting with me tomorrow. Lucky Neil. <laughs> Anyway, it's his birthday. So he will be on at 8 o'clock on his own, actually. So we're going to do it together, but he's going to start it off at 8 o'clock. He's coming in for his birthday, so please send in your messages. 
I know. Why shouldn't he work on his birthday? He get, he, we might even get him a cake. You never know. So 8 o'clock, new fabric collection. Um, at 9 o'clock, I'm going to come on with him and I am going to run through the Bird of the Month double Irish chain quilt. Now, I did that just after Christmas. It was so popular, we completely sold out. So I'm back tomorrow with it, but we've got two brand new colourways. We've got it in pinks and purples. I've made some samples of it so you can see what it looks like. We've had so many people asking for it. Um, 10 o'clock is Neil's favourite quilts. 11 o'clock, um, attic window using Neil some other designs but also Neil's hot air balloon photo you're going to love that at 12 o'clock it will be Neil's favorite tools oh what's the bet in the electric scissors are on there um anyway thank you so much for joining me today I've had such fun with you and I will see you um tomorrow morning so happy birthday Neil we will see you both tomorrow <laughs>